She said she thought your kind had gone extinct. Time to clear the board. Son of a bitch. Extinguishing galaxy. All right, this was bound to happen. Supernatural is my favorite show of all time. The only issue was when I was going to do it. Do I wait until 2025? So on September 13th, 2005, the very first episode of Supernatural first aired. The pilot introduced two brothers, Sam and Dean Winchester. It revolved around them going around the world, mainly the US, hunting demons, ghosts, monsters, gods, and many other supernatural beings. While on the road, the boys would meet side characters that would be memorable and loved by fans. But the main reason why, anyway, Anyone watches the show are the boys, their relationship, and what they go through 15 seasons of TV. However, today is not September 13th. It is September 5th, 2022, my two year anniversary on YouTube. I wanted to do another supernatural related video. There are 320 episodes to rank, from what I think is the worst to the best episode. So here is my ranking of every single supernatural episode. No work to do. Number 327, Unfinished Business from Season 13, Episode 20. This to me is the worst episode ever because it retcons Gabriel's story in Season 5 and his whole point about not running away from family. But guess what happens? Guess what? Andrew Dab and everyone else is like, guess what? Fan service. Like, sometimes it'd be like, okay, maybe this is too much. Like, this whole retcon of Gabriel being alive, you ruin that whole moment in Season 5. Him dying, sacrificing himself, completing his arc of being there for your family. So it turns out he was faking his own death again the whole angel wings he meets some other gods they sold him out to asmodeus but they essentially retcon his whole story whole background whole like hanging out getting fed on by asmodeus and all for what and then later on too he dies this is just all for just bad fan fiction it was not a great choice Number 326, Exodus from Season 13, Episode 22. Gabriel dies in this episode, so bringing him back was useless. And that one scene with Lucy was good, you know, but wasn't needed. Could have been anyone else. Could have been Castiel. They do mention the whole heaven thing, which is not brought up ever again. Aside from this season, drop storylines. Jack being there for Lucifer and actually listening to him. That was good. I just wish we got more of that in this season. Instead, they were kind of apart. And then finally, this episode meeting. But then you also know he's a devil. And he's not really going to change, especially especially for humanity and then you also have all these other people from this other world that are now coming into our world because this season introduces different worlds and i guess dimensions which is cool but also like a sign of hey we're kind of running out of ideas let's just do you know portals and whatever why not and then they leave lucifer behind because no one really trusts him now you have other michael and our lucy teaming up Number 325, Let the Good Times Roll from Season 13, Episode 23. This finale sucked because we actually had the fight between Michael and Lucifer. Back in Season 5, it was like, hey, this battle would cause the apocalypse. But in this episode, in this finale, it's like, guess what? It only destroys a chair and a table and the fight itself is bad wire work. They're like flying and shit. It's like, this was the fight that would cause everything and it does nothing essentially. And so that's disappointing. Like, I think we had a fight earlier in Episode 2 of this season and lucifer they were fighting bare knuckles but okay sure that world was already done for but that this is ours and it does nothing sam and jack were in that building and nothing big fight this apocalypse fight that we actually got to see on the show it turned out to be bad wire work disappointment but dean finally gets to become an angel he says yes to michael which i don't know because the whole point of him in season five was saying no to michael and so him just saying yes to him and now granted lucifer's got jack and sam and whatever right but still it's like it kind of undoes that in a way i guess it does but it's like okay he just said yes finally becomes the michael archangel from another world which the more i think about it how would he know about that unless it was the exact same thing that happened in his earth and world for 324 first blood from season 12 episode 9 one scene in this episode just makes this episode bad for me sam and dean are like we made a deal with billy because being in confinement was worse than hell which i think is people out there that have phobias of like being in small spaces and confinement but this is sam and dean winchester they've been through hell they've been in hell they've been in purgatory and so for them to say that this is worse than that is ridiculous i would think being in hell being tortured by the devil and dealing with all that would be way worse than confinement but again if that's your phobia then sure but sam and dino have that i don't think haven't they been in smaller places we watching the episode i was like this episode's fine Reading all these soldiers or fbi agents not killing them that they have that great line of saving the world or whatever billy taking their lives and confinement was being worse than hell i'm sorry i can't get over that cast does kill billy though but then that would lead into more kind of issues later on 
Number 323, There's Something About Mary from season 12, episode 21. I believe this is the one where Mary finds out about the British's plans on American hunters. I think we see Garth and Eileen and everyone that we know on like a TV thing. But then it's also where Ketch confesses his love to Mary and fixate on it, which in itself is stupid. There's been this buildup of like him sleep with her and she just had the itch to and then he becomes obsessed with her. It's like, I don't care about this character are just not good as villains so i was getting tired of seeing adam catch the leader who is this like older lady and i don't care that many do wait hold on what did they do yeah i forgot main thing is the british men of letters they want to work with the american hunters but by this point they're like too soft number 322 all along the watchtower from season 12 episode 23 this finale sucked there was no build up to all these deaths we have marina dying off screen which that in itself sucked we have castiel dying which everyone knows is bullshit because he's a series regular and then crowley dies which he's also a regular on the show but mark shepard wanted to leave and so they killed him off and so he did sacrifice himself in order to stop this rift or build up to it you kill off arguably the most charismatic character on the show later on said that like his time on the show was it just felt like he's doing the same thing over and over again which he was because at this point sam dane aren't really moving the plot along it's mainly Cass or crowley there could be no more development for the brothers 12 seasons in you're just gonna do the same thing brothers remain the same and then jack is born which he may or may not be evil with the really cool looking eye thing so all of these deaths they were not built up they felt left field and so it was mainly for essentially shock value Number 321, Season 7, Time for a Wedding from Season 7, Episode 8. I don't mind Becky. Yes, she can be annoying and weird, but I don't really mind her. However, I don't think anyone was asking for an entire episode about her. About her weird and dangerous obsession with Sam. Like, she kidnaps him, just love pushing on him, ties him, like, has this book about him. And it's like, this is getting creepy, weird, and bad because I don't want to see this. It's really unnecessary. She's making deals with demons. It's like, okay. But then we also get introduced to Garth. I like him overall so dean's dealing with that and this other demon that like is killing for some reason for this other demon dealer and then the only good part is crowley coming and being like i'll deal with this he hates that dick guy named dick dick roman but yeah mainly becky i don't think anyone was asking for this Number 320, Game Night from Season 14, Episode 17. Nick is an ongoing issue in this season because he should not be alive. How is he alive? No idea, but he's alive and he wants to get Lucifer back because he needs him and he wills his way back to him, which is really ridiculous. But luckily, they don't get to that point. Jackie eventually stops him, but that's the entire episode. And so I'm thinking, don't bring Lucifer back. He's brought back like four goddamn times or three goddamn times. Why would you need him back? And then also, the funniest part is Sam almost gets killed by a goddamn rock, essentially. Eventually, throughout all the different ways that both Sam and Dean die from, but Sam was about to be killed by a goddamn rock. It's like, okay. And with Jack having no soul, he accidentally kills Mary. So that is something for the boys to deal with after this episode, but also killing off Mary who has no development at all whatsoever. Her being here was useless because she did nothing. Number 319, Don't Go in the Woods from Season 14, Episode 16. Jack decides to hang out with these kids all the way back from the 300th episode and they are insufferable. They are not fun to watch. They are annoying teenagers and they're there, you know? It's like, I don't care about you. But they also have this other half of Sam and Dean going on a essentially Wendigo hunt with this other cop guy and they eventually kill it. But they also have the other kid stuff. So one is bad and annoying. The other half is okay. Jack almost kills his kid, heals him, but further feeds into this whole soulless act of not really caring at all especially after these kids are like get away you freak still a scared little boy with all this power number 318 last call from season 15 episode 7 you can skip this entire episode because the whole sam stuff everyone knows about the whole bullet thing with him and chuck so all those things with him castell and eileen are completely useless and then you have this other plot thread of dean hanging out with his hunter buddy who's like feeding other people for the sacrifice or whatever but they just sing a lot they love singing and everyone knows that jensen loves to sing and he has like a song an album i think do the plot at all whatsoever so you could just skip this entire episode it is useless everyone knows what's going on with sam and dean just likes singing a lot that's it Number 317, Mannequin 3, The Reckoning from Season 6, Episode 14. This is another episode that, again, you can just skip. Lisa and Ben being there, they do nothing for me. That whole one year of hanging out, being a normal man, normal family man. So they're just kind of there as a burden in a way, which is why they get rid of them later on. Toe Mannequin stuff, sure, but whatever as well. Like It's another Monster of the Week. I do like that. The boys don't really win in this episode. They need to kill this girl in order to get rid of this ghost who has tied herself to this lung that 
that she gave to her friend. The Impala crashes into this like building a window. Somehow this lady gets like a glass to her like lung specifically or something. So the way around that it was kind of stupid. But this is one of the few times where the boys don't really win. Number 316, Raising Hell from Season 15, Episode 2. The way that Kevin comes back makes no sense. I don't think the writers even know or even care. We last saw him in Season 11. Chuck put him in heaven. But then turns out he lied and he's in heaven with Jack the Ripper and all these other ghosts and vengeful spirits and like huh there's a lot of questions there a lot of retconning there but whatever and the catch comes by because you know people love him and he has a thing with the arena which whatever is useless but he's there to get possessed by jack the ripper which how would he cross over the barrier if he's because he's a ghost and there's a salt barrier that demon possessing jack set up but he got passed by being in a catch essentially either way it doesn't matter they don't get rid of him right away they leave kevin to go off in heaven land or whatever like, he just goes off again makes no sense that's why he's back i do like this whole ongoing plot of this hole in hell and just ghosts are coming out overall the episode's okay number 315 Uber from season 14 episode 14 this episode is entirely filler until like the last 10 minutes snake god that sees the future but no angels the boys and Cass and Jack are hunting this thing but then after getting rid of him and him bashing Dean's head because Michael's still inside of Dean this leads into main plots it's kind of lazy kind of like okay we don't have anything for the last 10 minutes so include the main plot why whatever just do it that's kind of what it felt like until so Michael was out all those other people from the other world guess what they they die michael kills him he's in warina but then jack steps up this whole entire season he was useless because he had no soul he was gonna die like multiple times consumes michael and has his wings back but with no soul michael is just a useless character because he's only in like five episodes right the first the second nine ten maybe four and a half and they do nothing with him he's supposed to be the villain of season 14 and just nothing you know aside from you know making an army but that's kind of done off screen Number 314, Gods and Monsters from Season 14, Episode 2. Michael leaves Dean's body, quote unquote, only after two episodes, which I remember laughing at, being like, okay, this is way shorter than Demon Dean. He's setting up like this vampire army because he goes to talk to Angel Joe, and there's only a select few of angels, which again, they mention a lot. Heaven's gonna fall down because there's no angels, but they don't go back to it at all whatsoever. It would have been a really expensive shot, but still, it's like, if you're gonna say that, commit to that, or do it, they're making not a lot. He's like, okay, I'm put my hand out and leave new bobby's training jack because again he's useless and then oh yeah sam has a beard love mentioning it but yeah that's it like there's no by this point in the show i felt a bit jaded watching the show not only is it not really that good anymore it's okay it's kind of redoing things we have a show that's over 15 seasons long you're bound to run into just repetitiveness number 313 nihilism from season 14 episode 10 once again michael is did a whole snap thing like in avengers infinity war dean is in his own head he meets pamela you know cool seeing her sam and Cass have to go inside deep inside his mind while jack is i guess angry because he feels useless but back to michael he's back on top in his own head is able to kill all these people right but then guess what they keep bringing him back and defeating him in the next episode so now he's stuck literally in dean's head in this fridge bailey shows up to be like hey this is your fate and destiny deal with it and so that's the only part that's like okay this is kind of a means to an end because michael dean d michael is a bit disappointing i guess they wanted to prevent jensen from pulling double duty of playing dean but also playing michael but you could have done it in a such more interesting way that's not like bring him back defeat him bring him back defeat him and then he's gone Number 312, Unhuman Nature from season 14, episode 7. I always get episode 7 and 8 from this season mixed up. I believe this is the episode where they first attempt to save Jack, fainting and falling down. So Castiel goes to that one dude that has all of those angelic stuff. And for some reason, he has Gabriel's grace, which makes no sense, but whatever, he has it. Even with the grace and Rowena's help, I die because what's going to replace that large Nephilim? Nothing, really. I do like this whole hopefulness. And then by the end, that hope dies out. Lucifer isn't back. Michael is dead by this point. Oh no, never mind. He's not. Which I do like the hopefulness. Everyone knows that Jack's coming back one way or another. He's their son essentially, which Jack chose to cast as his father. Number 311, War of the Worlds from season 13, episode 7. Guess what? Catcher's back. The most favorite character ever of all time. People really wanted him to come back. And so Andrew Dab, or I don't know who brought him back, but I'm assuming Andrew Dab because he was a showrunner at the time. Through Rowena's spell? Why him? I don't get it. But Catcher's honey for witches. He needs to find Rowena. But then meets Sam and Dean 
which he tries to like play them with this whole like evil twin stuff which is obviously a lie at this point rowena's dead quote unquote and there's nothing you can do about it clearly they don't trust him he's like i can't go back to britain because you know they don't trust me no more so now i'm stuck here and then instead of like moving on i don't know why they want to keep him on the show but he goes to asmodeus because he has lucifer and cassia trapped which lucifer meets he got out of this other world which that michael stole his grace now he's human he needs other angel graces to survive asmodeus aka colonel sanders is like i got you two now and he decides to capture them for pawns or whatever right but he also learns of this other world and catch catch is now working for him so that's great that's what i really wanted from catch him to come back and not stay dead and him to work with asmodeus he's there you know he's there Number 310, bringing them back alive from season 13, episode 18. So Charlie's back, not our Charlie, but that other world Charlie. And so season 13 to me was bad fan fiction of bringing character fan favorites back because why not? So like last season, season 12, you had to catch Rowena Crowley Mick. I think Mick and then someone else died. I don't know who, but you had characters that died and guess who all comes back? Rowena, Ketch, Cass, and now Charlie. Like Death never meant anything. Maybe stick to characters dying, but nope, gotta bring them back. So I guess Ketch now has changed. He has changed another side from British Men of Letters to Asmodeus to now just being neutral, I guess, on the side of the boys. Who's really gonna accept the Ketch? Sam and Cat. Wait, what are they doing? They're talking to Gabriel. Somehow Asmodeus got him from the other world, but no, no. Gabriel was able to get his mojo back and kill Asmodeus. Catch saves Dean and sticks with Charlie in the other world and Dean gets pissed off because they can't get things to work out because they're now trapped once again with no mom number 309 jack in the box from season 14 episode 19 i don't know if this is just me but this episode might be the worst acting episode from both jared and jensen because them trying to convince jack to get into the box that scene was not good it felt like they were improvising or i don't know man obviously both jared and jensen are not bad actors they're good maybe the direction was bad but that whole sequence the whole box was just not good meanwhile you have castell finally killing that angel that keeps coming back to him being like hey you are part of heaven blah 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 just kill her and he does like she uses jack as a means to create angels angels are running low and there's still no sign of all those souls being popped out while jack is in the box he has an inner conflict of lucifer being in his head being like guess what the boys don't trust you you killed their mother and so he decides to break out of that box let loose to set up what would become i guess the biggest retcon ever in the whole show but everything else was just all right Number 308, Who We Are from Season 12, Episode 22. I'm just glad that they actually killed off the British Men of Letters in this penultimate episode because they were useless. They were not great villains because after Season 11, you can't do like the darkness and can't go above that. So it's like, guess what? What do we do? Back to humans, you know, not the best. Like the only human villain that worked was Gordon. And by the end, they had to turn him into a goddamn vampire. So like not turning them into something else or just sticking to their guns being like, we are better because our ways are very efficient and your ways aren't gets boring and they're just useless there's one great sequence of dean being inside mary's head and seeing what he really feels about her and then also killing off catch which is fantastic i'm just glad the british men of letters are over maybe not entirely but just like all of them just completely over number 307 damaged goods from season 14 episode 11 i guess they retcon nick's backstory the way that lucifer got to nick so i thought the idea behind that was lucifer would possess or get any vessel he wanted because any person that was down on that day lucifer would take advantage of that i thought that was the idea but turns out this demon was like well he chose you because that everything up it's like didn't need that i guess that's a retcon sure i thought lucifer did it on a whim you know and then you got dean hanging out with mary building the box this is the end game this is how we stop michael and me get in this box and going down the ocean but there's a plan in the end game what felt like a plan and then nick escapes because i love mark pellegrino he's great as lucifer let's get rid of nick number 306 devil's barking from season 13 episode 13 they introduce jensen's wife's character angel joe or just joe and she's a faith healer she's an angel that doesn't really like heaven or the ideals of god and why he left it's just to use money as a currency and just as a way to you know be current essentially but lucifer finds her wants to feed her and she allows him only for a price right and you know they have this thing going on cassio knows her they want to find her but she's working with them this will lead into him being the king of heaven which gets dropped have this moment at the end it's brought back up in one episode and that's it it is completely dropped and it's like what are they doing not only is the whole heaven thing popping out and having all those souls being freed dropped but being the king of heaven that's also dropped so you have an entire episode essentially of setting up lucifer to become the king of heaven and have you know more angel grace because of joe and then all of that build up and setup would be for nothing 
Super 305, Rock Never Dies from Season 12, Episode 7. Rick Springfield as Lucifer just does not work for me. His is kind of whiny in a way because he possesses him in Episode 2, shows up for a band 3, goes away, comes back here, and then just dies. And so a lot of it is just kind of whining at this concert. Both Sam and Dean and Cass and Crowley both go to LA, a completely new setting, totally not Vancouver sets or whatever. And they're at a concert trying to be the devil and they can't. And it's their dad. There's no plan at all whatsoever. Lucifer has no plans. He's just there to create chaos, which to me, the writers have no clue what to do with them after 11. So just kind of use them sporadically, do whatever. And then also the whole team up between Cass and Crowley was only for one episode. Like that could have been a thing like in the first half or even the entire season because that would have been so much fun. An angel and a demon being like buddies, hunting the devil. That sounds like a good time, but they didn't do that. Number 304, Citizen Fang from Season 8, Episode 9. For some reason, they really wanted the brothers to be against each other because Dean made Sam go watch Mila have another sweetheart. And then meanwhile, you had Sam ask Martin, the crazy hunter from Season 5, to watch over Benny. He's a vampire. He's evil, right? It's all black and white. There's no middle ground whatsoever. And, and so a lot of this episode feels forced in terms of just being like, fight each other because we need drama. And it's just frustrating to watch, especially after Season 5. There's no reason as to why the boys should despise each other each other or just lie to each other because they know what happens but because the show needs to continue create drama you know all of the amelia scenes are all useless I feel like it's there just to pad out the runtime and then martin gets benny in trouble by having this thing with this girl and then he kind of shows his true form she gets scared causes issues between the brothers Number 303, The Girl Next Door from Season 7, Episode 3. Once again, why does Dean not listen to Sam and kill Amy when he knows he told him not to because of drama? Just don't kill her. She's not a bad monster getting like brains or something like that. Anyways, this ties back into Sam in the past, meeting this girl, girl killing her mother, comes back to meet her in the present, lets her go. She has a son. Dean doesn't trust Sam because he's got Lucifer in his head and so that's why he kills Amy. But still, it's frustrating because you know it's going to lead into this fight and they eventually maybe get back together the next episode all of that feels doesn't really need to be there luckily it isn't the first entire half of season seven because it would have been a real just a down season if it was just all that lies and not telling the truth Number 302, Out With The Old from Season 7, Episode 16. So apparently, at this point in the story, we've had like five filler episodes. And half of this episode is essentially filler, but they include Leviathan stuff. Because, you know, they're a threat. And so, guess what? This one Leviathan is like, we're here to cure cancer. Which, I don't know what they're trying to go for here. I'm not gonna lie. I don't know if they were dead set on like, hey, believe this. Because it sounds stupid and ridiculous. Or, it's like, hey, this whole season has been kind of dumb and stupid. Let's make it even more of that. I don't know, but rewatching it, him saying that was like, nah, man, what are you, what was that? I don't know. Maybe I wouldn't have minded if it was built up and just kind of teased in the second half of the season, but it wasn't. It was just a lot of filler, 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 and then guess what? Cancer. It's like, hold up, pause. We need to, you know, go back. Last time we saw you, you killed Bobby. Y'all want to cure cancer? I don't know. Maybe they were smoking crack. The writers were smoking crack, you know, just being like, we don't know what they want. Number 301, The Foundry from Season 12, Episode 3. So I was expecting Mary to not be around the season for that long, right? Maybe the first half she's gone during Episode 6. I was not expecting 3 because the way that this show now works after 5 is what happens at the end of that finale, the first 3 episodes of the next would conclude what happened in that finale and then it would build upon the first half with some filler leading to the second half with some filler and the end in the finale and then it would repeat. Mary's gonna stick around for maybe half the season and then half in the first half but the first three episodes, I was not expecting that. Again, the whole Cass and Crowley team up, just a wasted opportunity. Could have been so much fun. I don't know if it was just because of interest or scheduling conflicts, but they were regulars at that time. So they were in Vancouver mostly, I think. And then there's no British Men of Letter stuff because the episode is mainly of this house about ghosts and whatnot. Number 300, Patience from Season 13, Episode 3. Missouri is finally back on the show after not being on it for like the first season, Episode 9, the home episode. And so what does she do? Nothing. She gets cut off screen and they use this as a way to set up her granddaughter who would be in the Weird Sister spinoff. And so I didn't really like that. Focus on the granddaughter who's fine, like she's okay, to then later on set her up in her own show with a bunch of other casts. And it's just disappointing because she was a really good one-off character and very memorable. I loved her. She was great. And so to have her come back and just get killed off off screen like that was a bit disappointing i don't know what sam and dean does i think they have jack by their side although i forgot what they do in this episode aside from hunt this monster that loves hunting the psychics i think that's it right i think that's it
Number 299, Galaxy Brain from Season 15, Episode 12. My main issue with this episode is, why have an entire episode dedicated to Kaya and the other badass Kaya? This could have been a Season 14, not during the last season. We do get to see Chuck and this other world looking at TVs and complaining about Sam and Dean, and then by the end just killing this clerk person and destroying this whole planet. The episode itself is fine, saving the other Kaya Jody coming in, having to tell the other girls and Claire, all of that is fine. The issue is, this is the final season, it should have been building up. Up. Chuck, Amara, Jack stuff, but instead we only get a little bit of that and more of side character stuff, you know? Maybe focus, maybe not on Kaya, but Jody a lot more. Other Bobby, Charlie, not Kaya. Maybe this was to tie up the whole Wayward Sisters because they didn't get picked up. Let's use it in this last season. Number 298, Beyond the Mats from season 11, episode 15. It's funny seeing The Miz on a Supernatural episode because all I think about is his good promos in WWE, but he's a wrestler and his, I guess, rival is his other wrestler who cheats in wrestling pro wrestling which makes no sense because everything's planned out like he really wants his belt and wants to win so why not just i don't know do other things instead of calling for demons it feels like someone from the writer's room doesn't watch pro wrestling or doesn't get it and they were told to, hey you know what write an episode about this okay sure because wwe aw all that's pre-planned it makes no sense i guess the only good thing about it is dean going in the ring and falling on his ass that's it really Number 297, Bedtime Stories from Season 3, Episode 5. I always forget about this episode because it's fairies but evil. That's really it. The main reason why anyone like knows this episode is the last 5 minutes. Because it's the only important part of Sam talking to that demon about making deals. Which, you know what, let me- I'm gonna Google this right now and see what images pop up. Supernatural Season 3, Episode 5. So yeah, the first two images is the Crossroads demon deal thing. And then it shows the old grandmother and all the stories. The important part is the last 5 minutes. Everything else is just- just like another monster of the week episode that's not very good or not like it's creative but not executed that well because it's really boring to just watch number 296 paper moon from season 10 episode 4 kate's back and this is a bit of a disappointment because her episode in 8 was all found footage very niche very different and so her coming back seeing her sister and then her sister becoming evil it's a fine story but just a bit disappointing because it ends off in the same way where she calls sam and dean tells them don't look for me ever again and then she walks off the same way that she ends off in the same way that we last saw her in season 8 so it felt like her arc and story was on repeat but just in a different circumstance circumstance because she had a boyfriend and this other guy that liked her and then now it's her sister and turned her into a werewolf nothing ever really changed it just all became the same Number 295, Bugs, from Season 1, Episode 8. I don't think this episode's as bad as people make it out to be. It is the worst episode in Season 1, I think, but it's not, like, awful. However, like, Bugs, really? Like, I don't know. I get it. It's the first season. Let's do some different things that's not ghosts and demons and, you know, monsters, but Bugs? Bugs aren't scared of me, so this episode came off as kind of comical, but dull. You have CGI spiders and bugs crawling out of holes and shower heads. It's got a really dumb premise, but the episode so the self isn't that bad. Number 294, Ladies Drink Free from Season 12, Episode 16. Claire's first appearances in the show can be a bit annoying, maybe, you know, bratty and rebellious. Do things like getting mad at Castillo makes sense because he, like, promised her about her dad and he exploded and came back and said, hey, I'm back. Like, now nah, what the hell? But in this episode, she is just kind of like, no, I'm a hunter. I'm an adult. Damn, and Dino, like, no, you're not. And so she's written in a way that's, like, knowing right. And then she gets bit and Mick is there as well, who is essentially Castiel. Like, he has the same story as Cass and then out of nowhere there's a cure for being bit by a werewolf could have saved Madison from season two but of course the British men of letters were introduced the boys didn't know much Mick kind of learns about the gray areas of hunting because all the British thinks you know that everything's black and white you know which makes them just really bad villains and just not compelling at all whatsoever but they also learns like hey this isn't that simple he was planning on killing Claire but has a cure and she's not a wolf no more has a call Jody because she lied about going to school I think or college Number 293, Hookman from Season 1, Episode 7. In many ways, this episode is still good in terms of the Hookman and his kills. All of that's good. Everything else, though, I just don't really care about. This, like, Christian girl, I think, that Sam has a thing with and has to let her go because it's not gonna work out and it's way too early because he just lost Jess. Then it goes back to the whole, like, searching for the Hookman and the look and the hook. All of that's cool, burning his, like, not hook, but hand, I think, or the whole, like, necklace thing on that girl. All of that's good, held down by just everything. 
everything else. I don't care about them bringing in and this other girl and whatever, right? But it does end on a pretty good note of the boys driving off with the Impala with a really good song playing behind it, which I want to say like half the episodes end off like that. Actually, no, take that back. Not every episode, but I think most of the episodes end off with Sam and Dean and the Impala driving off number 292 the mentalist from season 7 episode 7 so this is after sam finds out about amy's stuff and guess what happens immediately they are back together why even have that scene of them arguing and breaking apart i don't get it later on the episode them talking about it as well forgiving each other was wrapped up quickly so it even makes it even worse as to why dean killed amy all all of it felt useless the main episode is about this guy that works at the store and loves this ghost and witch and stuff like it's very not memorable episode very boring this guy has like a ghost fetish for this ghost because he loves her and she i think doesn't love him back or she does it's a fine monster of the week ghost slash repetitive fighting between the brothers number 291 mother's little helper from season 9 episode 17 this is the first and only episode directed by misha collins and he did a fine job i think he was handed a really not bad script but very kind of okay script getting backstory about Radon and how she possessed the current host and just like the henry winchester and all the other nuns and whatnot that was cool but they also came after the episode in which dean touched the blade for the first time it was really cool and then we see the after effects of that which is also like good him talking to crowd being his like secret was really fun but i don't think i needed or wanted a backstory about abaddon i guess it's to build up her later on but still it felt like i don't really care about this really number 290 let it bleed from season 6 episode 21 don't really care about this episode because lisa and ben are again just kind of there they were there to serve as dean's normal life at the end but then it came back with the sixth season so they needed to have them around for a handful of episodes it just repeats of hey i gotta go i can't live this no more life saying goodbye coming back carly's got them they're in trouble they have to go away and so i do like it that cast is there to wipe up their memories completely because it would just repeat over and over again Number 289, Angel Heart from season 10, episode 20. While it's nice to have more of the Novak story on screen because the entirety of season 10 is a bunch of small stories just contained in a 23 episode season. I also don't really care about the mother, which they like recasted because who the hell knows the mother actress from season 4? She's probably doing some other project here and there, probably in Vancouver. Finally get to see Claire once again and get that closure between her mom and dad. Maybe not the dad part because he's already dead, but Cass looks like the dad. Getting that final closure of seeing her mother and then getting killed off and then seeing Castia one last time saying her goodbyes then leaving off on her own journey to meet Jody and Alex and do her own hunting things and it does continue Dean's issue with the mark on his arm of just being super violent Number 288, The Man Who Would Be King from Season 6, Episode 20. I think this episode came a bit too late because by this point, I did not care about who saved Sam. They could have left it as a mystery. I was like, okay, that's fine. Whatever. He came back because it got renewed, right? Whatever. Probably would have been worse if they didn't explain as to why he came back. But either way, Cass was behind it all. He brought back Sam with no soul. Probably knew that. Is working with Crowley to create a civil war. Raphael wants the apocalypse once again, which is not going to happen again because it would be a repeat of Season 5. And then Cass would slip up between the boys and Bobby they would find out he's working with the Crowley while it's nice that they explain it all by this point I just want to get to Raphael purgatory Crowley who is still alive and just all of that and not have it be just super like exposition heavy just came a bit too late to the season Number 287, Man's Best Friend with Benefits from Season 8, Episode 15. What's this episode about? I forgot. Which stuff? Is this one about that dog that turns into a lady? Yeah, hold on. I think it is because I don't think Zeus and Artemis and Prometheus is in the next episode. But this episode is about their hunter friend who is like a witch. I think he pissed off like a god or something because I do remember one scene of Sam and Dean being trapped and tortured within their own minds because Dean starts seeing hell, Sam starts seeing soul of Sam and hell as well. And so this guy or whatever tortures people kills a witch hunter guy and then the lady dog who i don't want to call her that but i forgot her name she's off on her own doing her whole thing like it's not a bad episode but i just kind of put it here probably because you know it's fine it's a fine episode there's not a real issue with it really maybe there is i'm just forgetting yeah this entry ain't doing so good anyways it's here because it's okay 
Number 286, Hashtag Thin Man from Season 9, Episode 15. The Ghost Facers are finally back and they're back in an episode that's just okay. They were used in this episode to parallel the boys because at this point in Season 9, they don't trust each other, they don't like each other, they're lying to each other, which is what one of the Ghost Facers does to this other guy. Almost gets him killed about this Thin Man, which is straight up a Slender Man ripoff. It ends off their storyline in a very downer note because the rest of the team are gone. It's only those two original guys left and they also leave off on a very bad note so it's like i wish we would have got more of you know ridiculousness of them and just kind of their act you know but it was fine Number 285, The Memory Remains from Season 12, Episode 18. Ketch is back once again with his dangerous and weird obsession with Mary. Him and some others go into their bunker to set up sound equipment. He decides to take a picture of Mary. It's like, okay, this is creepy, but I also don't care about Ketch, you know? It's like, get rid of them, please. They don't work. Meanwhile, you have Sam and Dean on another hunt, hunting this goat god with his big ass, good looking goat head. Probably another, like, really good prop from another show because it looked, you know, decent. Kind of ridiculous. But anyways, they have the quote again, which is reintroduced in this season and it's useless because it gets taken out later on. But they have the quote for now. Number 284, How to Win Friends and Influence Monsters from Season 7, Episode 9. This episode is mainly boring up until the very end where Bobby gets shot in the head. There is some fun stuff with the woods and Bobby shooting this monster. There is this funny bit of Dean being hungry, being like, you guys hungry? Want to go eat? And it's this like burger joint and sandwich, purple pink goo in it, which is disgusting. Half of it's in Dean's body. And then you see the eventual transformation of these creatures being taken into this factory, which is being led by Dick Roman, wanting to get Americans bigger and fatter so that they can just eat them up. Which, there's an issue with that plan because eventually, they're gonna run out of people to eat. Granted, there's like billions upon billions and millions of people. Just the US, you're gonna run out. But yeah, aside from those two things, episode's pretty boring. For 283, Drag Me Away From You from season 15, episode 16. Once again, this is another unnecessary episode in the final season. While I do like it that we get one more final younger version of Sam and Dean build up to the goddamn series finale. And we only get a little bit of that. Again, with Billy of mentioning to Dean, hey, this is the plan. Get Amar on your side and get rid of Chuck. Most of the episode is still dedicated to this Baba Yaga case of their past friend, which they meet in the present. And they have the team up and get rid of it. And it's like, okay, yeah, sure. But I don't care. Build up in the final season and finale. Number 282 plush from season 11 episode 7. This is essentially a redo of Route 666 but with plushies or like head like plushies where this whole town thinks that this guy is like touching their kids because he loves entertaining and just hanging around kids. So what did he do with it? Two fathers are like bringing him over this bridge, accidentally drops him and kills him, becomes a spirit and now wants to get his revenge on this entire town. And this is the first episode that's officially filler of season 11 which by this point was all story related and building up to Amara. It just feels weird to have this stop of being like plushies, vengeful spirit because it's bound to happen but it just ruined the momentum of it. And then this episode isn't done as well as Route 666 because it's the same just with plushies and parents are more involved and I guess kids as well. Number 281, No Exit from Season 2, Episode 6. This just feels like, I don't know, very typical average episode of the show. I do like Joe, American's first serial killer, being in his apartment, taking blondes. All of it feels alright to me. It's not like amazing or bad, it's just right in the middle. It's okay. We do get two things though. One, funny scene of Cold as Ice, just Ellen saying that Impala pissed off at the boys and Joe turns it right off. And then we also get that John didn't mention Ellen and Joe to Sam and Dean because he got their father killed and so that just left a bad taste in their mouths and his mouth and they didn't want to talk about the boys not only ellen and joe the roadhouse but other hunters as well Number 280, Still Way to Heaven from Season 9, Episode 22. The way that Tessa is used in this episode isn't the best because she eventually became this angel detonator because she hated her job as a reaper. She couldn't take it no more. Like, sure, but she was a reaper for, I'm assuming, a long time. When we saw her in Season 2 and 4, using Dean as a way to fuel his need for the blade but also get rid of her because she hates it, essentially. Her return is kind of disappointing because she was a really cool reaper that wasn't Death himself. The Still Way to Heaven was... Just just a complete joke because Metatron loves playing jokes on Cast. Castiel doesn't know about pop culture or books and movies. Metatron does, so he plays that on Castiel and Sam. He goes to the door to heaven. It's not heaven at all. It is like just a joke, which I feel like is the whole point of Metatron. But it's also an issue because I don't take him that seriously because he's meta. I feel like they take it a bit too far. It's like he's not a threat no more. I mean, he is, but he's so goofy, jokey, and such a meta person that I don't see him as a threat at all. And then Gadru decides to help the boys and 
cast, but instead gets a blade to the chest. Number 279, of grave importance, from season 7, episode 19. This is a really cool episode about how to be a ghost. Ghost decides to teach Annie and Bobby about how to touch things and move things and do things again, which would lead to, you know, Bobby helping Sam and Dean out about finding Annie and her body. The, you know, reveal of the boys finding out, hey, Bobby's alive. And I think their reactions are reasonable, one, because they think he was dead. He should be up in heaven, drinking, looking at magazines and listening to some good ass music, you know, but stays here wanting vengeance and in a way still suffering because he can't move on number 278 freaks and geeks from season 8 episode 18 that one girl named chrissy's back with her other kids that are around the same age about getting the revenge on monsters that kill their parents that whole setup is a complete lie because a guy named victor who was in season one which you know what looking back on season eight people that come back from season one he's a one doctor and he comes back because his family was killed by the leviathans and so he creates this lie of getting these kids parents killed training them up to become better than sam and dean bobby Garth, Ellen, and Joe because they need to be better but he did it in a way that was a lie and so when everything's out he said you know what I'll kill myself because put my pain onto others because I can't go through it alone and so he just drags like Chrissy two other girls and this one dude down with them Number 277, Give Me Shelter from Season 15, Episode 15. One half of this episode is very interesting with Amara coming back, Dean being able to talk to her about Chuck, about being free, about just not taking his crap no more, which seems a bit too easy. Like she was in the second episode and this episode. And so for Dean to be like, you know, hey, just come back, please. You owe us. And like they had this whole thing in Season 11 about do they like each other and whatnot. They even bring that up. It was just a phase. Like, okay, sure. And then the other half is is a very boring Cass and Jack hunting case. I mean, it could have been worse. They could have put these two storylines into like one episode, but they didn't, which is good. But one and a half, the darkness is way more interesting than Jack having his soul back and Cass going to this group about a monster or whatever, you know, that I don't care about. Number 276, Stranger in a Strange Land from season 14, episode 1. This premiere was mainly set up, which is what a premiere should do. The setups are just okay. It's not amazing or anything. You got Michael and Dean's body in this new suit, just, you know, realizes that there's not a lot of angels left. Decides to build new armies with vampires and whatnot. They love mentioning that good looking beard. And then there's this new boss in hell, or new hell boss, who is acting a bit eccentric, kind of like Crowley, not Crowley, but. He doesn't like it at all. He tells them, hey, you do it because, I don't know, you used to be a demon, drink demon blood, they fear you, do it, you're already leading this new group of people from that other world, just take this goddamn job. He doesn't want to. And Sam actually gets like a really like cool moment, little bar fight scene between Jack, Mary, Sam, and Bobby. All of that was done well, but then he's like, nope, go back to hell and no Lucifer, and hell is just in shambles. Jack is now useless, Bobby, new Bobby's cool, Mary's still useless, Joe tells Sam about new Dean, and, oh, not new Dean, but new michael and yeah that's it like all these things are like fine number 275 children shouldn't play with dead things from season 2 episode 4 dean is still angry and grieving over john's death and after hearing that big secret and so he's still going around being angry yelling at sam about doing his goddamn job and not you know just telling him the truth about how he really feels which he does by the end but throughout this entire episode he's just angry and more angry sam has gotten over it he already told him how he felt about john and the yellow eye demon and him dying and then dead people which they're not zombies but it kind of is I'm using like a spell or witchcraft to bring back dead people and so this guy who is not the best person ever kind of a loser he or the father brings back this girl that died in this car crash and sends her on this vengeance of killing the people that wronged her and got her killed in the first place which would backfire because this same guy gets killed by her after realizing that he's made a mistake and she's just a complete monster when she is shot in the head and she just kind of blows it off like oh shit sam is screwed him running away her catching up and then having to essentially impale her in order to kill her Number 274, Repo Man, from Season 7, Episode 15. This episode revolves around the boys' past mistakes coming back to bite him in the ass. Not even a mistake, just a person that was saved by them. Turns out was just messed up in the head, like being possessed by a demon, like torturing people through a demon. You think, okay, he's back for a reason, right? The whole Lilith stuff, like, seven years ago, comes back in the present. Sam and Dean are, you know, saying, hey, what up? You're normal, right? After your possession, right? You're not messed up in the head. They love being a demon. Doubt about backfire with lucifer being in sam's head the most infamous like line and moment in this episode is, is at the hotel Good
Number 273, Adventures in Babysitting from Season 7, Episode 11. This is the aftermath of Bobby's death. Sam and Dean are, you know, being sad boys for like two or three weeks. And then they get a call from Chrissy. You first meet her. She's just a kid. She knows about hunting and her dad. Tell her about Bobby. Sam and Dean split. He goes to Frank about these coordinates. And we get the typical Frank stuff of him being angry and jaded and being a bit crazy. I do like Frank. Like, he's kind of the goofy tech guy. Feels a bit unnecessary, but I do like him two monsters that like honey in duos and i do like how both sam and dean but mainly dean you know is like hey don't let chrissy continue on this journey of being a hunter because it's not an easy life like i do not want to become a hunter in this universe having to sleep in motels and you know the fake credit cards and stuff not having to worry about money and just being a fraud about it but like you know having to hide away from the fbi and cops and not getting caught by them by your fake ids and whatever that part of it is you know really risky but then also like having to go out at night and kill that's just no hell no i do like it watching it from a distance but actually you know living in it doing normal things is not good for a kid Number 272, The Thing from Season 13, Episode 17. That's all right. There's this god creature, portal world for this spell for this other portal. It's got tentacles. These people are protecting it because it's been passed on to them by their parents or generations. That part of it's cool. And then we also got Catch, which is, you know, goddamn Catch. Uh, he decides to, you know, just get away from FC guy, Asmodeus, because he's a horrible person. He decides to take Gabriel from him and use him to, like, take him out later on. But yeah, more of Asmodeus and Catch, who I don't care for. For Gabriel there, he doesn't need to be there. Totally not a retcon. Number 271, Bad Boys from Season 9, Episode 7. I think when this episode aired back on my channel, it didn't air because I don't remember seeing it at all. I remember seeing Episode 6 and then Episode 8 the next week, which I thought was weird. I never saw this episode live on air. Maybe my local network messed up, but episode's okay. I didn't really miss much. We get to see a Dean that's a teenager being watched by this guy with the really cool mustache and everything because he knows that like, he does hunting. And while the whole like past scenes are all kind of whatever, the very last scene of dean having to go back seeing little sam with the you know little toy and do i choose to dance with this girl or my little brother sam that was a really good scene he eventually meets that one girl she's still in a small little town and then even the ghost like the whole mom killing because the boy was being bullied or whatever like that was really nice Number 270, Paint It Black from Season 10, Episode 16. This is the love crazy nun that loves killing people that are having an affair because she was cheated on way back in the day. Like, she was in like a castle or something. But the one standout scene is Dean in this confession booth. Confesses that believes there is a god out there, but I don't think he's listening at all or even cares, which is, you know, mostly true. But aside from that, it's, you know, very typical, like very much like mostly in the church, which is not typical for Supernatural. And usually they go to different locations and different looks but just to save budget most of the episode took place in the church or i'm just like not remembering because even those scenes in the past that's still like in a church castle like church kind of but yeah it's okay Number 269, The Slice Girls from Season 7, Episode 13. Dean has a kid, which is a crazy premise. He decides to have a one-night stand and this lady's in his cult about giving birth to kids really, really fast in order to kill their father for a ritual reason. It sounds crazy and it is crazy. But I do like that Sam got his payback for Amy where his daughter, who's like now 13, is here to kill him. He can't do it, but Sam is able to because this is his payback to Amy. So I do like that they do bring that back in this episode even though that whole entire like killing of amy just unnecessary bring it back in order for sam to have his closure number 268 nightmare logic from season 14 episode 5 we get a new backstory to bobby because this isn't our bobby isn't as good as our bobby but very similar in a way where instead of his wife it's his son i think his son is angry at him for doing something i kind of forgot about it but it's a new spin on his typical like origins of killing his wife because of a demon and then we also get a Jin back which we last saw in season 8 they flash back to season 2 that amazing season 2 episode but we last saw a Jin technically in season 8 and then maggie who is that one like super nice naive girl that's obviously scared of all things hunting i always forget about her they use her like quite a bit as like a plot device every time they mention maggie it's like who's maggie it's not until like oh yeah that's yeah her yeah 
Number 267, The Bad Seed from Season 11, Episode 3. Cat still has a spellsness thing going on, hunting for Crowley, but he's gone, so now he's going around this town just trying to get anybody. They eventually get Rowena to, you know, get rid of it. But I do love her scenes of the Mega Coven. Not like a comical character, but whenever she's funny, she's really funny. Crowley, he's got Amara. She's like on a tablet. She wants to feed and eat more souls. He's just being a father to this entity that knows that it's using her, but she's going to be able to grow up as an adult during a halfway point Crowley doesn't know what to do up his own ass and doesn't understand just yet what he's got aside from Crowley and Verena the episode's pretty average you know like again episode 3 wrapping up the whole like darkness apocalypse thing zombie apocalypse and then Castiel's like spell sickness while also setting up Amar to become an adult Number 266, Playthings from Season 2, Episode 11. This episode kind of feels like the whole mansion and corners and halls. It feels like an homage to The Shining. Maybe I'm just thinking too much of that, but rewatching it, I was like, this feels like a homage to girls. One is not real and one is. The entire episode on rewatch is like, come on, get on with it. Like, I was finding myself kind of bored watching the episode and being on Twitter and YouTube. It doesn't have that rewatchability. Fun twist of, hey girls, you think, oh, she's got two daughters and nope, the older one's like clearly a spirit i do like drunk sam though him telling dean you gotta kill me and short and everything that was all pretty funny number 265 somewhere between heaven and hell from season 12 episode 15 lucifer's big big boy big girl hellhound is out sam and dean are hunting it this girl pissed off and so they call for the king of hell himself crowley he comes in sam and dean get cool glasses they eventually get rid of it but the big part is crowley has lucifer in change meanwhile you have other demons that don't respect crowley they want lucifer out and so you're thinking oh, okay this is real stupid but then crowley pulls a fast one on lucy he decides to clip his wings and like just come completely own him you know just dismantle him i think everyone watching this season was like you know where this is headed he's gonna get the best of crowley and he eventually does and so while it is a cool moment it's like real dumb like the fact that he even saved lucifer was just we just want mark pellegrino in here in terms of narrative this is real dumb Number 264, Byzantium from season 14, episode 8. This is the episode where the boys are like, let's have a drink for Jack. And it's very, they have music playing over it and Sam cutting like a tree with an axe. All of it feels like, why are we doing this? We all know Jack's coming back. He's a series regular. And so it's like, okay, come on, get to the point. Lily comes back, that one uh, eye patch girl. She's really cool. She's now old now. She's the girl that used her soul to kill all those angels because killed her daughter. There's this really cool, like, I guess, system in between hell and heaven where this guy's like, if you get the white beads you go to heaven and if you get the black beads you go to hell like the way that a person gets chosen to go to heaven and hell is really cool they're trying to fix that doing what she did with the angels was a very sinful and bad thing like live that long and get her revenge but with her sacrificing herself to save jack and use jack's soul to save him that's how she was chosen not to go to hell but go back to heaven she wasn't selfish i do like that part of the episode but you know jack being dead is like okay we all know this is you know come on that's what thing cast makes a deal with the empty which will come back very later on Number 263, Alex, Annie, Alexis, Anne from season 9, episode 19. That title, a lot of A's in it. So Alex is introduced. She's used as bait in order to lure normal humans into her vampire family. But she herself isn't a vampire until the very end because the vampire mother is very selfish and wants to replace Alex as her own daughter. She can't move on from the fact that her own daughter died, which is why Jody's brought in because she still remembers her husband and son. All of that happening in season 5, that still hurts, but she was able to move past it not like force it on some other little boy or whatever right or kidnap a boy you know jody by the end is able to you know take care of her and will take her under her wing until the very end of the series meanwhile you have i think dean has an amazing scene of telling a vampire to look at him overpowering this guy in vampire and just cutting his head off look at me look at me bitch Number 262, Despair from Season 15, Episode 18. This is the episode that either got people really happy and excited or pissed off. I love you moment. Now, here's the thing about that. The whole, like, Dean Castiel thing. That, to me, was always fan fiction. Fan thing, you know, like, okay, you know, kind of gross, but that's fan fiction. So it becomes an issue when you're, like, baiting fans that really want this in their own way. And so him saying I love you felt like a bait. Even though, to me, that always felt like a Reddit thing and whatever, right? Just super, like, Rule 34 stuff. And 
hand, I just never cared about it. So that moment, didn't really care for it. I was like, yeah, you know, all right. I guess they acknowledged it the closest way that they could. And then everything else is just like Infinity War. The way that it ends, the playgrounds and just bikes on the ground feels very much like an inspiration from Avengers Infinity War. Number 261, Inherit the Earth from Season 15, Episode 19. So this is a very predictable end for Chuck because I think everyone had predicted that Jack would defeat Chuck by becoming the new god and having his powers somehow. And that's what happened. Throughout this entire episode, he's like going around inheriting the earth. Meanwhile, you have like Lucifer come back. Why? Well, I guess they needed one more Lucifer in there, which, hey, sure. Michael's back, which he's in one good episode. And then, yeah, he's, you know, he's here. He wants daddy's approval. Daddy kills him. They got rid of Michael and Lucifer. They did the whole like death thing, which the rules now is that in order for their new death to be born, they need to kill the most recent Reaper. And so they do that whole thing in this episode. And then we get to the fight, which Chuck just beats down on them, you know? And Jack is on the side, just collecting more and more. He becomes a new god. He walks away, brings people back, but not their loved one. Because just letting things be, if the boys die, they die. Number 260, Plucky Penny Whistles Magic from Season 7, Episode 14. This is about clowns and Sam's phobia about clowns and Dean laughing at it. It is a fun episode, but again, this is what, like 11, 12, 13, this is four episodes in to filler and no development for the Leviathans, aside from maybe some lines by Frank here and there. Like the pacing of Season 7 is the worst. You have five, six episodes in a row where there's just no development for the Leviathans. And so you have subpar to average filler episodes this is a fun one but still it's like where are the leviathans you know like okay this guy that got bullied and got his kid killed by drowning okay clown stuff with sam was really fun the whole like chuck e cheese ripoff thing that was actually quite fun but the main issue no real like narrative plot progression Number 259, Absence from Season 14, Episode 18. After two seasons of doing nothing and no development, Mary finally gets an episode dedicated to her getting development and just seeing her, that's it, essentially. We'd add her in Season 12, she was used as a plot device in order to catch up, which was fine for like the first three episodes. And then the boys would whine at her and be like, why would you join the British Men of Letters? And it was like, okay. She punched the devil. She went into another world, met another Bobby. She actually gets no development, so her coming back was again kind of for nothing really it sucks too because we only get this after she dies i mean it makes sense because jack is also trying to like get her back but can't because he has no soul he doesn't know what to do number 258 mariah from season 14 episode 20 while i like this finale it comes with a big retcon probably the biggest retcon god is the villain he is the bad guy coming a final villain for the final season i do like the idea but there's no build up to it at all whatsoever aside from one scene in episode 17 i think with joe and cass but it still comes out of nowhere chuck was like really hands off he just created things and just let them be do whatever give plot armor but aside from that he was hands off he would never come into the story until he was needed in a so for him to be like all right listen to me boys kill jack this is you know like adam and eve good shit right and then they don't want to obey him so he's like okay i'll kill jack like what the last time we saw him this makes no sense whatsoever but setting him up to be like the final villain is interesting so it's like i like a part of this episode but then there's this huge retcon and then all the other stuff jack being soulless and then jack actually accepting his fate of hey you know what kill me dean and then dean doesn't do it and then the whole like lying stuff that was all pretty fun as well but the one big issue is that that big retcon number 257 carry on from season 15 episode 20 this is the final episode the series finale people were split on this ending some people loved it some people didn't i was always in the middle on this all the way back in the start of season 10 i had already made peace with the fact that the show needs to end there's no reason as to why the show needs to be 15 seasons long because they're kind of doing the same thing both the boys they would start the season and end in the season kind of the same way mostly they either save each other or create more chaos or more damage to the whole world and it's just a repeat essentially the same season each season with you know different things with the mark of cain amara which is the same kind of threat as lucifer back in season five essentially so i was already like okay the whole having no plot armor thing really like that because jack is not the new god and he is totally hands off so if one of the brothers die they're gonna die there's no like an angel coming back to save them or you know jack coming and being like you're the chosen one nope maybe dean going out the way he did was not the best maybe like a pack of vampires or monsters coming in to bite him maybe but not you know just one like nail 
scale. Dean's speech to Sam was good, but it did go on for a bit too long. And then they switched places where the original ending at season five, Sam is the one to sacrifice and not run away from family while Dean is having that normal life. Dean is the one to die and Sam gets to live his life with, I'm assuming, Eileen, probably. He has a kid named Dean. He has a really bad makeup and wig on, which, you know, goddamn. And then they're both in heaven with Bobby and everyone else. So they end off on this bridge with the Impala, just looking out at the water. And then the last shot is the whole crew waving goodbye, saying thank you with a drone shot. That was really nice. Number 256, The Rising Sun from Season 13, Episode 2. Ruin Diaz is introduced in a white suit. He's fine as another, you know, Prince of Hell. He's the last one remaining. Dagon, Ramiel, I think. And then, first yellow eye, wait, what's his name? The very first one, they've all died. He's here just to, you know, get the throne of hell because Crowley's dead. Lucifer is gone. Able to trick Donatello because he wants Jack to get all of these creatures out from hell. Which I think is a drop storyline, I think. They never ever bring it up again. And then the fight between Michael and Lucifer in the other world you know did not end the world I mean I guess it did in that earth but you know it was just a brawl fight very underwhelming but I do like Jack thinking about himself about Cass about how Dean thinks of him I believe the end scene is him stabbing himself because he sees himself as a monster and then Dean's like don't worry I'll kill you because he's still kind of not sure about Jack yet Number 255, Sin City from Season 3, Episode 4. Half of this episode, I do not care about whatsoever. Sam and Dean are in Vegas. They meet their Vegas buddy, who's also a hunter. He gets killed by this demon, trying to trick her. But Sam's arc and story in this episode is like hunting on this fake thing and gets tricked. Meets a priest who's also a demon. Gets hit on by this chick in this bar. Knows how Vegas is like. It's like, I don't care. That's not interesting. The other half is way more interesting with Dean talking to this demon about hell and how scary it is. How much... They don't want to be in hell. They want out. And it's also the first mention of Lucifer. Dean be, you know, very scared about going to hell, making that deal, asking all these questions, how scary it is. The demon even mentions Azazel and how he planned on Sam on leading a bunch of army and demons. Number 254, The Things They Carried from Season 10, Episode 15. This is a rerun of the one episode in Season 6 about the little worm. This comes back, I think. It's not the same one, but it's kind of the same. Going inside people's ear. The boys meet Cole one last time as a way to get over this whole honey thing, but also move on. I'm not gonna lie, though. Look at what Sam does. Because I only remember Dean watching over Cole because he has that little worm in his ear. Sam is just kind of there, I feel like. It's a good rerun of the same episode from Season 6. Number 253, 99 Problems from Season 5, Episode 17. Once again, another episode that is forgettable in Season 5 because everything else is so much better and good, but it's fun. And it's a rerun of the same episode in Episode 2, The Horseman War, essentially, but there's just no horseman. There's the Whore of Babylon, which was a pretty funny line from Cass. And he's also drunk, decided to go inside this liquor store and drink all of it. And Dean does make a very selfish move on going to Lisa, telling her how much he thinks about her and Ben, tells her she's going to be safe. There's going to be this guy picking her up and whatever and then he's like you know what goodbye he's probably gonna say yes to michael because he's given up he's done everything and there just seems to be no hope at all whatsoever leaves lisa very worried about him Number 252, The British Invasion from Season 12, Episode 17. Mick's arc in this season is essentially Castiel from Season 4. Both him and Cass are in this group and at a very young age had to do some very suspect things. He had to kill his best friend. Back then, he felt pretty bad about it, but over time, he's like, okay, I'm not officially a man of letter and I'm just doing research. And But then after spending some time with the brothers, he's like, you know what? They're right. Not everything's black and white. Our methods and ways are efficient, but the way that we do them and choose who gets to die, not the best way. And then, and guess what happens they kill him off catch kills him by the orders of the big boss and it sucks because he was the best part about the british men of letters and story and so they just got rid of the best part meanwhile you have dagon and kelly on the run getting away from the cults and the boys Number 251, Keep Calm and Carry On from Season 12, Episode 1. This was a pretty good episode to what seemed like a very promising season. Finally, we know what happens to angels when the whole hand sigil thing and they just blast away, flying like a goddamn meteor on this like farmland, just knocks out this one dude and steals his truck. Do they just go to heaven or whatever, you know? So cool seeing that. The British men of letters suck because they're like, we're around, we make place better, but where the hell were you guys when the apocalypse happened and the darkness happened? Nowhere to be found because they were just set up. They had to make up excuses and really not compelling ways to be like we're better than you like that's it that's the only reason why and then even torturing sam he's like i was tortured by the devil what are you guys gonna do aside from cold water and like a blowtorch not very menacing at all whatsoever and then mary's back just kind of catching up on 30 years of technology and cars and hairstyles or you know whatever catching up 
Number 250, Mamma Mia from Season 12, Episode 2. This continues the whole torturing Sam by the Brits. They inject him with this needle that shows him past mistakes and memories. That doesn't get to him. He kills himself. Gets that one lady from Vampire Diaries or the originals? Vancouver actor? I think I know her from somewhere else. She comes down being tricked. Sam almost gets out but, you know, doesn't. Dean, Mary, and all the others get there. And, you know, it's a very civil fight. Punching and, like, apparently she knows witchcraft. And then Mick shows up being like, we're here to, you know, work with the Americans. After coming from the dark darkness and then the villains being humans the british men of letters it's hard not to be like this is a downgrade and then we also get introduced to the new lucifer played by rick springfield who's not the best at portraying lucifer he's fine number 249 the hunter games from season 10 episode 10 we get more clear after seeing her new family getting killed by dean and decides to go back to another like couple who wants to be her family and is clearly using her metatron is back being annoying as ever and lies about the mark because he knows nothing about it but he's like you know what let me just push the buttons on dean knowing the fact that he survived and has the mark it glows up almost kills him heaven is working with castile but then after this whole incident they're like no you almost killed the most annoying person ever in heaven so you can't have it no more essentially and then crowley's stuff with warina and hell pretty fun calling her like an evil bitch and everything her spying on him plotting things out plotting to kill him hex bags on like everything probably doesn't know this just yet because it's his mother so it's like i hate you but you're my mother so i'll have you around why not and this is the premiere back every time this show has a mid-season premiere it's not as good as the mid-season finale so this is just a continued tradition of coming back from the winter break and then being like it was a good episode but not as good as the finale Number 248, we need to talk about Kevin from season 8, episode 1. So for some reason, this season, Jeremy Carve took over. Uh, let's have the brothers be apart, like a lot, in the first half. So we have Sam, one year later, not hunting, has a normal life, but goes away from Amelia. Dean, for one year, stuck in purgatory, being kind of aggressive, kind of kill happy, meets Benny, frees Benny. Kevin is gone, got away from Crowley. There's a demon tablet, Crowley's the main villain, who's great, kills his girlfriend, and now Kevin's kind of a part of this. His whole thing is getting out of this this whole mess but then sue finds out that once you're in this whole like honey life you're not really gonna get out really the boys are either gonna come back knocking or you're gonna die like very soon essentially also sam not hunting and not looking for dean kind of a dumb move on the writer's part why wanting them apart because why not you know like that was a real dumb move on their part Number 247, Bloodlines from Season 9, Episode 20. This is the first of three spin-off ideas. This one, I didn't mind as much. I think people are more down on this one because it's about, like, a mob family, but all of them are monsters. So you got, like, werewolves, vampires, five of them in Chicago. And so I actually really like that idea. I think the issue is the main character is very, like, just kind of bland. Illinois, you know, living there. But then his girl gets killed. He wants revenge. He's like, you know what? I'll be like Sam and Dean. I'm going to kill all these family monsters in one season, right? But not have my this and it's also essentially supernatural 2.0 which is the issue with wayward sisters as well it's supernatural and not different enough from the original show because you have the Arrowverse, right you have arrow the dark gritty action focused show flash is more meta happy show legends is a time travel show black lightning is more mature in terms of like what they do in the show and then you have the vampire diary show which i haven't watched but i'm assuming vampire diaries the originals even legacies all are different in terms of cast and tone of the shows and then speaking of spinoffs this prequel spinoff the Winchesters makes no sense. Like, I don't think John and Mary didn't meet until in their 20s, right? like early 20s, maybe like 19, 18. She was a hunter and he wasn't. So it's like, wait a minute. They somehow knew each other before that? Are they going to do the whole, like, they knew each other and then guess what? Mind wipe, you know, because that messes up the whole timeline. And like, why even do that? It looks fine. This Bloodlines spinoff show, I wouldn't have minded, but most people are like, eh, whatever. <laughs> Number 246, Meta Fiction from Season 9, Episode 18. There's aspects of Metatron that I really like. The whole meta-ness, title screen, and then going back, Metatron. That was really cool. Him telling his own story, bringing Gabriel back. All that was fun. But then that's also another reason as to why I don't see him as a threat, nor a really good villain. Because he seems too OP, too kind of goofy, and too meta for me to take him as seriously as Lucifer or even the Leviathans. I do like the whole book stuff and pop culture about having cast now all this knowledge and then that's the reason as to why he goes down and gets defeated and then Kadrill realizes that hey you know what Metatron's a bit too meta a bit of an asshole I want to switch sides 
Number 245, Alpha and Omega from Season 11, Episode 23. This was a pretty underwhelming finale, especially coming off of the probably best penultimate episode. They introduced the British Men of Letters last minute, which again, I can't blame the writers because this started all the way back in the Season 6 finale, or even all the way at the start where the writers don't know if they're going to get renewed or not by the CW. They don't renew shows like five seasons. They renew it one season, once a year. And so by the time they get renewed in January or February, they're like, I don't know, done writing or like either close to the finale. So they're like okay we need to wrap things up but then we also need to set up something for the cliffhanger and so that's what mary is essentially at the very end in the british men of letters they're just kind of waiting me like hopefully fingers crossed we get renewed and then they do it's like okay we can have all these exposition dump and it also explains amara's quick change of like you know what i don't want to kill my brother i want him to be with me but i want to be alone she decides to save him and chuck is like cool and then once again he just leaves sam and dean to be on their own because you know good luck you know you're on your own now okay Number 244, Exile on Main Street from Season 6, Episode 1. Is Samuel coming back, the grandfather? Makes no sense still. I don't know why they brought him back. Even after being revealed as to why he's back, who he's working for, it's like, still, why? Like, it makes no sense aside from, hey, you remember this guy? He was in Season 4, you know? Like, I don't know why. Dean finally getting to live his normal life. But once Sam comes in, it's like, yep, you gotta go. Bobby knew. Nope, I didn't want to tell you because you were happy. I would just ruin it, essentially. Sam said the same thing. He knows about Samuel. It's like, still, why is he there? No cast the yell. Decent opener to what feels like confusing moments and choices. Why characters are brought back. Why is Sam back? And there's also a sense of this shouldn't really exist because the finale swan song was great, you know? I guess we're here. Let's see what they got. Number 243, Last Holiday from Season 15, Episode 14. This is the first episode back from the long COVID break. All of the studios shut down because of the outbreak. And so I remember a lot of people being like, eh, this episode's okay, you know, but I don't know, I didn't mind it. Being the year that was 2020 and just having an episode be very happy, fun, cheerful, hopeful, you know, it's like, you know what? I don't mind it. Sam and Dean, they discover a new area from the bunker once again, because why not? Jack has his soul back and they find a, what's it called? Nim? Something like that? Cheerful doesn't like Jack because he's evil, puts him away, puts Sam away, he's going on dates with Eileen, but then it's also like, how do they have time for this? You have Chuck watching, deal with that, but hey, you know what, this is a fun episode, okay? But then eventually, they're like, hey, Jack isn't bad, there's that telescope that we always see in the background of this show, apparently, it's looking at different multiverses, so that was really cool, never gotta see it again after that, really. Number 242, Destiny's Child from Season 15, Episode 13. This whole entire episode is essentially getting to meet Ruby and how she knew Joe, both Jared and Jensen's wife, being in a scene together in an episode. It was cool, I guess. We also got to meet Meg in the Empty. That was really cool. The whole point of this episode is Jack getting his soul back because he now realizes that, hey, telling the mother and all that stuff, he actually starts crying at the end. So that's the whole point of this episode. But everything else is like, that's cool, I guess. It's not like bad or I guess it's okay, but it's a decent enough of an episode number 241 the trap from season 15 episode 9 i do like the whole casino part on how chuck is trying to make sam not believe in dean and Cass. got it from like michael and adam and then all of that ties back to the whole bullet sam and chuck has since the finale of last season and so really like how they got rid of the bullet dean and castell going to purgatory was very underwhelming because while well, we got to see it like there's no action there's a moment for dean saying sorry to Cass, and Cass gets taken away but we don't see what happens to Cass. it felt useless it was like wait we don't get to see that we just get to see like a moment for Dean. That's it. All right, sure. And then Sam gets to see every different version of both the boys being vampires, which their mouths look weird. Like Sam, especially him, open his mouth. I'm assuming it's prosthetics, but it looks it looks weird. Both Jody and Bobby or versions of them kill Sam and Dean. There's other versions of Sam being alone and Dean being alone and seeing everyone die, having multiverses and dimensions or whatever. Why not? Number 240, Beat the Devil from Season 13, Episode 21. Once again, Castell mentions to Gabriel, Hey, heaven's in trouble. It might implode, but it won't because writers forgot about it. Using Lucifer as a way to just keep the time portal open. That was a really cool idea, but that backfires because Marina can't help but just talk shit to him. After all, he's done to her and killing her. Pushes him to the portal. He makes it in there. A blessing because Sam dies. And for a second, I was like, oh, this is actually done well. Like, it's, you know, black and white filter. It's in a darkened cave. It's done really well. But then 
and Lucifer's back being like, hey, I saved you. I want to get the Jack. Take me to him. And so the entire plan, it works. Sam dying wasn't planned. Worked out in the end because it always does. Number 239, Province from Season 1, Episode 19. We get introduced to a Sarah who is not the most memorable girl for Sam. I think Sarah's cool. Kind of this one-time thing of having fun because Dean's even like, you lost Jess, but I think she would want you to have some fun. And he does have some fun with Sarah in this episode. The painting is fun. It's not the most scariest thing, but it works. The boys try burning it down. They think they do. And then it just comes right back up. And they do pull a fast one on you of, you think it's the father, but it's that little ass girl with a doll and everything. Number 238, Torn and Frayed from Season 8, Episode 10. The boys are back together because of Cass. Cass needs them. Last episode, they're like, I don't want you no more. I hate you. Guess what? They're back. They need to save that angel. Name's Alfie. Crowley has him and his demon torturing him with needles. And these scenes are brutal to watch. I can't imagine having like thick of needles just inside your head. Talking like Enochian and talking about tablets and how there's an angel tablet. But we also learned that Naomi's using all the angels. She somehow got Cass out, brainwashed him into killing Alfie and taking control of them and then Amelia is like hey you want to come back I'll come back to the hotel if you're not there then I'm out Sam's out he chooses you know Dean obviously because this storyline with Amelia is pointless it's not interesting at all Number 237, Trial and Error from Season 8, Episode 14. Kevin is able to decipher the first trial is to kill a hellhound and bathe in its blood, which sounds, you know, brutal, disgusting, but also awesome. But that montage of Kevin, again, just waking up like at 5 a.m., going to sleep at 2, 3 hours of sleep, eating hot dogs and eating pills, and it's not a healthy lifestyle, but he wants out, which once again, he's not going to get out ever. He is the prophet, which means that both demons and angels want him. So unless he dies, he is not getting out whatsoever. The boys find a hellhound in this rich large land and Dean has a thing with this one girl they find the hellhound Sam does a trial because it's his turn to die essentially last season Dean almost died and both the boys switch back and forth on who gets to die or sacrifice each other Number 236, Salvation from Season 1, Episode 21. This is a decent penultimate. John has to go away from the brothers, go get caught by Meg and his other demon because they would never believe that he would have the cult left there with the boys, which is a mistake because Sam wastes one more bullet on Azazel. But also, they have to save this family, which feels very like it's not really building up aside from, hey, look, there's Yellow Eye. Where John is at, that feels like more story progression. What Sam and Dean are doing, they're just kind of redoing Episode 9, Home. Fire goes up, they save a family, but ends in the same way number 235 everybody loves a clown from season 2 episode 2 you finally get introduced to other hunters the roadhouse we meet ash with his amazing haircut joe and ellen no mentions of john because dead both sam and dean are still getting over that grieving over that throughout the whole entire episode dean even yells at sam being like get over it essentially i'm dealing with it and they meet a clown which clowns aren't scary to me i never got why people were scared maybe the face mask and the getting anything or like i don't know maybe to some people clowns are just magical which which this one is it's pretty much magical and ghost like the clown stuff was fine mainly the roadhouse and then dean this is how i'm gonna deal with dad's death and the secret crash and the impala once again with the lead pipe Number 234, Asylum from Season 1, Episode 10. This is the brother's first physical fight, being possessed by this ghost that likes bringing out like trauma or just issues with people that have issues with others. Sam has an issue with John and Dean about the way they were raised, how they're bossing them around and just being like, I want to disobey. I don't want to follow the rules. Dean is much more kind of like a soldier on how to live off motels and cheap food, fake IDs and cards. The actual asylum doesn't really matter. The ghost matters because it's doing all these things, but the asylum is just as like cool aesthetic of dark hallways fake phone calls and other scary things and then to end off john calls as i think the mid-season cliffhanger i think episode 10 was the mid-season point Number 233, Skin from Season 1, Episode 6. Most people remember this episode mainly because of the aesthetics effects of Shapeshifter Dean ripping his own skin off, the ear, the teeth coming out. That looked awesome. And this is the one and only time that I remember for a very long time that they actually used practical effects because they would just change to, you know, CGI, which is fine. But I don't think the show ever got to this much level of like blood and just ripping skin off ever. I don't know if that was just because of budget, money costs, or just like easier to just do it on like a computer now, you know? So just switch to that i wish the show would have gotten more stuff like this maybe some exploding head ripping skin off everything else dean quote-unquote dying that would come back later on in season two and then also like the show is so old because they would use like these flip phones and then just eventually over time smartphones like that's how old the show is 2005 they like mentioned myspace early on it's like oh yeah myspace facebook came by and then phones were a bit different you know and now it's smartphones but everything else is like decent aside from that skin ripping scene that was awesome 
Number 232, Unforgiven from Season 6, Episode 13. I do like that we get one more episode with Solo Sam. He was awesome. He was the best part about the first half. And so, one more flashback episode about how him and Samuel went on this hunt. And just, Sam's super cold, heartless, killed these innocent people. They came back, and the only one wanted revenge. It does feel out of place. So, in terms of placement of the season, kind of like, alright, start the second half with Eve and Dragons, and then back to Solo Sam. It's like, what? Gone past this. But you know what? I don't care. Solo Sam is great. And it would also just the wall immediately set up Black episode and then just like hey past mistakes coming back to haunt you guess what now your wall is broken sam sees himself in hell number 231 blood brother from season 8 episode 5 we get a lot of backstory for benny the human turned vampire he had this love thing with his other vampire but betrayed him he has to kill a lot of vampires dean is able to help him leave sam off just kind of brushes him off being like hey yeah, whatever i'll be back which leads into more flashback with amelia and don't care whatsoever and then we get no trust between the brothers i wish benny was used more frequently and more better because he's there to just cause an issue between the brothers which i don't really like i wish we'd have gotten more assistance for him maybe instead of these cryptic phone calls and hiding from the shadows having a secret life and everything have more involvement because i do like him a lot but the way he was used as a argument tool for the brothers wasn't the best number 230 ask jeeves from season 10 episode 6 this is another like rich people storyline where bobby knew these like people sam and dean knows there's one person that knows about their life and hunting and there's like a shapeshifter issue i think someone's killing off these rich people it's fun to watch you know two older ladies hitting on sam how tall he is dean is hanging around this other lady who's helping them and it's clearly the killer like straight up it's just the killer but the important thing is dean losing it he shoots a bit too much and you know it's like what's going on here so very disappointing that demon dean lasted for three episodes but if you can get over that and see like the progression of him slowly turning back losing control and wanting to kill then it's a decent watch you're seeing him slowly being in denial being like no i'm not like curving to you know kill people you know whatever i still have the mark but i'm good number 229 heaven can't wait from season 9 episode 6 Cass is still a human not homeless but he's working at this convenience store as steve and he thinks he's going on a date and dean's talking about like dress and chairs and the bloopers and whatnot but nope she was going on a date with another person she wants steve to babysit which is kind of messed up give him all this mixed signals of like hey i'm into you but like okay you have abaddon who's still on the rise queen of hell because crowley's been in the dungeon just sitting for hours and upon hours seeing nothing but black he gets pissed off because Sam doesn't let him go so Crowley is kind of useless in the first half of season 9 he's doing nothing aside from thinking about human blood back to that church scene about HBO Max and love and everything just being human and then this angel healer which sounds like a rough time apparently back in heaven war these healer would heal them by killing angels getting rid of their agony pain and misery kind of messed up he like kills his high school girl this one dude in this cabinet and now Castiel because you know no, he's suffering not an angel he hates it thought he was going on a date but didn't trying to save this baby dean comes in to save the day and you know they make it out alive number 228 tombstone from season 13 episode 6 i think there's only three western no two western episodes but it's like a ghoul hunt jack leaves because the actor has a contract that says he's not in every episode and so he has to leave at some point the actual hunting and ghoul itself is not that interesting what's interesting is Cass and jack interacting because he sees Cass as his father so them talking about sleep they don't really sleep at all aside from like jack only a little bit this is the episode where i think jack got in trouble the actor because he kept laughing because both jared and Jensen were making him laugh and this is the first year with them and everyone knows that they love playing pranks on each other and cast so you know this is a new cast member he's in it for the long run number 227 optimism from season 14 episode 6 there are two cases in this episode which is done really kind of interesting i actually wish they would have done more of this where you have sam and charlie or new charlie that's not charlie hunting something the whole point of that is that sam knows that this isn't his charlie she isn't the same he has to accept that while also having fun with her on his hunt this other case is jack and dean hunting something the actual hunting whatever monster it is i forgot about but what matters is the whole like interactions jack meets his girl still is useless and she takes a like into him and the user dean is in a way kind of i guess a father to him in a way as so he's like going around searching and he's there just being like super naive still a kid even though he's like early 20s maybe they eventually get rid of whatever's going on but this girl decides to write like a note to him on this computer being like hey jack i miss you and blah 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 it doesn't matter because she's not coming back the format of having two cases going on at the same time in the same episode was done pretty well 
Number 226, Sharp Teeth from Season 9, Episode 12. Garf is now a werewolf because he got bitten by one, got caught trying to steal like cow meat. And this doesn't change anything. I mean, aside from being a werewolf, it changes to him having like a wife and a family later on. If he's still the wacky, goofy, kind of crazy, one side of the family hates this new way of living. The other half is like, yeah, we are, you know, pro-human life. We don't want to kill humans. Causes an issue between the brothers and everyone involved. Garf almost gets killed and kills half the family. The boys are just catching up about getting the marks I'm having a needle in his goddamn neck and then just kind of catching up with Garf he's off on his own now living that normal somewhat normal but you know safe life number 225 Chris Angel is a douchebag from season 4 episode 12 this is like not actual magic but magic not being used by a witch but you know by actual like a show and getting out of like those crazy boxes and spikes on top of you all that stuff it's a really fun episode and like half the episode I would say is focused on these like old relics the past they're not as popular as the new kids of doing magic so one of them's like you know what let's do some magic and kill you quote unquote but kill other people at the same time because they want that you know audience back clapping everything cheering they don't have that anymore and so while it is sad to be like we don't have our mojo no more it does suck at the end the one main guy that's like wanting to do all these stunts has to see both of his friends die and Sam and Dean are just kind of there for the show and then at the end Sam's like okay you know what Ruby let's do this full on drinking demon blood and dark clouds out of people and all that stuff number 224 swap meet from season 5 episode 12 this is the show's version of Freaky Friday and I actually think it would have been better if it was Sam and Dean and not Sam and this other kid. I get why they did it to tie into the whole plot but I think this is the one time where I think they should have gone full on filler and not include like these high school kids that are dumb into witchcraft. We need this kid to say yes to Lucifer to this demon so this Sam's but you're a kid and say yes to Lucifer. Like I don't care about that. These two other kids are dumb. They want something out of this demon. This is the one time where I'm like you know what? Why not have it not include the plot? Have it actually be Sam and Dean. It would have been way more funnier. Way more interesting. So got sam living in a house a very boring miserable life of like school and high school and being a virgin you know sam calls him a virgin but i don't think it could have been as fun as with just sam and dean Number 223, Dark Dynasty from Season 10, Episode 21. This episode is well known for one major death, a fan favorite, Charlie. I remember, like, at this time, Twitter and everything, and I remember, you know, there were some heated arguments and backlash from this. Why kill Charlie was a catalyst to Dean embracing the mark once again, be at peace with it, but Sam was lying behind his back because the brothers have to, and in doing so, got Charlie killed. Further breeds embraced his mark again and kill all the Stein family, which are a bunch of freaking Stein family, which... I don't mind them. They're short-lived, but the entirety of season 10 is very small stories. So I didn't really mind it. Charlie dying. While I get it why people are upset, while I felt like the shock value thing, it still did something for the narrative of season 10. Number 222, Man Who Knew Too Much from Season 6, Episode 22. I think Eric Kripke came back to write this episode, and he did a pretty good job. Mainly the whole Sam stuff, a large portion of the episode is Sam being in his own head, confronting his past mistakes and fears, and so, soulless Sam, this one girl that he killed at this bar, and the version of Sam that remembers hell, Cassio turning on Crowley and Raphael, that was pretty cool. Him becoming God, comes out of nowhere, it really does. Yeah, okay, they actually could have done something with this, but Misha Collins wasn't available Season 7, and so, this was would kind of be wasted in a way turn into leviathans and then balthazar they kill him off which was unnecessary i feel like he was kind of the replacement for gabriel because they needed that like person that angel or demon that was like playing both sides and just kind of doing whatever he or she wanted i felt like that was balthazar and so they killed him off this early on i thought he would be a bigger character in the show but they just had him in season six Number 221, Mommy Darius from Season 6, Episode 19. So there's a part of me that's like, you know what? Good on you for killing Eve. But it's also frustrating because you have three villains, essentially. Like, plot lines going on. You have Mother of All Eve, Raphael, and Crowley. This one's set up in the second half, and... But then you just kill her all? Like, why build all this up? Felt like it was for nothing, essentially. I guess her death is done really well, too, because Dean's able to, like, drink the ash of Phoenix. And then she bites him, and that's how she dies. And so that was really cool. But it's also, like, it took that little to kill her Crowley is obviously still alive because why would you kill off Crowley the best character on the show and then we do get Jefferson Starships it's a really funny bit in this episode of Dean just calling them that because it's a bridge between like a vampire and a shapeshifter I think Number 220, Shut Up Dr. Phil from Season 7, Episode 5. I like to call this episode the Buffy episode because you have Spike and Cordelia in this episode from Buffy. Both playing witches who have been divorced and are still witches. They hate each other. They ruin their marriage and their paintings and their uh, statues or whatever. Sam and Dean are just, again, in the middle of the story. See so much of them that focus on another side character or the villain. Why not, you know? And so since they're in the middle of this whole, like, marriage issue, both of them are able to convince Spike and Cordelia to be like, hey, get together again. And 
can they do? And so they solve a case that like it's a positive outcome. Most of the time it's super negative or like it's positive, but we had a kill. They were able to save a marriage between two witches. That Leviathan guy shows up, witchcraft by Spike. It was fun. It was cool seeing them. Number 219, Out of the Darkness, Into the Fire, from Season 11, Episode 1. This is a zombie apocalypse, but with the darkness, with black veins on people's skin and everything. They meet this one cop lady, which kind of reminds me of like Leon Kennedy. First day on the job and everything. She's hurt, take her to his hospital, people are freaking out. They find this baby that's totally not going to be Almara. Meanwhile, you have Cass dealing with spells. Crowley's having an orgy because why not? He's got bigger issues, but whatever. There's a mention of the cage, which is really exciting because it's the like first time since like season six they've even touched on it and just the possibilities of what it could mean lucifer and michael dean's weird connection with the mar which always felt like i get what they're trying to go for like this whole like monster and human love thing but i'm not sure if it was done well it always felt like it was there kind of weird but i don't know i feel like i just accepted it i'm like okay this is what they're going with and then sam got caught with the whole black vein and everything Number 218, Family Remains from Season 4, Episode 11. There's no supernatural being at all in this episode whatsoever. I don't mind that. This whole episode feels like a cheap, not cheap, but a B-horror movie from like the 70s and 80s. It's just like really crazy family that likes eating rats, which means they got rabies. They look disgusting. They're just living under this house, killing owners. It's an episode that felt very normal. Normal and this show standards because it's usually something like a ghost or vampires and demons, but it's not. It's very normal. It's very true crime murder. Case for the boys family itself is like fine which by the way that mother she is supergirl the 1984 supergirl movie which is not great number 217 Fossum prison blues from season 2 episode 19 my only issue both of the boys took a big risk going to prison their dad owed them this guy and haven't really met the guy but even that's like you got Hendrickson's on your ass the fbi like both of them took a big risk of being like you know we won't get in their fights or trouble the other inmates which they do dean apparently loves it he fits right in it is a bit extreme of being like we gotta go hunt on this case let's go inside this prison to find this body we don't now we gotta go break out like prison break it's this whole elaborate plan the one dude beating on dean is the guy that owed john and then they have to get the lawyer involved which she lies to hendrickson's about their grave hopping and grave digging or whatever if you think about it i don't think like why would you do this Number 216, Soul Survivor from Season 10 to 3. Demon Dean is only 3 episodes long, which again, it's that format of first 3 episodes, finish that cliffhanger, while also setting up some things for the first half, and then maybe even the entire season. And I also think Jensen directed again? It's this episode, I think. But if he did, I think he got the worst episodes of Demon Dean to direct because he's just sitting down, talking shit to Sam about he's a mistake, his existence is a failure, wish we've got more of him singing. Meanwhile, you have Crowley helping Cass because Crowley feels bad. He was best buddies with Dean and he just threw him away like trash. Cass is able to get back some angel grace, slowly just like getting weaker and weaker, hanging out with Hannah, getting no grace whatsoever. Number 215, When the Leave Breaks from Season 4, Episode 21. Sam is having himself a intervention, talking to his younger self about how wrong they were, their way of thinking about running away, couldn't stop from from being a hunter, talking to his own mother, being a disappointment, talking to a fake Dean, reconfirming more of him being a freak and a monster. You have Dean making a deal with Castiel, saying yes to heaven and their rules and plans. Ruby is being, he is evil, but by this point being like, clearly using Sam for her own thing, having the actual fight, which their argument beforehand, I like, it went on for a bit too long. Sam is much more stronger because of the demon blood and tells him just to get out. You know, just a typical sibling rivalry fight, which like everyone goes through, right? If you have a brother or sister, you guys come through stupid fights about washing dishes or which food you get, you know, stupid stuff like that. Number 214, Red Meat from Season 11, Episode 17. This episode is a retread essentially of what Billy said in Episode 2, but it's still a good episode because you're on the edge of your seat, mainly because of miscommunication, getting shot, and then Sam, you know, isn't gonna die, but then this one dude who lied about getting bit just killed Sam, and so he's able to get out alive with Dean and his other girl. She doesn't want to say anything. He's still in the hospital freaking out about being bit. You do think for a second Sam's dead because he can't breathe. Dean decides to be like, okay, kill myself. Billy comes back being like, there's no more second chances he's still alive somehow which is impossible but whatever this is 11 seasons in anything is possible still bleeding and able to drive the impala it's like oh, okay not really believable but anyways they eventually get rid of this guy the girl tells the truth i just really like this episode because you're on the edge of your seat no one's really telling the truth after sam gets shot there's no like real communication number 213 the raid from season 12 episode 14 this episode started off a bit annoying the boys whining to the mom being like why did you join them i get it this 
is your mother, but you guys are in your 30s, I think? Now, granted, you know, you haven't seen your mother in 30 years, but god damn, this doesn't look good. This seems like the boys are just whining. Turns out to be a really good one from HQ, and like this one like mole inside the British Men of Letters, and then the actual alpha vamp shows up. We last saw him in season 7, said that I'll see you next season, which was a lie, and they get to use the cult again, killing him in a really cool way, and so started off kind of rocky, but ended in a way that I was like, you know what? I was pretty damn good. And maybe the boys can work with the British Men of Letters, but we all know that's not gonna happen. Number 212, The Scar from Season 14, Episode 3. Other Kaya, cool Kaya, is back with her beer and everything. Turns out this is the only weapon that can kill Michael, which is why Dean has that scar. Kaya mentions that both Dean and Michael are the same. Angry, not angry, but really aggressive, violent people. Their way of explaining, yeah, this is why this works. I think it doesn't, unless you can 100% say that the other world is the same as our world, of the whole same destinies. Aside from that, it is a really cool weapon, her using it, killing all those hybrid vampire, angel vampire monsters thing. Jack is there, I think thing is jack there there's so much jack stuff in season 14 that i don't remember he's useless until he gets the whole soul thing and gray stuff but he's there boxing with bobby i think or is that the first episode no i think he's like saving this one girl or something he's doing nothing Number 211, The Spear from Season 14, Episode 9. So I will give credit to Michael's plan and I guess the writers, him leaving Dean very early on. While it is kind of like, oh my god, really? I do like the long con of him showing up every now and then and then finally being like, I left you but didn't really leave you. Play the long con, got you under control and there's nothing you can do about it. Garf is their inside man but that doesn't work because all that angelic juice can cause Michael to see everyone and everything and hear everything so he destroys that one egg and the spear. So I do like that and then the snap which is very like okay is this like avengers affinity war this is right after that movie so it's like okay that's a clear not Number 210, Hello Cruel World from Season 7, Episode 2. So I do like the first initial plans, or not plans, but part of the Leviathans of them spreading in the water of the city, possessing people through drinks or just splashes of black goo or ink. Once they drop that car on Edgar, you think, oh, they're dead, but nope, blood is sucking back up and they are hard to kill. So I will give it credit, they are hard to kill, which makes them a threat, but it's also like, they're not really around. It's not like one main villain until like the halfway point. Lucifer's back as well, which I don't mind. He's not like officially back, but just in Sam's head, which honestly carries the majority of season seven for me. Like a lot of it is again that middle chunk of like five episode filler. Uh, Lucifer, show up please. And then Cass is like gone the majority of the season. And again, I don't know why. Maybe Misha Collins just wanted time off, or he had like a family emergency or something. I have no idea. Him being gone isn't the issue. It's just like after he's gone, not one focused villain at all. That's not until Dick Roman. The way that it's paced and structured, season seven wasn't gonna be a good season. Number 209, Meet the New Boss from Season 7, Episode 1. Anytime Death is on screen, it's great. The actor that they got just looks like an old, jaded, real badass person. That looks, you know, doesn't look intimidating. The boys and Bobby trapping him, probably not a good plan. Lucifer did that, why would you do that again? And the evil cast. There's a one really great scene of the hands coming out of the stomach that's done really well. Saving people, wanting to be this new god, a better god than his own father, but can't handle the heats and all the souls. Number 208, Back Into the Future from Season 15, Episode 1. Good start to the final season. You have that demon possessing Jack, which gives that actor just a lot of range to be something else that's not Jack because Jack is so just a kid. Having this demon inside him just gives him a lot of depth and shows him, hey, this actor can do, you know, other things. That's not just like, I'm sad or I'm angry, I'm powerful, you know? Blood and Mary and all of the like other clowns and stuff. I'm not gonna lie though, them running during the day looks kind of funny. Doesn't look the best. Feels like they kind of rush this whole part thing would have been better if it was done at night and then demon jack or not jack sets up this portal or barrier using salt and a human heart creating this big ass beer in order to contain it for at least two more episodes Number 207, Family Feud from Season 12, Episode 13. Crowley's son, whose name is... I forgot. Either way, I'd forgotten that Abaddon got him out of the timeline, and so that would obviously create some timeline shenanigans stuff, some issues. Crowley doesn't want that, though, because he wants his son back. Can't really do that, though, because this ghost is, like, his lover going around for vengeance because he never made it back, and so in order to fix the timeline and fix his whole issue, you gotta put him back and kill him. And obviously, Rowena's there to just, you know, see everything. This is payback for what he did to Oscar probably never get tired of Rowena and Crowley bickering and just arguing like mother and son good actors and so it's like I don't mind seeing them just going at each other's throats 
Number 206, Don't You Forget About Me from Season 11, Episode 12. This episode, again, is about your past mistakes coming back to haunt you. Alex once led this boy into like an eating fest with his vampires. Comes back to be like, hey, you remember me? Well, I'm gonna kill you and your entire family. Claire, on the other hand, is like, I hate school. I'm not normal. Can't really be normal, especially what happened to her dad, Jimmy Novak, and her mother. It's like, you can't really have a normal life. Even Alex, like, she tries to be a normal kid. Boyfriend turns out to be that asshole. It's like, these two just can't have a normal life. The best part is Sam and Dean eating just food because they don't have like seasoned food. They always get like fast food or whatever but Jody cooking for them was like a, oh yeah these guys don't really eat well done meals and so by the end they're like hey take this this and this we want to back at our bunker. Number 205, Two and a Half Men from Season 6, Episode 2. Another episode where the boys lose. They don't really win at all because the Alpha Shapeshifter tanks everything. Tranquilizers, bullets, turns into Sam, turns into Dean, takes his own kid, wants more babies. There's been a large surface of monsters and alphas. Dean is finally out though. Lisa's like, hey, Sam's back. You gotta go. Get that Impala back out, which looks real nice and just do hunting again. And then even the whole like kid and just again, normal things, different they are. And Sam has been hunting with Samuel for a year so he just I just hunt things down. Dean's been a father, a husband, hanging around other kids and other fathers and telling a bunch of lies about honey possums and whatnot. Knows how to take care of a kid which by the way they keep calling it it the baby. Number 204 Devil May Care from season 9 episode 2. Abaddon is back once again which you know what she's not like the main villain of season 9 it's Benatron but she's kind of the sub villain in a way because Dean needs a killer by the end but I really like her. Elena Huffman plays a really good like badass taking no shit from anyone especially Crowley there's a side plot between like apocalypse survivors with this one girl which is not all that interesting really it's like it's there to just you know plot time Sam having is pretty cool it's a different look I don't know when they like design it differently I guess this season because all the angels have fallen and so their wings are gonna be like clipped kind of weird like but I don't mind a different design looks pretty cool and obviously like Dean trusts him which is like this is gonna backfire so bad and then Crowley's stuck not only this episode but the entirety of the first half Number 203, I'm No Angel from Season 9, Episode 3. We get to follow Homeless Cat and how hard, you know, life can be without angel wings and just needing to eat, getting tattoos to hide from angels, having sex, you know. Very human things that humans do that Cass has now experienced. And then this episode does create an issue of, like, plot armor. By this point in the show, Castiel, Sam, and Dean, they've died so many times that death doesn't mean anything. But I think a lot of people, myself included, just didn't care. The show was beyond its point. People know what they're getting as long as it's not crazy crap it's all good and then he can stay which doesn't make any sense because they're at the safest place possible they're at the bunker and everything sam or not sam is like get cast out i'm scared it's like that should be a red flag why is he so scared of cast and all the other angels maybe he's not ezekiel maybe he's someone else come on dean but nope cast has to get out and work a convenience store later on number 202 the kids are all right from season 3 episode 2 lisa and ben are introduced i think everyone was like okay this is a cool one-off you know like what if this was dean's son i like lisa and ben didn't think that they would actually become like important later on you also got evil kids which are always way more scarier every kid well maybe not every most kids are you know joyful pure and innocent so seeing them turn into like these little munching creatures and just like that one parent that's like killing her own daughter in that car going to that lake and then later on coming back all wet be like hello mother like what get the hell out hell no and then ruby's a demon played by kitty cassidy which i don't know why she didn't come back she is a different version of ruby because i don't see her becoming like a love interest for sam in season four this version is like more or getting to the point yes i'm a demon get over it you know i'm assuming she still had a plan with lucifer because no one trusted her most likely that katie cassidy just got busy with other projects which is why she never came back for the role probably number 201 the usual suspects from season 2 episode 7 you have linda blair in a supernatural episode i just think that's awesome that little ass girl from the exorcist even at the end dean's like hey does she look familiar to you but aside from linda blair she's with her boyfriend who is clearly the bad guy and his ex-girlfriend who is a deaf omen they all think it's like this vengeful spirit killing all these people dean gets arrested he like tells the truth to everyone there's a shapeshifter that looks like me i did not kill this lady we think is a vengeful spirit no one believes him because he sounds crazy deaf omen they want justice that bad boyfriend gets killed linda blair lets them go and just you know she was in the show okay just always thought it was really cool that they actually had her on here
Number 200, Various and Sundry Villains from Season 13, Episode 12. So by this point, Rowena has died like two or three times. And so the fact that she even is back is just ridiculous. I think Dean has the most kills because of Mistress. I think Rowena has like the most deaths. Like, goddamn, how many times are you going to keep coming back and dying? But anyways, she's back because I guess plot conveniences. But she's scared of Lucifer. And both her and Sam actually have this connection of like both seeing what he actually really looks like. It scares her. And so she really wants this spell from this book. Meanwhile, you have these two witches putting a spell on Sam and Dean and Rowena's there to help them. Now has a book. Sam's able to, you know, rip one page off, give it to her because he actually gets where she's coming from about Lucifer. And if this is a mistake in the future, he will take care of her. And then Rowena gets like a power up. She has these blue eyes now. And I'm assuming she's like the most powerful witch now because the other bridges can't touch her no more. She has like the book of the dam, this witch blue eye power up. Number 199, A Most Holy Man from Season 13, Episode 15. This is a very gangster or like mob story episode, which can turn off some people about this episode. Some people may not be into this whole like era, but I don't mind it. Got a really cool shootout scene and montage, which is kind of edited weird. Like I think it's decent, but there's a really weird edit in there somewhere. But either way, they need the blood of a most holy man in order to get this portal open up. Also, how do you find the most holy man? How do you specifically find like this one person has got the most holy blood, untouchable, you know? like how does one find that probably explained it but probably missed it number 198 peace of mind from season 14 episode 15 this is a cool throwback to like the 50s era of town and shops and ice pops or whatever it's called and just the whole era and town and atmosphere all of it's cool obviously it's fake because people that are out of line their heads just explode and so sam and Cass go there this is right after sam saw all of his comrades die and so this is his way of like coping Cass is unaffected because you know he's an angel and so this one dude is like i love the 50s i want this entire town to become the 50s and Cass has to fight this goofy looking Sam with glasses and hairs back. It's like, oh god, hell no. Trying to run away from the fact that he lost friends and comrades and can't face that fact. Meanwhile, you have Dean and Jack on a soul trip. Both of them go to Donatello because he has no soul. Talking to Jack about no soul. And so it's a quick, you know, talk about what it's like having no soul, just not caring for anything. It is different from Sam. Sam was very much cold. Donatello's in check mainly because he's a prophet. Jack is still by this point in between, but he like kills that snake by the end. Cast out sees it it's like i'm not telling anyone number 197 the hero's journey from season 15 episode 10 some people may not like this episode because it's very slapsticky a lot of goofy over the top stuff because the boys have no more plot armor dean has cavities the car doesn't work because even the impala is like gonna be able to drive that much mileage and not have car issues or 15 years and it's like yeah it's fine you know them losing their strength and whatnot now i do think it is ridiculous that they don't know how to pick lock because they've been doing it their whole lives maybe that's a bit too far but everything else i enjoyed seeing garf one last time was a lot of fun he has twins now he's like a dentist and everything he's the only side character that gets an actual end and proper end jody doesn't get one claire doesn't go like no one really gets one aside from garf why not jody and the others maybe the actors wasn't available number 196 survival of the fittest from season 7 episode 23 finally dick's over the leviathan's over crazy Cass is over dean's leather jacket that's over because apparently it got lost it's a really cool jacket but he never got it back sam is alone crawley wins kevin is taken meg is taken the reason why this episode's so good is because it's finally over thinking that bone and dick's neck it just felt good because it's like thank god it's over crowley's the best part about the episode and once again again this isn't as bad as the other finales but both Cass and dean are in purgatory something that was teased in last season this season ending off on a good note number 195 holy terror from season 9 episode 9 kevin finally dies his whole like i want to get out of this screw heaven and hell i want my mom back everything that all comes to an end because gadriel kills him by the orders of metatron for some reason he's like i'll trust metatron because he's the one that freed all of us from heaven and all of us that were in prison and all that stuff this never ever goes well at all whatsoever and then Cass even tells Dean like I got some grace back that isn't Ezekiel it was a inevitable end for Kevin's character because his wish was never really possible at all whatsoever and saying yes to Ezekiel was gonna be an issue later on number 194 golden time from season 15 episode 6 eileen is back which usually when they bring a character back it's like okay why but you know what this is kind of the end for sam as well she serves as the normal life for sam later on in the finale there's witches at rowena's like witch place and so because she's dead they have to go there these two witches want to fight and this fight is done poorly it's like the worst part about the episode the editing they're like apart from the hallway i think and somehow they're like getting each other meanwhile you have castilla who's on his own solving this case and he does really good like i do find it funny that anytime he's away from the boys he's much better off alone than being with the boys 
Number 193, Profit and Loss from Season 14, Episode 12. Anytime that Domatello comes by, it's always like a fun episode. Like, I don't mind him. He's like the last known prophet. And he's always bringing out some weird or fun, like, scene or whatever. This time, he's like in a hospital bed because of what happened in last season. Causing future prophets to come to life way earlier than they should be. And turning them into, like, killers. And who is responsible for this? Castillo because he fried his brain. And so now they have to save him. And then there's that hug scene at the end, which acting on this isn't the best. Maybe it's just me. I feel like there's been better scenes of them being like, don't give up. Number 192, Advanced Anthology from Season 13, Episode 5. So there's a new Def and her name is Billy. So apparently in this new rule, since they killed Def, the most recent Reaper to get killed, they become the new Def. Sure, why not? That makes sense, maybe. But this new version of Death is cool because shelves and books of people's death, when they die, how they die, all that stuff. People that could die today, tomorrow, in hours, in minutes, seconds. It's all set up pretty well. Dean's there because he really wants to die. Mom is gone. Doesn't like Jack. Thank Cat is dead and once again wants to give up because what's the whole point chuck is just going away with amara and the boys are here just doing his work he's getting tired of it you're needed because you're gonna renew next season and the next season after that and because of you know plot reasons you know he can't die and luckily cast is at the end of the episode where he eventually meets the boys once again Number 191, There Will Be Blood from Season 7, Episode 22. The Alpha Vampire, he's just so cool. He's like the best version or best Alpha they have. It sucks that he only shows up for like three episodes. He thinks the Leviathans are cool with him and everyone, but his kids are dying. Sam and Dean's like, no, the Leviathans want you dead. They need some blood. Edgar doesn't want that whatsoever. Plans on killing him and eating him. This is the last we see of Edgar. Once Sam cuts his head off, the Alpha Vamp either eats him or probably gets rid of him somehow. There is a one funny scene of, I think, Dean or Sam getting blood from this one dude who's obsessed with like drinking this ice drink and everyone either it's mustard or hot dog drinks and whatever all of it has like that pink black goo in it except for water and bananas and then Crowley is summoned by dick because we all love Crowley so why not Number 190, Rock in a Hard Place from Season 9, Episode 8. This is the second and last time that they would have dragons on the show. Wish we'd have got more of them because they're fun. Granted, you can't actually have like a full-on CGI dragon. They don't have that Game of Thrones budget. Them going after virgins. I just imagine them flying to them. It's just like this human. Sam Dean having to become virgins again. Dean getting to meet his favorite adult star who's like in this group. Wants to be a virgin. Meanwhile, you have Jodie on here, which this is the first time we've seen her since the Season 8 finale because we all thought she was dead. Probably almost killed her but luckily she's safe she's alive and she almost dies again in this episode she comes close to death once again and she has her own little arc of like being afraid of dying or just being close to dying not being able to do anything jody's just the best side character that's not like bobby bobby's a side character i mean maybe he's not but aside from like the main family stuff i think jody's like the best character she's kind of like their mother in some ways of like later on it's like i've had some good ass food and like adopting alex and claire because she misses her own family Number 189, Bad Place from Season 13, Episode 9. This episode does take a while to get going. A lot of it is Jack searching for Dreamwalkers, finds Kaya. But once we get past that, Sam D meet Jack, shows them like the other world. Then it starts getting interesting. It starts having like all these angels coming by. Once they're on this boat, Angel shows up. Jack does the whole Dreamwalking thing and gets inside that other world with Mary. But Kaya's still on this earth while Sam and Dean are at the Bad Place. And it sets up a really promising mid-season premiere coming back, which they don't go into because that's the spin-off episode but from what we get it's like this big dinosaur foot on the ground big ass like monster yelling and sam and dean are stuck number 188 mint condition from season 14 episode 4 this entire episode is an homage to slashers because you have that texas chainsaw poster and the killer itself looks cool it's got a mask and everything i think his name is hatchet man slice and dice and then like him especially walking down the hallway very slowly and then that person in the movie in real time yelling for help crying for help all of that was done really well if you don't really care about slashers at all then i can see this episode being very boring as someone who likes them that was really nice it's like friday the 13th especially 180 87 breakdown from season 13 episode 11 a really cool concept of monsters going on a black market for human parts but it's also really funny as well just seeing monsters being on a monitor being like i want this this and that a human heart human lung and whatever so there is kind of this like ridiculousness to it but it works in the end donna gets more development or just kind of a setback because the guy that she was with or likes tells him the truth and he wants out i think that part didn't really care for but the whole like sam getting kidnapped the black market selling human parts it's a lot of fun kind of messed up this does come after the wayward episode and so it is worth seeing her going to this from having dinner with jody and all the other girls and the next episode okay gotta go back to work
Number 186, The Scorpion and the Frog from Season 13, Episode 8. This is a pretty good heist episode. Dean has to go along with these other tech person and I think there's another person, I think. Either way, the whole trap in that whole room felt like an Indiana Jones moment. Beer is coming by and just fire and flames. That was done really well. This door needs blood from someone who's in hell. Dean is obviously the chosen one. Gets in there with this old needle thing and poking his hand. Sure, reason as to why the boys are here, it's far less interesting than the actual heist. The heist is way more fun. There's this demon that knows where Jack is or they know how to get a spell to find Jack. He wants to get rid of this one dude that can't be killed. Sam tries killing him but it's like nope but the heist is you know still fun. Number 185, The Weather Bear from Season 10, Episode 19. This episode always had me confused as to what happens because the first time I watched it, I was like, is this like a Wizard of Oz? Because green smoke, green mist makes people see all these things and it's like box that Sam needs for the Book of the Dam. So we watched it and I was like, I guess I get it. This whole house is stuck in this time of bubble. Dean goes with Sam and so he gets to see Benny in Purgatory. That was really cool. And then Sam is seeing Rowena, which I thought the very first time it was actually Rowena, but it's all in his head lying at Dean about Rowena and the Book of Dam because obviously gotta lie. The house itself does have a really tragic backstory of this girl just accidentally getting this box out getting her family killed and then her taking her own life but then she's hella old in the present now haunting Sam and luckily Sam pulls a fast one on you because he's able to chain up Rowena doesn't trust her obviously she's an evil witch staying here read the book on how to get rid of the mark Number 184, Halt and Catch Fire from Season 10, Episode 13. So this is just another ghost hunt, typical ghost hunting hunt, but with Wi-Fi, which I'm shocked because it took them this long to do like a Wi-Fi related case. This ghost is traveling through Wi-Fi, whether it's Bluetooth, computer, or your phone, just whatever Wi-Fi uses, this ghost comes in to kill because these kids are driving without taking any license, DUI, and left this husband to die. Wi-Fi, you know, it was kind of cool that this ghost is using Wi-Fi just to travel around and kill Number 183, Captives from Season 9, Episode 14. This is a catch up on Kevin and his mom, Linda. Mom's been captive since Crowley's gang and the storage unit. They eventually get her out. Kind of lied to her of Kevin's dead, but the way he died was kind of our fault. Boys didn't tell her that much, but Kevin will probably tell her at some point because now they're both on their own, have moved on because after this, nothing comes up from them really. And so Kevin does get what he wants, but just now in a ghost form and hopefully doesn't seek any sort of vengeance. Both of the boys still aren't talking to each other because i don't know trust drama and then castile has to deal with bartholomew who is just looks like an evil angel asshole he is part of this angel civil war thing which they do once again in the season angel versus angels but cast is able to outsmart him and be like your ways are just kind of dumb and kills him but this does lead to him having his own army of angels to fight against metatron Number 182, The Future from Season 12, Episode 19. So bringing on the cult was useless because it's now gone. It has been destroyed. Dagon just melts it with her hand and aside from some cool kills of killing a goat god and the alpha vamp, didn't really do much. It was just another accessory and tool for their boys to use because, you know, remember that? Dagon 2 is also gone now. Jack, or not Jack, but Jack and Psycheli's Billy is able to give Castiel some powers, touches her and just burns her away. By this point, this was way more interesting than the whole British Men of Light stuff because you know kelly wants this despite knowing that it's the devil's baby doesn't care whether the boys want it dead or castiel but after showing castiel the future he now believes in this kid which is you know kind of dangerous because castiel isn't known for best methods or just best person to lead something because killed a bunch of angels freed a bunch of leviathans but he's not trusting this child number 181 good intentions from season 13 episode 14 jack just annihilates the army from michael he like gets rid of the mid-air during on the ground saves new bobby and Mary took out most of the army. Meanwhile, you have in our world Donatello telling a bunch of lies because he has no soul, which I'm not gonna lie, kind of forgot about it. So he almost like kills Sam, gets Dean and Cass to fight these giants. Version of Cass of him being somewhat aggressive, being like, okay, I'm gonna do my job and let no one die. Really love this version of Cass, but we don't get a lot of him, which sucks. But we do see a version of him in another world, which is kind of ridiculous. So after frying his brain up, he finally gets the ingredients, get back to mom and Jack, which is the tree of life the thing from the thing an apple and archangel grace something like that number 180 the rupture from season 15 episode 13 we get two major deaths one is like okay this is good one is like thank god he's done catch he is finally killed off for good why bring him back like i don't think anyone liked that storyline from season 12 nor catch so i don't know why andrew dab and the others thought this is a good idea to bring him back no it's not and then the other death is rorina which was set up in season 13 sam is the one to like kill her just stab her because it was said by billy that was predestined or pre-planned and so really like that going to the grave 
brave getting all those souls inside of her and then jumping in to close the gate was a really nice way to you know kill off her character in order to prevent further hell from coming up and then jack's body is gone cast killed that demon inside of him this actor got to be very charismatic and just have fun it seems like but he's gone number 179 like a virgin from season 6 episode 12 a really fun dragon episode Dean trying to get the sword out of the brock the whole music cue coming back up and rewind all that was really funny using explosions to get rid of it come back kind of disappointed crack sword and more lies because why not lie more to sam about him coming back for one year with no soul comes back only knowing him jumping into the cage and castell dying and bobby dying bobby's freaked up sam almost tried to kill them last time and then dean's like ah shut up be quiet there's a wall keep it as a wall please it takes casters to be like hey so how was a year without no soul number 178 route 666 from season 1 episode 13 you have this ghost truck driving people off road or crashing them because of what happened way back in the day there's just one great scene of this mother i think cassie's mother i think about how these three guys just beat on this one dude these beatings would lead to death push this truck all the way in this lake and then years later it's like well i want my revenge and so that scene alone really good cassie's also one of dean's ex that knows about his secret sam's pissed off because he never told jess but dean just hooked up this one girl and is like hey you want to know a secret i hunt things feels like they're gonna be a thing but with the nature of their job they can't really have a normal life so in order to protect him and cassie they have to go their separate ways because it's not gonna work out and the episode has the impala driving against his truck eventually defeating it by driving towards it that was done really well maybe not the actual truck the cgi looks pretty bad Number 177, Nightmare from Season 1, Episode 14. This episode still holds up in terms of that reveal to Sam, Max telling his story about his mother, being pinned up to the ceiling, fire burning, him as a kid, very relatable, very much the same as Sam. Turns out there's other kids like him, but his powers in Season 1 and in Season 2 is just visions, which is pretty weak compared to like Max's Magneto, like moving things with his mind and everything. There's even fake outs of like Dean getting killed and then all those other kills, being poisoned by gas and then head being chopped off in that window. That one seems really really just messed up the fact that you're trying to close your window and then all of a sudden smack you're dead after this whole incident dean is a bit worried about sam even though he's like nah don't worry about it you've got me it does plant and seed of like maybe i should be extra careful around sammy now number 176 dead in the water from season one episode three this is the first vengeful spirit case of this little boy in the water in any water whether it's lakes the sinks or tub that sink kill is kind of ridiculous because it's clearly shot from you know a clear sink underneath but it's done kind of badly because the actors having to like be in a weird ass position it still works but it is more noticeable of like okay you're like not really doing the best also why the hell would you swim out in the lake like hey let's go skinny dipping hell no yo do you not scared of what could get inside your body body e coli or some shit like i don't know like what if a rat dies like a thousand rats die in that pool or lake i'm always scared of that so anytime a character's like jumping in a lake hell no mainly because of like bacteria and diseases and all that stuff and dean has a soft spot you know like he's the older brother gentle round kid because he took care of sammy with number 175 fallen idols from season 5 episode 5 paris hilton is in this episode i believe at the time this was around the whole like are you still friends with kim k and this episode is a lot about making fun of her and like even house of wax they mentioned that her and jared were in the same movie having all these well-known people gandhi abe lincoln having them be like ghosts and attacking the boys was pretty funny and it's also a way for both sam and dean to you know build up their trust again after what happened with ruby and the end dean's treating him like a pest just kind of bringing him along like luggage we can still hunt but i don't really trust you just yet 174 phantom traveler from season one episode four they're on a plane dean is scared of planes because engine failure plane going off you know throughout his whole entire episode he's like freaking the hell out trying to find this demon which the way they did their effects was this watery like effect obviously it would become this smoke black smoke thing but this first time it's like have this liquid fluid like smoke thing going inside people and then possessing them smashing this plane and also sulfur this is the first time if they spell or find sulfur it's most likely a demon case or a demon possession and then they sprinkle in a little bit of Jess this demon knows what happened to Jess a little bit of story with John at the end like a lot of season 1 episodes is setting up the world and how it works number 173 Wendigo from season 1 episode 2 this episode is well known mainly for the infamous line and scene of saving people hunting things the family business is well known because it works dad's journal being very important in the first season and all in the first season they do bring it up later on but the first season is where they look at it for the Wendigo stuff Adam and everything 
and the kid that they saved in this episode will come back later on in the season 8 penultimate episode along with Sarah and the baking girl from season 7 as well. Number 172, Caged Heat from season 6 episode 10. The one funny ongoing bit in this episode is a pizza man. Cass decides to watch some adult films because why not? However, you should not watch it in a room full of dudes while getting hard and he does. Kind of comes out of nowhere. He starts kissing Meg. So, well, I did that because the pizza man did it. It's like one of the best parts about this episode and best like comedy moments ever. And then Crowley's dead. Totally dead. Castillo doesn't work with him to create civil war or anything, you know. He's doing this because he found it and totally killed off Crowley, one of the best characters ever. And then from Sam's perspective, he doesn't want a soul back because it'll probably make him worse. This version of Sam is the best. He is ruthless, aggressive. He is cold. He doesn't care about anything. Here's that Castillo's worried about the cave and even Crowley when both of them agree, both angels and demons, he's like, no, I don't want my soul back better this way, which he is. Like, why would he want his soul back when it would just bring up more suffering and pain, essentially? Number 171, Remember the Titans from Season 8, Episode 16. So there's a lot of Greek god stuff or just godlike beings in Season 8. They have Thor's hammer, the second episode. And this episode has Zeus, Prometheus, and Artemis. Not like anything like ghosts. It's actual gods. So while it is different in that, it's still a fun episode because Prometheus is like dead, but then keeps coming back and back. Sam didn't have to figure out what the hell's going on. Artemis, he's a lover of Prometheus. The reason why he's even dying and coming back is a punishment from Zeus. Zeus has published between like powers which you know makes sense all of this sounds like plot from another show but it's on supernatural so it is a bit off-putting but i don't mind it just have some variety especially with like this amount of episodes i don't mind a bit of variety or change in it's different enough that it's not like weird or anything it's like you know what this works i like it number 170 form and void from season 11 episode 2 father crowley's the best with his fake collar and everything he's on a case just like dean wondering why there's this big wave of evil energy it's amara she has the mark on her skin killing off that one lady i was bored you know tired of seeing you fighting her seeing the mr that's like four years old walking off even though this baby was just born like a day ago or something it's grown into four years old sam on the other hand is dealing with visions prays to god and gets hell visions by a certain someone and meets billy who just tells him and chances the old death thought you dying coming back was a funny thing there's no more one big death but your reapers reaping because people die they need to reap them castillo's being tortured by angels because they have been you know even more dicks, you know? Because why not? Number 169, The Chitters from Season 11, Episode 19. The only issue with this episode is the placement. It was placed in between Episodes 18 and 20, two of the most important episodes from Season 11. It's weirdly placed. Aside from that, it's a really good episode. These hunters are good hunters. They have a hunter on the show that's not Sam and Dean or Jody or Donna. They're either dumb or just evil. These two hunters, they're not dumb. They're smart and they're not evil. They're just trying to hunt the Chitters down, which is like a group of monsters that's been in this town for a very long time. There's that one scene of this old man acting in his ass off that was really good and so we have all of that it just makes for a really good episode these hunters don't die as well which again is usually the case all the other hunters these two survive they make it sam didn't want to ask them for help for amara and everything but it's like nah they just dealt with their like vengeance with the chitters let them be Number 168, The Things We Left Behind from Season 10, Episode 9. The mark is finally caught up to Dean. After getting hit multiple times in the head by these really useless people, finally embraces the mark, killing all these people inside this house. Shown in the very beginning, just kind of this like, what if Dean kept continuing using the mark, which I don't know if that's just like a dream. I think it's a dream, right? The whole black and white like image and scene of them cutting back from that to the present. And then Castillo starts his little arc in this season with Claire showing up as Jimmy Novak, trying to take care of her. She doesn't want to. She's a very rebellious angry teen number 167 slash fiction from season 7 episode 6 a lot of things happen in this episode fake leviathan brothers just robbing a bank killing everyone in there making sam and dean the most wanted people ever you have frank that's introduced he's clearly insane but also very smart as well destroys the laptop goofy character that luckily isn't around for too long i feel like if he stuck around for a bit too long it would have been like oh god you're annoying but he only stayed on for like five six episodes we have so detergent doesn't kill leviathans but slows them down which sounds like a joke it really does it seems like sarah gamble and the writers at the time was like how do we defeat them how about soap soap detergent why not it sounds ridiculous whatever and then sam finds out about amy which doesn't last for very long he goes away next episode they're already back so that whole thing was just pointless number 166 book of the dam from season 10 episode 18 this is a start of the stein family kind of episode trilogy where they're in this episode to get this book back that charlie stole they want it for the mark on how to get rid of it however they need a witch which by the end sam 
Sam goes to Rowena for help and again lies to Dean about burning the book. But dying family members, they are a threat to a certain extent. They are Frankenstein family, so like cutting off their arm isn't gonna help. Maybe cutting off their head, but somehow their like father can sew them back together. It's a very weird kind of like sub villain, but it works. Number 165, Southern Comfort from season 8 episode 6. Garf is finally back in his cowboy effort of filling for Bobby's role because he too lost Bobby. Bobby was not just Sam and Dean's friend, you know, like Garf and other hunters were there for him as well. And he finally hugs Dean and Dean embraces it, which is a nice little, you know, Dean doesn't like it, but he's like, okay, whatever, all right. Also the Tooth Fairy, he hunted and killed a goddamn Tooth Fairy. I actually want to see that. We saw a Tooth Fairy in season 5 and that was terrifying. Oh, this bearded guy and ugly teeth and taking out your goddamn teeth. And then the boys have a fight because, you know, Benny's been more of a brother to Dean than both Cass and Sam. He's never let him down whatsoever. Number 164, Roadkill from Season 2, Episode 16. This episode doesn't hold up a rewatch because you already know what's gonna happen. First time it works because you're thinking, is this lady a ghost? Are Samity not real? Or, you know, what's going on? But then once you know that she's a ghost and can't move on, you're just kind of like, okay, get on to the point. I want to get to, you know, that moment of Sam telling her to move on. It's 2007, not 1992. Both the boys have to talk about where do ghosts go? Like, dad and this lady, do you think they have a good life after this? Go to a good place or just dark, somewhere just really dark dark and empty, maybe being able to move on helps them go to a better place. Number 163, The Born Again Identity from Season 7, Episode 17. So Castiel is finally back after 15 episodes, maybe because of scheduling, because Meg is also back. So it's as if they waited all this time episode to be like, okay, this is the one big story episode. 11 through 16, it's like mostly filler. But according to Cass, goes by another name. Turns out he did not explode in that lake. He just went off somewhere on the shore and then this lady and wife found him, which by the way, they leave this lady and she never comes back ever. So I don't know of Castillo was like okay I've come back goodbye like I don't know what happened there but screw her I guess Meg is like off somewhere during Crowley's like hell ruling because by herself wanting back in lay low for a bit until can get away from Crowley Sam's story is in this asylum don't really care about this but like we just need to come back to this because Sam is doing something while Lucifer is just throwing firecrackers and stuff putting food in his mouth but then guess what once we have Cass back he's stuck again you know so it sucks but at least now we know where he is Number 162, Do You Believe in Miracles? From Season 9, Episode 23. The fight between Metatron and Dean was very one-sided. I thought it would be, you know, with the Mark of Cain and Metatron's, like, tablet powers. I thought it'd be pretty even. But no, it was very one-sided. Dean just killing time for Castiel to use a book and technology, essentially, just to defeat Metatron. But a very one-sided fight ends with Dean having a bleed in his heart. Metatron as a villain, it works. I get it. He's meta and he has a meta-ness to him, but it just kind of got overburned a bit kind of too much for me. Dean dying didn't really hit because this is like his 100 times death essentially so him saying his goodbyes doesn't really work and then the ending the very last shot Crowley telling a story about Kane killing himself but they're not really quite dying just yet and then it cuts the you know Dean with the blade in his hand eyes open and it's black. Awesome way to end off the season. This was teased throughout the entire episode of Crowley asking every day about this cheeseburger about eating and whatnot. Again very late and last minute it's still an effective and shocking end. Number 161 one our father who aren't in heaven from season 15 episode 8 michael is finally back slash adam after 10 years of being stuck in a cage and even back in season 11 we didn't see him probably because of scheduling actually getting to see both michael and adam talking to each other and just having a talk was really awesome even all the way in the bunker scenes him talking to himself about dean and sam and Cass, Cass and dean talking to him all of that was done really well i will say though adam snapping his fingers and then opening that portal to purgatory one it kind of negates and kind of makes carly's journey and six going to purgatory seem kind of small now and kind of nothing really and then two he has the cuffs on not be able to snap his fingers and have like things happen but a portal opens that doesn't make any sense at all whatsoever and then sam and eileen are off doing something that's not important because the whole like facetiming this other person is clearly chuck doing his dirty deed Number 160, Unity from Season 15, Episode 17. This is one of the better episodes from the last season where Amara has the talk with Chuck and Chuck is just like, nope, don't care about humanity, don't care about this earth. Sam and Dean, I always gave them, you know, the freedom to do whatever, but for some reason this season, I care a lot. Chuck is able to convince Amara to give her power to him. Now he's, you know, been united, has a dark and white eyes. Also really like the way that the story is being told in this episode of the title card of a character and then showing us the events all happening at the same time and then leading up to that hallway 
scene in the bunker. Jack dies once again, essentially. Like, he's died three times, two seasons, I think. Him dying means nothing. He goes into the empty, explodes, and then comes back. And then Chuck was the one doing everything, knew that Sam would get the key to unlock Death's door, find all the books, finds that Billy wants to do her own world as well, just erase everything, a complete redo. Wouldn't really be a bad idea. Knows that Jack is gonna die again, and empty with cast and everything, so he knew everything. Number 159, Death's Door from Season 7, Episode 10. This is Bobby's death. We get to see everything in his life. Well, hold on, death, quote unquote, because he comes back like eight episodes later, which makes the emotional impact on this episode mean less. It's still a good episode. We get to see his dad, how abusive he was to him and his mother. Had to kill him with a shotgun, essentially. He also was a raging drunk. Didn't want to have any kids because of that. And then his wife, he knew that she wanted kids, but then couldn't really do it because of his father. And then Rufus, who was always great to have around. He's his like guide in his home memory. So getting to see a young Dean playing some baseball with Bobby. Bobby was more of a father to the boys than John and then the digits what they all mean according to this big land and then the reaper asks leave or go which ends off on a cliffhanger. Everyone knows he's coming back. Pretty good way to you know write off a character that's not really writing off the character at all. Still a good way to show us what Bobby has been through why he decided to you know watch the boys and did all he did. Number 158, Hibby 911, Season 10, Episode 8. Both Donna and Jody finally meet each other. Donna doesn't know about the whole hunting stuff yet. Jody has to be there and essentially babysit. Aside from that, we get more Dean looking at his arm about the mark and now he's getting more and more kind of taken by it. And then I forgot what happens to the monster. The chief is a monster himself, but then he left his kids or family and now they want his attention. And I think they kill him. I think they kill all of them. Maybe one survivor regretted their, you know what, that doesn't matter. Donna and Jody are now meeting together. They're a team now and it's all good number 157 i think i'm gonna like it here from season 9 episode 1 this opener reminds me of the season 2 opener most of it takes place in a hospital sam is in a hospital in a coma in his own head dean's all worried up and he just has a call for cast but he ain't calling back so he does something you know pretty stupid calling all angels to come help and guess who comes help one little soldier named ezekiel but not ezekiel help the brothers help sam through possession meanwhile you have cast on his own journey meeting another angel who just wants him dead because he's kind of the cause of this his grace was stolen by metatron and angels don't like listening they're very righteous they don't believe cast get rid of them fall fallen the wings are off and now they just have to drive or act like humans even though they have their powers they can't fly no more and then sam i actually really like his story in this just accepting death he was already willing to do that last season getting through bobby dean and then finally talking to death just willing to accept it because be a lot better than staying around and just kind of causing more trouble and chaos but dean is able to convince him number 156 jump the shark from season 4 episode 19 in a way this episode does jump the shark of introducing adam their other brother that john had a family with which adam got to have a normal life go to baseball games and whatnot it is possible but also like why would he because he like left sam and dean for like days weeks in motels you know while he was quote unquote hunting but either way never really got to experience holding a gun or knives or whatever obviously dean's a bit jealous of that both suit find out that it's not the brother it's like this ghoul that like beating on blood and everything they eventually get rid of them but after burning his body both of the boys are at the opposite where dean is usually like you should have learned how to hunt and whatnot it's sam sam's the one that's full in on this whole hunting thing dean is on the opposite where adam got to live the normal safe life that they didn't and it's kind of glad that he didn't have to live through that it's not an easy or like glamorous life you know it's not that at all you have to kill clean there's blood everywhere hide your id and whatever like not have to tell anyone except if your family accepts it probably Number 155, The Real Ghostbusters from Season 5, Episode 9. This is a love letter to the fans. They're at this Supernatural convention talking to Chuck about, you know, where the last book left off. Meanwhile, the events of Seasons 4 and right now 5 are still happening. This also means that Becky's back, which again, I don't mind. She's crazy, you know, crazy for Sam. Loves touching him. Chuck has a thing for her, but she's not looking. Until he sees like a manager at this hotel from a ghost boy. And then she has this real creepy grin on her face. And then out of the blue out of nowhere Becky decides to mention the cult again saying that Bella sold it to this demon named Crowley kind of like drops at the end being like oh yeah we need to have stories so the cult's back demon named Crowley has it here it's like damn okay that was quick everything else from the two guys that are like we love supernatural because it's a way for escaping the real world and the whole ghost hunt all of that was a big love letter to fans 
Number 154, Sam Interrupted from Season 5, Episode 11. This is a really cool episode for both of the boys to have a introspection about just everything, the apocalypse. This is after Ellen and Joe died. Dean feels this very stressful need to have the whole weight of the world on him. You have Michael trying to say yes to him and angels being assholes and seems like no one's on their side. Dean is just kind of stressed out. Everything's on his shoulders and Sam's shoulders. Talking to this fake therapist who's not even there. And Sam as well going kind of crazy. Both of them have really funny moments. Dean dropping his pants saying pudding and sam like i guess being drunk or not drunk but drug him blaming everyone but himself about ruby demon blood both ellen and joe and it's also a great way for this monster to hunt because everyone in this asylum is crazy no one will ever believe them for saying that there's a monster crawling up in the ceiling or trying to suck our brain Number 153, The Purge from Season 9, Episode 13. I really like this episode because of the fat sucking monsters. These guys have this long sucking tongue. I don't know what it is, but I really like it. Even though it is kind of gross and not great to look at, but it's also good to look at because you see the fat and blood getting sucked out from the human body. Yeah, you know, that sounds pretty, you know, disgusting. Anyways, there's still the whole like, I don't like you, brother versus brother, nine seasons in, please stop this. And then Donna is also introduced. She wants to be here because her husband keeps calling on her fat and everything wants to lose weight and you know doing it this way is not the right way i mean she is losing a lot really quick which should you know be a red flag to anyone being at this spa treatment thing how are you losing weight by only eating right and doing like stretches you know so it's a really disgusting monster that loves sucking fat it should be disgusting and it is but i didn't mind it Number 152, Defending Your Life from Season 7, Episode 4. This has a really cool concept of a Egyptian god who likes having these courtrooms but in a barn which doesn't feel right. But anyways, he needs to find somewhere that's not like populated and so Dean is obviously guilty of some things that he did last episode of killing Amy, you know. Maybe some other stuff dragging Sam back into the honey life and Joe. She like shows up as Dean's like ghost killer. But it is all about Dean's guilt and kind of past mistakes. Cool way to have a monster of the week while also continuing this lame storyline of killing amy because while this god is you know evil right doing it for justice the real villain is dean killing amy like why why did you do it but of course it's a god that you know feeds on justice and greed and just guiltiness so he's gotta die Number 151, Inside Man from Season 10, Episode 17. Bobby gets a comeback one last time. Well, I guess not one last time, but after this episode, it seems like heaven keeps him in prison in heaven because he's the one that allowed all those souls to get out, create havoc up in heaven. Meanwhile, you have Sam and Cass trying to get Metatron out because apparently he knows the secrets into getting the mark off of Dean. That is a complete lie, just all bullshit. Takes away his grace, shoots him in the leg, which is pretty satisfying, but him and Cass go on a road trip. Dean, on the other hand, is confronted by Rowena, who tries to kill him but can't because the mark is protecting him decides to hurt herself abuse herself so that she could convince crowley boy over here messed me up do something and then it leads into this funny moment you think they're gonna fight but nope they're just sitting on a bar drinking being old buddies like they did back in the beginning of the season explaining hey the mark can't kill you but it can't be removed dean tells crowley hey your mother's kind of a witch and then he has to let her go she's out here scheming and shit telling crowley what to do and as a tradition the boys don't tell each other what they did because they have to lie Number 150, Thin Lizzie from Season 11, Episode 5. This episode uses a real-life true crime event of Lizzie Borden maybe killing her own family. And so they use it as a way to bring back Amara into the mix. You think things are gonna happen the same way. There's an axe, there's blood, there's murder. Horus, fake homage thing to Lizzie Borden. And then we meet this guy with no soul. He met Amara and got his soul sucked. I think, who's that kid from Stranger Things? I think he's in his episode. The one that likes 11, Thin Wolfheart. This is before Stranger Things. Season 11 is very familiar to the first five seasons where... There's bound to be fillers, but most of the episodes are story episodes continuing whatever is going on. Number 149, Twigs and Twin and Tasha Baines from Season 12, Episode 20. This episode has the two twin witches that are also hunters. Really cool characters, but only show up for two episodes. The sister's kind of like dumb in this episode. She doesn't know that her mom's dead, but the way that she reacts and the way that she's written in this episode isn't really the best. The brother's the more, I guess, powerful one because he finds his dead mother, confronts his wood creature, which is really cool the way that it's bent and how it works. It's not used a ton, which kind of sucks, but from what we've seen of it, it's really cool this thing is just tired wants someone else to take over it so he's not only a witch a hunter but now this wood creature controlling wood thing gets his sister back but the mother's long gone the last time that we see of them wish they would have showed up in season 13 or even the last season because they were cool just because they were just witches but also hunters so they would have an advantage in terms of searching for whatever they're searching for doing a bit of witchcraft before the actual hunt 
number 148 brothers keeper from season 10 episode 23 this finale starts off kind of like a typical monster of the week episode where dean's on his hunt with his other hunter and he's just you know hunting until he gets the hunter killed and has run out of ideas on how to get rid of the mark so who does he call this would be the last time that we see of this version of death they decide to kill him off now i think jeremy carver wanted season 11 to be the last season but he probably realized that it wasn't going to be the last killing off death would be like the final blow to that so i guess i can get it from that perspective but you know there's like a huge exposition up on the darkness how it was battled through god and the four archangels give it a lucifer give it a king give it a dean is not gonna kill him because he can't because the darkness would be unleashed meanwhile you have the king of hell a witch and an angel trying to make this spell work while crowley gets oscar the one thing that rowena loves and crowley enjoyed it he enjoyed watching his own mother kill her lover he's just standing there grinning and shit but the spell works gets the mark out and guess what darkness appears and you know what it's well done you don't know what it is it looks like demons from hell popping out lightning shooting down and it's like what the hell's going on black smoke and darkness taking over the impala car number 147 girls 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 from season 10 episode 7 like the title says this one's about girls and girls and even more girls Verena's the first girl to get introduced she's a witch at the end of it we don't know who she is until the very end where it's Crowley's mother this is his kind of own little small story the other girl hannah her own little story is that her human vessel's husband that makes sense thinks that you know she's dead she ran away but hannah didn't realize that taking over this body would be an issue because you know these people have lives and angels just kind of take over them them, just like say yes and then they come in but still kind of possession and so hannah feels bad and so she kind of leaves off that's to go find her actual husband and will lead into Cass going to claire later on and then the other girls or girls is dean having a fun time turns out there's some demon shenanigans cole comes back dean gives a speech about not being able to be saved clearly you know implying him so it's a really fun episode for dean for Verena, for crowley even at the end cole's okay like his character serves as a kind of an annoyance but also get why because he thought dean killed his father Facers. 146 ghost facers from season 3 episode 13 some people may not like this episode because it is all found footage which i can get it seems a bit lazy just be like okay get the camera and shoot it pov style we don't really have the setup shot i don't really mind found footage nor do i mind the ghost facers so this was a lot of fun sam and dean coming in midway being like shut up and then dropping f-bombs getting bleeped out looks like campy fun you know just dumb friends doing dumb shit don't know what the hell they're doing almost getting killed what other teammates do i forgot his name jake not jake oh god i forgot Corey, kobe in the end he actually comes by to help save the ghost facers and the boys and the theme is pretty good fits right into the whole documentary pov style and then because sam and Dean can't be known throughout the whole world they have to get rid of all the footage data thing i don't know what's it called but they can't be on tv just yet number 145 heartache from season 8 episode 3 this is a really cool one where the same person is living throughout time whether it's playing boxing baseball ball and whatever somehow the same person is living life much longer than he should be turns out it was like this whole scheme of like this one lady this other dude that's like running really fast that opening scene of him running next to that other fit dude is what impressive but also like i'd be really suspicious especially since he like rips his heart out even though he seems real nice when 70 meets him it's like yeah no i don't think so the concept itself sounds like a twilight zone slash sci-fi like early 80s sci-fi movie somehow living on and past her prime just by doing something with your heart and then i believe we get more flashbacks to amelia <laughs> number 144 the magnificent seven from season three episode one this isn't a very memorable opener it's a pretty good opener but i think it's because of the hunter couple like again they're kind of dumb not the smartest they go in a bar full of like demons you have the seven deadly sins which you know what could have been its own thing but season three is all about dean and him slowly accepting the fact that he made the wrong choice of going to hell and is pretty much scared doesn't want to go dean just consistently telling sam throughout like the first nine ten episodes don't worry man i got it at first it's good but over time it's like come on man you know you're scared and then katie cassidy's version of ruby shows up like a badass with a cool ass knife saving sam's ass number 143 family matters from season 6 episode 7 turns out sam has no soul which i think is the best version of sam he is heartless and that makes him a better hunter dean brings up the fact that samuel is pretty much suspicious right from the get-go hiding these alphas from the boys and samuel doesn't know or trust dean because i don't know plot conveniences but it does come back all around because at the end he's working for crowley and crowley is always great any scene you know coming in you're working for me looking for purgatory alpha 
alphas. And then also, how come Sam didn't question him at all whatsoever? Like, throughout the entire year of hunting, Dean even brings it up being like, were you not suspicious? I guess he didn't care, cared about killing. Or you know what? Samuel was scared. Number 142, the third man from season 6, episode 3. Cass is finally back because he's been in a bit of a war, a civil war between him, a bunch of other angels, and Raphael. He wants to start the apocalypse again, which is not the best motivation because that was last season. And despite being a archangel, Raphael out of the archangels feels the least threatening mainly because of screen time and redoing the whole apocalypse plan. It's like, dude, go do your own thing. But no, he is a very good, obedient soldier and wants to do what whatever Michael or God said. There's also some super gnarly shit. Bugs coming out of heads, peeling your face off of blood, pimples on people's faces, a frog in a mouth. It's like, okay, I like this. Balthazar, this other angel that just has anything. Frieza's Raphael's vessel. He has the soul of a little boy. He has like a weapon and everything. Seems like a fun angel, but there's not much of him. And then there's a really good stunt between Castiel and an angel jumping out of a window onto this car. Number 141, Live Free or Twihaw from Season 6, Episode 5. So Dean's a vampire and Sam just kind of smirked and gave this, you know, like, okay, this is a good plan, which is super messed up. And this is kind of the first, well, hold on, maybe Episode 4, Waking Up Bobby, Dean called Bobby being like, Sam's a little different, but this is the first action of being like, something's wrong with Sam, letting Dean turn, knowing that probably there's a cure, that Sam had a cure and they needed to get into that nest and everything, knowing the fact that he could have hurt Lisa or Ben, even Samuel's like, you're kind of messed up. And then he lies all the way until the end lying at dean's face being like yeah man i got you now i don't know how dean's the whole magic stuff i don't i guess it was just convenience because how would dean know aside from a super convenient cure that makes you see time backwards and see like a different perspective or something like that like he saw the exact same shot that we all saw of sam smirking it's like okay dean knows that there's something very wrong with sam Number 140, You Can't Handle the Truth. From Season 6, Episode 6, a really fun way to have Sam speak about, I was an asshole for letting you get turned. However, he can't feel things. For some reason, being out of hell, he just can't get scared no more. Even though he can like facially express it, deep inside he's like, I'm not really scared or anything. Doesn't really feel anything. Which turned out to be what Bobby said earlier. Maybe it's just Sam. And it is just Sam, just without his soul. Dean uses this whole truth thing to Bobby being like, he needs like a manicure. Dean's his favorite. Almost has a story about his like girlfriend in high school which I wanted to hear about and then seeing Sam lie to Dean and then this other creature so easily as well you know it's like badass but it's also how are you doing this number 139 all dogs go to heaven from season 6 episode 8 this is a kind of a depressing episode because these dogs are like shape-shifting no hold on it's like a hybrid between a shapeshifter and a werewolf I think but I'm just gonna call it dog even though it's not a pack of dogs going to like neighbors and biting them turning them creating more of their packs really cool but then the very end this guy you know just wanted a family and everything had to kill the husband had to reveal to the whole wife and everything be like killed your husband but she doesn't accept him not only is her dog like checking you out and it's actually a human but this person killed your husband and so the very last shot is this dog walking on the streets being homeless essentially and then you get more of Sola Sam who is pretty funny just straight up tells Dean like I don't care about you nor do I care about anything really but is willing to work to you know get his soul back Number 138, My Heart Will Go On from Season 6, Episode 17. This is the Titanic episode. What if it was saved by an angel because Castell needs like 50,000 souls for his weapon? In this what if, Ellen and Joe are alive, which brings Bobby some happiness because he just lost Rufus in the last episode. So having Ellen back is really nice, but also having her taken away is also just another heartbreak. The boys don't drive the Impala. That other car that they have looks terrible. Disgusting. No, the Impala needs to come back. And then Faith as like the villain. First of all, how do you escape faith and then two how do you kill it for some reason Balthazar again Balthazar is used as the MacGuffin guy Dean's even like yeah that guy has everything for some reason it was a lot of fun just trying to watch the brothers not die which how do you not do that faith is just pausing time putting things in place in order to you know have like 50,000 souls later rest they even play the song because you have to Number 137, Scarecrow from Season 1, Episode 11. This is the boys' first split. They have a disagreement on what to do with Dad and following orders. Sam's a rebel. Dean's not. He's a good little soldier. They split. Turns out, not a good idea because in the end, they realize they need each other. Sam comes back in the nick of time to save Dean and this girl. Sam meets Meg for the first time. First version of Meg. And you know, she seems like a nice hitchhiker meeting at the bus stop. Super convenient. Turns out, she's a demon. Knows Sam and Dean. Talks 
and blood pool thing to I'm assuming the yellow eyed demon and then the scarecrow itself is actually pretty scary like the fact that it takes human skin and tattoos and couples every year the look of it's pretty like intimidating turns out as a part of this whole ritual of five people in this town they all know about this they need him because it's what keeps the town alive and this lady that worked for the diner is like okay I gotta get rid of this whole entire town because it sucks Number 136, Dead Man's Blood from Season 1, Episode 20. Vampires are finally introduced and they are like any other vampires. They wake up at night, the sun, wear dark clothing. Maybe not completely white skin, but you know, the main girl and like the leader, definitely. And since John has joined the boys, there is gonna be some family drama, family feud, argues with him. They've always had butting heads, no agreement whatsoever. And then I think, I may have missed it when I talked about Episode 21, Salvation, but it's either that episode or this episode where John is like, he doesn't want this like for the boys both of them go to college live a normal safe life just seeing that he actually cares about the kids but he's just being real selfish about finding yellow eye demon and then the cult first introduced super badass only got like five or six bullets uses one on this vampire guy the effects still look pretty cool number 135 it's a terrible life from season 4 episode 17 what if sam and dean weren't hunters what if sam works for this company answering phone calls about customer support or whatever it sounds like a miserable time it doesn't sound like a good time dean is much more higher on the spot he has his own office eats salad there's some really cool interactions between them first being like you're weird and you're weird realizing that hey we should work together because we're totally not brothers ghostfisher's cameo seeing that they hate the winchesters and despite not knowing each other they make a really good duo you know they're able to get rid of this ghost and everything however dean smith is like nope i gotta stay eventually he's like okay i'm not gonna stay and then that's when sakura shows up reveals that hey this is not only a what if but also in real time dean has had no steak whatsoever he needs meats but the whole point is that despite not knowing each other dean and sam are still hunters at heart it's not because john made them or he wanted to or whatever it's who he is this episode and next episode sets up the whole destiny thing number 134 union ralia from season 13 episode 19 so because of the whole book thing and page with rowena she's now so powerful that she can kill and know which people to kill to upset death and reapers and then eventually kill those reapers because she wants to talk to billy she wants crowley back which i think everyone wants him back if you're gonna bring catch back and even arena bring probably back but i think by this point mark shepherd was like he didn't want to come back but man i really wish he would have come back she misses her son and billy's like no you gotta move on and get past it and she does and she also mentions that sam is the one to kill her which would become true later on there is funny scenes with dina and this reaper lady that like watches over them she has been since like forever ago i think and they eventually recruit arena once again to help them get back their mom and jack number 133 lebanon from season 14 episode 13 this is the 300th episode the fact that they haven't got to 300 is amazing despite the ups and downs after five it is kind of amazing that they were able to do this show for that long not to celebrate the 300th episode they brought john back which i'm assuming at this time too Dean morgan was negan on walking dead he's very popular on that show so i feel like the whole budget most of it went to him which is why most of it takes place in a bunker because they can't shut down the streets in vancouver all that's going to him the main issue though is that john has the same scene like over and over again Again. he has one with sam mary and then the entire family so it is the same scene again the one with sam him catching up him saying sorry because the last time that he spoke they just argued and sam never got to say his final goodbyes him meeting mary for the first time that was really sweet finally saying their goodbyes because of this pearl and then timeline shenanigans stuff goes back to normal we get one more scene of him using a flip phone living in the impala getting a call from dean just seeing that he had a really cool dream and then also zachariah shows up again really like him he's the best angel to hate love him and then cast the badass general for 132 reichenbach from season 10 episode 2 i love how crowley's just loving hanging around dean and everything because of his human thing in season 9 but that would backfire because he's too bossy and dean just like punks him pushes him he's supposed to be the king of hell and he does nothing he just sits there being like shook a bunch of demons see that and they're just kind of like laughing about it as well and dean doesn't want to choose a side he just wants to have some fun you know singing some really bad songs and karaoke you know but sam is gonna ruin that party and cole which Cole has a fight with Demon Dean and he just kicks his ass, doesn't know that it's Demon Dean. And then I think Cass and Hannah are doing something. They have the most uninteresting part about this episode, hunting down like another angel. Feels like, why are we doing this? But Dean is caught. No more Demon Dean. I mean, there is, but only for a little bit. 
Number 131, the one you've been waiting for from season 12, episode 5. They actually got Hitler on the show. Not like, you know, mustache and hair, Nazi stuff. They have Hitler in this like clock thing. And then years later, grand, 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 granddaughter or whatever, right? Of him is still alive. They need her blood in order to transfuse it into this whole other guy. It goes inside him and he wakes up as Hitler and it's great. The only thing that sucks is that it doesn't last for that long. Maybe like five minutes max, but it's still worth it. All the buildup of like this other guy telling the whole plan how he saved hitler sam dean hearing about it girl that's like no i'm not i'm not the descendant of hitler y'all are crazy and then him finally coming in being like laughing all crazy talking about twitter dean wanting that grenade launcher in itself is a build up to the finale and not finale but episode 22 of that season and then dean kills hitler he says that a lot in this episode and the next episode of jody as well number 130 lily sunder has some regrets from season 12 episode 10 this episode is all about just more angels being assholes back in 1901 02 or through 6 something like that castia was in another body they were gonna go kill this nephilim which is not a nephilim at all turns out this angel loved this human and just wants his revenge because this other angel fell in love with this lady and so this asshole angel with the white beard and everything kills the husband and this kid right in front of her 100 years later she's still alive looking really young and she just wants her revenge wants to kill angels she does look ridiculous with that eye patch though like he took that eye patch out she has it on because i think her eye is getting gray she's using her own soul but then like castiel cock blocks her because he kills him the same way that he killed billy so it's like castiel cock block two times in a row essentially because she wanted this but i guess it prevented her from getting her revenge because she's so sad on it but i already killed the others so why not just allow her to kill this guy that's my only issue it's like castiel just cock blocking everything and lily is a one-off kid well she was a one-off character until season 14 but this actor of lily she's a one-off character and she's very memorable because of the eye patch probably but she has a really messed up tragic past because of angels who are supposed to protect human beings and be helpful and be you know pure and i don't know nice number 129 slumber party from season 9 episode 4 this whole episode is kind of an homage to wizard of oz stuff i think it even has like a special opening and we get more kind of flashbacks to the bunker where two men of letters meet this witch because this lady that looks like indiana jones i forgot her name probably know that but either way brings home this witch doesn't know how to kill it cuts her tongue off and then she gets trapped because she wants to trap this witch with her decades later like 50 yeah i think like around 50 years charlie's back to help the boys with that sad like angel tracking thing again i don't know why cats had to leave but he did charlie dies luckily the boys have an angel watching over them ezekiel or not ezekiel heals her which is the only sort of news for him because aside from killing all those demons and then showing his wings he's been popping up killing himself or others i also think this is where they show the big ass bunker garage with all the cars and everything then after killing off that witch charlie decides to go to oz and there is one funny scene with crowley and this witch she can't speak decides to give her this crayon and paper number 128 there's no place like home from season 10 episode 11 charlotte comes back from her trip in oz she comes in two different ways one is a nice charlie and the other is evil who is much more interesting and fun to watch apparently going to oz splits her good and bad sides this evil charlie allows dean to embrace his mark just a little more hurting charlie affects both versions it leads into the sweet moment between them and is a way to continue the story with the mark on dean number 127 larp or live action role playing and the real girl from season 8 episode 11 another charlie episode she is role playing as a queen and of course both the boys have to come back into her life because something supernatural is happening around a game this guy takes it way too seriously and decides to kill players in real life if they want out but everyone knows this episode because one moment at the end dean giving his speech and gathering his army to run into battle and the bloopers was pretty funny with jensen just falling over and then repeating like three times i think in the bloopers number 126 love hurts from season 11 episode 13 this episode is essentially the movie it follows there's this disease or curse that's passed on by a sexual activity it's passed through sex and it follows while on supernatural it's by a kiss someone in the writers room must have been a real big fan of the movie myself included it serves as a great premise for dean confronting his love for amara i don't think the show ever really explained why that's the case it just is for some reason
Number 125, The Big Empty from Season 13, Episode 4. Nothing else matters in this episode aside from The Empty. I think the boys and Jack are talking to a therapist about death and how to overcome it or something. Either way, Cass says in The Empty, a place where angels and demons go when they die. But most of The Empty are asleep. They don't like being awake. Misha Collins is allowed to act evil again, which involves a different voice and facial expressions. The Empty is just all black because there's nothing at the beginning of time and the cast is allowed out because no one watching him really thought he was dead. He was a series regular, so he was gonna come back either way. Number 124, Lost and Found from Season 13, Episode 1. The Season 13 opener is one of the better openers. You have the boys at one of their lowest points. They lost Cass, Mary, and Crowley. At the same time, you have Jack, who was born as a young adult and going around looking for food, and Cass, who he sees as his father. Dean is tired of always having to fight. Calls for Chuck, but no show. Stem still remains optimistic because one of them has to. And an angel blade has no effect on Jack. So he is not only invincible, but also a kid that may may or may not destroy the world depending on how Sam and Dean nurtures him or maybe it's by nature that Jack is just evil. Number 123, The Great Escapist from Season 8, Episode 21. Charlie cements himself as one of the best villains in this episode. Amara and Lucifer are probably the only ones that are better, but Crowley decides to direct Kevin's life with two actors for Sam and Dean. He figures out where Cass hit the angel tablet and digs into his stomach, and that almost kills Kevin who martyred him. Metatron is introduced. He was an angel that left like Gabriel, just read books, nor to Lucifer and Michael in the apocalypse. He comes around by saving Kevin and reveals the last trial being curing a demon and metatron doesn't seem like you know a dick essentially he doesn't seem like a angry angel that despises humanity he loved the books that are written by them but that all changed real quickly number 122 all in the family from season 11 episode 21 seeing chuck talking hanging out with the boys was pretty cool in that scene of dean asking why he didn't step in for the wars and prayers chuck is against being super hands-on which is the complete opposite from the final season this version of Chuck is just super chill, like Spagan and cooking. Amara is still torturing Lucifer. The boys need him, so in an effort to somewhat redeem himself, Metatron sacrifices himself to buy some time. And Chuck answering prayers and listening comes back around when he teleports the Impala back to the bunker. Number 121, Wayward Sisters from Season 13, Episode 10. Wayward Sisters was a better pitch for a spinoff, but like I said on Bloodline, still Supernatural 2.0. It's not different enough from the original show. You have an ensemble cast of the side characters from the show. Claire, who I'm assuming is the main character, Jody, Donna, Alex, and then two new characters, Kaya and what's Missouri's granddaughter's name? Patience? Yeah, I think it's Patience. I looked that up. That's a good cast, but the other car showing up didn't get me excited all that much. It wasn't a really good draw or plot for an upcoming show because Kaya just died in the episode so having her come back or a version of it was like oh so all of that was kind of for nothing number 120 the girl with the dungeons and dragons tattoo from season 7 episode 20 charlie was easily a likable character you had her dance to i'm walking on the sunshine she was the inside mode to get the package from dick and this is the only time bobby hurt and came face to face with dick there's been rage and vengeance building up for him since coming back the back and forth on the timeline when charlie was hacking and then dick coming was also done really well Number 119, Reading is Fundamental from Season 7, Episode 21. While I like Kevin's introduction, it feels like a last bit idea in order to get rid of the Leviathans and then lead into Season 8 just a couple of episodes before Season 7 ends. Kesta was maybe at his best, being very happy and joyful, doesn't like conflict, and loves getting his finger pulled. Or you can look at it as how much he's fallen, a soldier, rebel, god, and now a happy but broken angel. And the tablets do look pretty cool. Number 118, What's Up Tiger Mommy from Season 8 Episode 2. Kevin's mom Linda is an awesome mom. She's willing to do anything to protect Kevin. Even when the angel Alfie offers her help, she's like, nah, I'll do it my way, which will lead into possession. Sam's reverse exorcism is only used in this episode. Why wasn't this used throughout this season or the rest of the entire show? Because this seems really useful. I guess budget reasons. Sam also is worthy of touching Thor's hammer. Him, Captain America, and Thor are worthy of hitting people with it. And then the whole auction section was fun Crowley was willing to do anything for the demon tablet selling the moon entire nations and even his soul 
Number 117, A Little Slice of Kevin from Season 8, Episode 7. You cannot trust anyone else aside from the boys. Now, I don't blame Kevin's mom for trusting a witch for spell protections because she doesn't know much about hunting and who not to trust. Cass is finally back from purgatory because of Naomi. I do like his reason to stay in purgatory. He feels he needs to be punished for letting the Leviathans out and causing further issues to the world. This would also end the flashbacks to purgatory, which I thought all of them were good compared to the Amelia flashbacks, which were boring number 116 everybody hates hitler from season 8 episode 13 this is the first nazi episode and it's a lot of fun a big ass golem was created out of clay to take out nazis during the war it's back after all these years to take out this one dude who's still alive he's not the most memorable character the only thing i remember about him is getting shot by the boys the golem itself seems indestructible no matter what blade or bullet that gets thrown at him and boy the brothers have the bunker now i thought it was so cool that they would have a place to go to and not hotels anymore but then realized this set was built to save time and money on production number 115 about a boy from season 10 episode 12 dean's a boy for an episode and because he's a teenager again he likes taylor swift's shake it off song this lady from the hotel thinks dean is sam's kid and the mark is gone the second half of the season is trying to find a way to get the mark off of dean this way would be permanent gives a second chance to not only dean but this girl that he meets gives them a chance not to make the same mistakes this girl takes the chance while dean for obvious reasons goes back to normal Number 114, The Executioner Song from Season 10, Episode 14. Wish the show had more Kane. Really liked him. He's an old and jaded demon that wants out, but once he gives the mark to Dean, started killing again, he can't stop. He likes to kill. The mark just gave him the ability to kill. Kane's story and the mark is kind of a recycle of the Destiny stuff in Season 5. Dean will kill Crowley, Cass, and then Sam. Like with Abel, they all lie to Crowley, which adds to what Rowena has been saying to him since being in Hell. Dean is forced to kill Kane because he'll never stop and is a mere image of Dean in the possible future number 113 safe house from season 11 episode 16 this is i think the closest to the show having a dimension or going to a plane beyond space and time that isn't affected by the darkness a soul eater preys on a family and then puts them in a coma there's a parallel story between bobby and rufus and sam and dean the boys follow the same path as them going to the same hotel and meeting the nosy neighbor timeline wise rufus and bobby's hunt takes place during the apocalypse also rufus misses a shot from point blank i think the soul eater possesses bobby and and Rufus has a shotgun pointed right at him and just misses. Don't know how that happened. Number 112, Celebrating the Life of Asa Fox from Season 12, Episode 6. This is a good whodunit. The boys, Jody and Mary, go to a hunter's funeral. Mary saved this boy's life back in the day and Jody had a thing with him. While they're all there, hunters get killed one by one. This is where we also meet the brother and sister witch hunters. A demon is possessing, then killing, and then switching back and forth. The reveal of what happened to Asa Fox was underwhelming. It was just an accident by another hunter who loves telling stories. Stories like Sam and Dean being well known number 111 lotus from season 12 episode 8 lucifer as president is a really cool concept and should have been the plan from the start or maybe the story for the second half but nope it's only one episode not only is he powerful but now has the power to sway the public and his guards to hunt down the boys catch finally meets the boys and cast comes in and gives them an egg to put lucifer back in the cage and the whole plan involving crowley Rowena all work for a good mid-season finale and then the boys hasn't dealt with the fbi since season two or three so it was exciting to see them back to deal with somewhat normal stuff as the cliffhanger number 110 atomic monsters from season 15 episode 4 this was jensen's last episode that he directed and it's his second best the opening scene of sam's dream dean fighting off demons and many benny sam as lucifer and jensen's song sounds of someday plays as they have to kill this boy who wants to die due to being a vampire chuck is busy meeting with becky who is much better she doesn't have her dangerous obsession with sam has a family and seems happy unlike chuck who needs help to write a better story he can't handle any critiques so he makes his ending for the show much darker and snaps Becky and her family away like Thanos. Building up Chuck was needed as he was a big retcon last season. Number 109, Proverbs 17.3 from season 15 episode 5. Lilith and Chuck pulls a fast one on the boys. The episode starts off like filler, just another hunt involving werewolves. But these two brothers are a parallel to Sam and Dean. Sam is still seeing visions of him and Dean fighting each other. These other versions of them in other universes. And then this girl who dies just gets up. I remember seeing that for the first time and being shook because you're not expecting it. Lilith is brought back to get rid of the equalizer gun, which was a dumb MacGuffin. Lilith is wasted as well because she She's in this episode and then gets killed by Michael in episode 8. 
number 108 pilot from season one episode one the very first episode that introduced the boys sam is in college and is tired of hunting so he ran away dean is still with dad but he's been missing so he goes to sam for help both really work well with each other both have different perspectives on hunting and how they were raised and then when sam thinks he's out he's pulled back in with jess burning up pinned to the ceiling pilot captures why the show went off for so long being the boys no matter what plot the brothers are what keeps you watching number 107 bloody mary from season 1 episode 5 bloody mary was a game i always heard my friends and cousins playing and i never got involved because i was too scared bloody mary chooses victims who have been involved or responsible for another person's death that had visions of jess burning up and said nothing mirror and reflection scenes when the girl sees mary everywhere are still creepy and then her crawling out like the grudge or the ring always creeped me out as someone who grew up watching the remakes of the movies number 106 simon said from season 2 episode 5 and he's my favorite psychic that's not sam he's able to tell people what to do tells dean to get out of the impala and just drives around the evil brother thing always felt underwhelming because he's so boring compared to andy dean is freaked out by all of this seeing psychics world builds others that are out there and azazel's plan for them Number 105, Hunted from Season 2, Episode 10. Gordon comes back for what I thought was revenge, but he's found out about Sam's psychic stuff. Gordon has a black and white outlook. In the end, he's put away until next season. Sam goes out alone as he finds out what John told Dean about him, killing him. He meets Ava, who's another psychic that can also see visions, later finds her missing because of demons, and then when we eventually meet her again, her turn is a bit shocking, more world building and learning of the plans. Number 104, All Hell Breaks Loose, Part 1, from Season 2, Episode 21. The first part of the finale has Ava, Andy, and two other psychics meet in an abandoned town, which I feel like is a set that's used and shared throughout the different shows on the CW. The Frontier episode probably was shot here, and then all the Legends episodes and Westerns were probably used as well. Ava's turn to using and enjoying her powers came as a shock because she seemed so nice and nervous about having visions and powers, but she's been here for about 5 or 6 months months and just like killing and winning the competition one by one ava kills the other girl and then andy sam's able to catch on until jake snaps her neck azazel then shows what happened that night mary knew him and fed sam some demon blood dean and bobby come right on time to see sam get stabbed in the back and he actually dies despite what dean says about it's not even that bad number 103 long distance call from season 3 episode 14 this feels like a tv version of one miss call a japanese horror movie and franchise about people dying if they get a call and then answer it which is the reason why i don't ever answer my phone if it's an unknown caller or a number i don't recognize dean gets a call from john on how to get out of a deal with hell and it's just too good to be true when everything goes right especially on supernatural sam is the one that doesn't believe any of this and is able to kill the monster that sucks the human essence or something like that maybe the soul something like that sam uses his palm to smack him into the nail on the wall there is this tragic end for this father he wants to find his daughter's killer thinks his dean and dean was told a lie about trapping a demon both are there for the wrong reasons and this father gets no closure he can't move on number 102 time is on my side from season 3 episode 15 this is their take on a frankenstein monster an old ass man takes a human part when he needs it sam ran over his neck and he just was still fine dean on the other hand is busy hunting for bella she sold the colts and her story does seem like it just ends i'm going to assume that was the effect of the writer strike at the time i believe there were supposed to be 22 episodes but they were cut down to 16 bella was sexually assaulted by her father at a young age so demon makes a deal with her knowing that bella would take it without realizing she would throw her life away so she would find anything like the rabbit's foot colts or anything that would protect her but time ran out for her and she's killed number 101 metamorphosis from season 4 episode 4 the monster both the boys are hunting is a mirror image of what sam will be if he continues to drink demon blood maybe he'll be a monster just like this guy who isn't really a bad person he didn't ask for his monster like powers passed on by his father started showing signs of hunger for food and then human blood so it's not like he was born a monster it's how you get there and what happens to you on your journey seeing him going through the fridge and eating all that food was a good and disgusting scene as well 
number 100. I know what you did last summer from season 4 episode 9. I usually forget this mid-season finale. A part of it is how Sam met up with Ruby and how to control his powers and get demons out in exchange for saving people instead of killing them. Sam and Ruby have a much more closer and intimate relationship. I don't really see Katie Cassidy's version of Ruby getting this close to Sam. She seemed more let's get to business instead of messing around. Anna is introduced as someone that can hear angels which causes both demons and angels to come look for her. Alistair is also introduced and he's a really good demon that always had fun. The next actor that plays him, he does a great job at being evil and fun. And of course, Cast and Uriel show up wanting to kill Anna. Number 99, Sex and Violence from Season 4, Episode 14. A siren gets involved with the boys and because there's a strip club that's involved as well, you would think something related to that would get the boys to fight, but the siren uses their tactics against them. The siren becomes a fake FBI agent and passes saliva to control people. It forces the boys to talk about their issues with each other, like Sam's lies to Dean and Sam thinks Dean is just too weak after coming back from hell. Both say it doesn't bother them, but in the end, it does. Instead of talking about their issues, let's just ignore it because that's always the best way to deal with issues. Number 98, Death Takes a Holiday from Season 4, Episode 15. We get to see Sam be a bit evil. He manipulates this kid to get closer to finding Alistair and even in the end, when Pamela dies, she says he's not doing any good. The path that he's on isn't the right one. Tessa comes back to reap this kid who can't move on, but Alistair has other plans and bringing the seal. This actor for Alistair is great. He can use one of the boys' tricks, salt rounds, since both are ghosts. And then angels were just there, watching and waiting for the right time to get Alistair because they're dick and Dean doesn't like listening to them. Number 97, the monster at the end of this book from season 4 episode 18. Chuck's introduction is always fun to go back to because he was so different. I don't think he was ever supposed to be God and especially the final villain. He was a prophet that would see the future. He thought might as well write about it. Though there are books about Sam and Dean's life and they're fans of it. Not a big following but there's still a following. It would be a good foundation for the destiny stuff in season 5. Dean can't get away from burgers, Sam wants Lilith and an archangel will always protect the prophet when it's in danger. Number 96, The Rapture from Season 4, Episode 20. Castell gets an entire episode to himself. He would ruin Jimmy Novak's life, almost got his wife and daughter killed. Jimmy's vessel would be destroyed later on. Claire would get into the wrong crowd. His wife eventually dies. Once Jimmy said yes to Cass, it was all over. There would be no normal life for him. Cass is busy being in heaven and I guess reformed because he comes as someone who's on a mission and acts like the other angels now. And Sam continues to disappoint Dean with needing to drink demon blood. So he locks him up. Number 95, Sympathy for the Devil from Season 5, Episode 1. Mark Pellegrino is chosen as Lucifer's vessel for now, which is a great choice. Bobby has been possessed by a demon on the orders of Meg. Dean is Michael's sword, aka his vessel, and needs consent to let him in. This would be Dean's entire arc, continuously saying no despite the odds. Cass did die, but someone who has all the power to do anything decides to save Cass as a way to scare off Zachariah for now. Number 94, Good God Y'all, from Season 5, Episode 2. War is the first horseman to do his job. Chose the time to have two sides fight each other for the good of the apocalypse. Rufus, Ellen, and Joe are involved. I feel like they're the first time trying to torture Sam with salt and holy water. I think you should either listen or not torture him anymore because it's not working. But maybe that's just war because others continue to see black eyes. They eventually get the ring and Sam decides to leave for two episodes to run away again because things between the boys aren't okay. Dean doesn't trust them. Sam feels bad and maybe going away for a bit is the right thing to do right now. Number 93, I believe the children are our future from season 5 episode 6. Jesse could have been a plot thread that would eventually come back later on but also get why they didn't bring him back. It's unnecessary. If they don't have a plan for him then don't bring him back and Jack is essentially Jesse but a bit grown up. Based on how Jack was written, it did get born after a bit. You can only make a kid being inside a young adult's body be interesting so while Jesse is one of the more memorable one-off characters, I'm glad he remains until touch. He's the Antichrist and has planned to be used as a weapon to battle against angels. This gives Sam a chance to vent his past mistakes to Jesse. Don't make the wrong ones. Cass was going to kill him as well but couldn't quite do it.
Number 92, Point of No Return from Season 5, Episode 18. This is the 100th episode. Think they did nothing special, probably because everyone working on the show thought this was going to be the last season. Dean finally killing Zachariah was so satisfying because he was the most hateful angel and character on the show. Adam is also back. The angels plan on replacing him with Dean as he's too stubborn. This is also a way out for Dean. At least one of the brothers get to live a normal life. And then Cass doing the hand sigil thing on himself was awesome. Number 91, The Devil You Know, from Season 5, Episode 20. You learn a lot more from Crowley. He's having a lot of fun despite losing his house and every demon going after him. And you know he's got something else planned. He's willing to work with the boys, but he's also willing to turn on them and play both sides. It also turns out Sam's entire life was planned. That school friend was a demon and got him with Jess. He was the one to pin her up to the ceiling. And he mentions to Bobby about saying yes, but he can't even control himself in terms of anger and demon blood. Number 90, Frontierland from Season 6, Episode 18. It's a fun Western-themed episode. Dean loves Western movies and anything with it. Cass puts them back in 1861 to get some Phoenix Ashes to kill Eve. We get to meet Samuel Colt, which I always thought was cool, the maker of the cult, and he's clearly done. He kills two demons like it's nothing. When Sam shows him a phone, he's not even phased because it's just another day of being a hunter. Dean is busy playing cowboy and then becomes a sheriff. Castiel's fight with his angel buddy was there to fill in some time and have that touching scene there's one big stretch at the end samuel colt sent sam's phone from 1861 to 2011 or 2012 but that package was just sitting there it's a really big stretch it is funny but like come on Number 89, Clap Your Hands If You Believe from Season 6, Episode 9. The X-Files opening was a nice nod to the show, which implies aliens being in the show, but it's not aliens, it's a leprechaun. And the way Sam defeats him by pouring lots of salt and he has to pick each salt one by one was the funniest way the boys have defeated a monster, I think. Dean is kidnapped by a quote-unquote alien and comes back seeing a fairy flying thing, little people working on a set, and I think a homeless man attacking him. This whole episode is a lot of fun with some inspiration from the x-files number 88 and then there were none from season 6 episode 16 i think this episode is a nod to john carpenter's the thing if it's not then it's very similar to it sam dean bobby brufus samuel and some of his family members are stuck in a building with the worm killing them one by one through going inside of them this episode does a great job of keeping you guessy on who's taking over is it the worm or the dislike for the grandfather and rufus gets development he was there for bobby when he lost his wife over like sam and dean going on hunts which makes his death in this episode more heart-wrenching especially when bobby was the one to stab him losing the one friend that would always be there for him and the worm is here for needed development for eve Number 87, Time After Time After Time from Season 7, Episode 12. Most of the time travel stuff in the show is fun. Dean travels back in the 40s and meets Elliot Ness, who is apparently a hunter as well. Sam and Jody have to play catch up in the present while getting messages from the past. Most of the 40s stuff was Dean and Ness searching and seeing fun scenes like the lady at the shop while looking for a suit. This time God needs kills to get back to his love. All of it fails once he's back at the house and warns the boys with a needed Leviathan development because they aren't getting any at all. Number 86, Party On Garth from Season 7, Episode 18. This is a really fun Garth episode. Getting to see him drunk and have fun despite hunting. He's killing and seeing horrible things probably every day, but is still a fun and happy person. Having to be drunk to see and kill this Japanese monster that looks like the grudge with long hair and a white dress. Sounds like a stupid premise, but it has a lot of fun with it. They're not on their A game, making simple mistakes. And Dean is so drunk that he's able to use the force to get the sword back. Force says Bobby, who is still alive, it has attached himself to the flask that Dean is drinking out of. Make the Death's Door episode mean kind of nothing and the emotional weight is gone. In number 85, King of the Damned from Season 9, Episode 21. Dean finally kills off Abaddon, who was a good second villain for the boys and mainly Crowley. She brings back his son because of the human blood stuff, gets to spend some much needed time with him, and gets to break time by keeping him alive in the present until Season 12. Dean still continues to be obsessed with the mark and using the blade at any means necessary. Even lying as Sam and Crowley gave him the call to go to the building, somewhat setting him up slowly turning into a demon. And then he kills Abaddon and continues to bash her in until Sam has to say stop. 
Number 84, Black, from Season 10, Episode 1. Demon Dean's arc should have been singing throughout because it's fun, hanging out in bars, and Crowley's his new best friend. Everything is just going really well. Sam and Cole have other plans for Dean. Sam wants his brother back while Cole wants revenge for Dean killing his father back in 2003. Both just have to ruin Dean's fun. Kaz and Hannah are on a quest to find rogue angels or something. This plot feels like they needed to do something with Kaz, so just have him hunt an angel until he's needed number 83 as time goes by from season 8 episode 12 henry winchester travels to the present to look for john but finds the boys they're finally meeting their grandfather for the first time and turns out both their parents were somehow involved with hunting henry was part of the men of letters and they're considered legacies important to the world of hunting and anything supernatural related but because of henry's disappearance john would continue that tradition of not being there for the boys leaving them alone just as his own father did henry's also the reason why abaddon is brought into the present and gives the boys the key to live in the bunker until the final season. Number 82, The Prisoner from Season 10, Episode 22. Dean's a badass in this episode. He alone took out the entire Stein family and just fully embraced the mark. He even kills the one kid that hates being in the family and almost Cass just sparing him to scare everyone watching this episode for the first time. Also, by this point in the show, Castiel's power goes up and down, only seems powerful whenever it's convenient. He doesn't have his grace in this scene, but still, the news of his powers is very inconsistent. Number 81, The Gamblers, from Season 15, Episode 11. I think this is the best episode from Season 15. I don't think there's any episode from 15 from this point. I might be wrong, but this episode is easily one of the better episodes because after getting their plot armor off, Garth recommends the boys to go get some luck at a bar. Playing a game of pool and winning gives you good luck. Love that they use pool as a way to homage the show. Bars and pools have always been a background thing in the show, so the fact that they used it as a plot device was a great choice. And despite winning, there are others there wanting out and good luck so the boys sacrifice their luck to win the others luck despite losing the others are freed because of their sacrifices they became heroes number 80 hell house from season 1 episode 17 this is the show's first attempt at comedy and shows that while the show can be scary and a horror show can also be funny whenever it wants to the ghost faces are introduced and they're fake journalists writing on their own website i think they get a movie deal which is a complete fake by sam but they're big time losers with big dreams we get to see the brothers prank each other which can get bad really quick and the lore behind hell house only reason it even exists is that a lot of people believe it and people believe a a lot of things so i'm kind of surprised there wasn't any more of that in the show Number 79, Hollywood Babylon from Season 2, Episode 18. Hollywood Babylon is pretty much what I think of how working in the movie industry works. You have executives making bad choices, writers or directors that are frustrated because their original work has been reworked so many times, and then actors that know that they have a bad script but don't really want to say anything because they want to keep their job. Dean loves being a PA, loves the free food, talking, and working with others. He fits right in. And that executive that knows about ghosts uses his experience to use it in the film, learning pretty much nothing number 78 red sky at morning from season 3 episode 6 we get development on bella and how she got some of her family killed there's a ship that goes to people if they ever killed or were involved in a family member's death it's only the surface of her backstory bella's kind of like a catwoman character where she's willing to work with anyone but only cares about her own being and then the water still looks good two brothers going at each other creating this water explosion number 77 the curious case of dean winchester from season 5 episode this is their take on benjamin button dean has grown old after losing a poker game to a witch it takes x amount of a person's life depending on each game the older actor playing dean is great he has the same mannerisms bobby's on a suicidal mission feels useless being in a wheelchair has made him rethink how and what he can do to help the boys and prevent the apocalypse and every time it's the same nothing dean's able to talk to him about being useful and he's one of the many reasons why the boys will continue to say no sam is able to be useful and not feel like a burden or make a mistake both dean and bobby are still apprehensive on letting sam do whatever he wants but he's able to win the poker game and save dean and the witches are the best one-off villains because the wife wants to move on she's lived for so long misses her daughter and is tired of existing so despite being villains both are still interesting and really memorable number 76 two minutes to midnight from season 5 episode 21 dev has the best introduction person bumps into him and he just swipes his shoulders killing right there <laughs> 
His talk with Dean was tense, even though at the end, he just wants out of his leash that Lucifer has him on. You don't really know what he's going to do. And is the only horseman that's willing to talk and not kill for the sake of the apocalypse. Bobby's able to walk now because of the deal he made with Crowley with a kiss. Cass, Sam, and Bobby are doing something that's not as interesting as the deaf stuff. Number 75, The Benders. From Season 1, Episode 15, The Benders are a great one-off human villain. You're made to think that it's another supernatural thing when it's just humans. The Benders are cannibals and capture people, put them in big-ass cages until they're ready to be hunted and then killed to be eaten. In some ways, it is more scary than anything supernatural, but a vampire, werewolf, ghost are still scarier than humans. The Benders just come out of nowhere, and the fact that it's humans and they too can be scary and a threat to the boys make it better and stand out from the British men of letters. Number 74, Huntery Heroiki? I think that's how you pronounce it. I'm probably wrong. From Season 8, Episode 8, Looney Tunes is heavily involved in this case. A bank robber is using Looney tactics, like a black hole and X marks the spot to steal money. And Dean has a goofy but fun fight with this guy, pan to the face, and a freeze frame to tell us who's the good and bad guy, and the X that marks the spot. It's clear someone from the writer's room loved and grew up watching Looney Tunes and used Supernatural as a way to express their love for it. Also, Cass should have been been a hunter past this episode, he would have been a great third wheel. Number 73, Don't Call Me Shirley from Season 11, Episode 20. Chuck is God. Metatron is given a chance to write with him again, but realizes he's given up on humanity. Chuck is just tired and disappointed by his creations. Metatron has been a human for about a season and has a good grasp on what it's like being normal and voices his reasons as to why humanity is the best. Despite the flaws of being weak and disappointment, they never give up. The boys deal with the Darkness Apocalypse 2.0, which not as interesting as Chuck, but Chuck does come to the of the boys to talk. Chuck being here just feels like a, like so many fans have already theorized as to why weird at the end of the season 5 finale, maybe he is God and this episode just confirms that. Number 72, Hammer of the Gods from Season 5, Episode 19. This episode is still really good, but there is this looming retcon over it, so you know, I can't really look it at the same. However, Gabriel's arc in Season 5 comes to an end. He always ran away from family because he couldn't handle the fighting and arguing. He's continued to keep running away, so when he confronts Lucifer, it's him not running anymore and gives the boys a chance to run and watch his adult film, which is why he dies. He was able to confront his family. Lucifer killing all those gods was awesome. Them, you would think they would put up a fight, but nope. Number 71, Bitten from Season 8, Episode 4. This is the better found footage episode. The boys aren't in the episode that much, which I don't mind. You're following three college students who one gets bit by a werewolf and all of them document their friend's experience of super strength and the progress of turning more into a werewolf. It turns into a love triangle thing. The boy that's not a werewolf has more in common with Kate. All the fighting leads to death and turning Kate into a werewolf. And since all of this was documented, both Sam and Dean get to see everything. Both were in the video for a bit. The beginning credits still roll even though the episode is about to end. Both let Kate go until she makes a mistake. The story itself isn't all that great, but I just really like them having another entire found footage episode that has nothing to do with the boys. Number 70, American Nightmare from Season 12, Episode 4. This episode goes back to Sam's psychic powers. We meet one girl who was a part of Azazel's blood baby demons, and her family is really religious and thinks she's the devil. So they just have her in the basement, chanting some words and causing people to die. Because the mom is uneducated and willing to bet everything on religion, they don't take her to the hospital. They don't like how things work, so they are off the grid. The family mentions that they know God, and they do. Chuck doesn't seem to really care because he left again. Not only does this episode so harking back to Sam's powers, it does show the very extreme version of what some religious people are like. The only thing I didn't like is Ketch coming in to kill a girl because the boys couldn't get the job done. Number 69, Blade Runners from Season 9, Episode 16. This episode was leading up to Dean finally touching the mark and he feels pretty powerful. The mark glows and there's this noise that comes on as if all he's thinking about is kill. It's turned him into a killing machine. Magnus Sinclair used to be a man of letters and there's a fallout, but he seems to be the one that knows a lot more than he should. He looks good for being like 80 or years older or something, maybe 100. He put all that magic stuff in the bunker. He has a museum full of monsters. Probably has been on a blood marathon just by himself and deep in his thoughts still gets one over the boys as they don't trust him so he'll keep the blade for now until they find abaddon 
Number 68, Our Little World from Season 11, Episode 6. Amar has grown into a teenager and is insinuating a lot more things from Dean. Curly, I think, is reading a book on how to control your teenage daughter. He doesn't know how to control her at all. She's slowly getting stronger. And now she's stronger than Curly because she holds him for a bit to save Dean and almost kills him. Find out from Metatron that the darkness is God's sister, which means we are going to need something as powerful as God to defeat her. And I guess not completely redeem Metatron, but he now understands why humans are the best of them and sam continues to see visions from the cage with the really cool cgi shot seeing the cage and chains all around it Number 67, free to be you and me from season 5 episode 3. The boys are apart. Dean has an adventure with Cass on finding the Archangel Raphael. Cass needs to find God and know why he was brought back. But then Raphael suggests that maybe Lucifer needs Cass as he's an angel that rebelled and both went to meet some girls and Cass just told the truth. Sam is back to living a normal life, goes on a date with Amy from The Walking Dead. But it seems like every time Sam runs away, he gets brought back in. These hunters hunt go bad and want Sam and use his demon powers to kill the demons and then lucifer is able to find him which i don't know how he can because Cass put enochian marks on his bones and sam is a vessel for him so no matter what or how many times he runs away he'll be needed number 66 heart from season 2 episode 17 you gotta feel bad for madison and sam this is the first girl since jess i guess sarah technically that he seems happy with she's been bitten and there's no cure for her there's only one option which is to kill her sam tries to prolong this but time is running out and you see his innocence just go away when it cuts to dean and you hear the gunshot sam isn't going to be okay there's no way that he can think and go back to a normal life i don't have the killer right it just shows that there's really no happiness when you are a hunter there's no real evil easy way of lowly going back Number 65, Abandon All Hope from Season 5, Episode 10. Ellen and Joe are probably, aside from Jody and Bobby, are the best side characters because the boys could always go to them for help when things got bad. So it was heartbreaking to see both go in the episode. Joe is badly wounded by Hellhound and she wants to be used as bait to get the boys to Lucifer. Ellen decides to stay with her as she doesn't want to live without her. Both die in an explosion. Always saw their deaths as a result of Sam and Dean not saying yes and getting them involved because they keep denying their destiny. The people around them will die. And then Crowley is introduced in the best way possible. He gives the boys the cult and bullets and thinks ahead of the other demons. He thinks Lucifer doesn't care about them. They're just a means to an end. And turns out he was right as Lucifer sacrificed a bunch of demons. <laughs> Number 64, A Very Supernatural Christmas from Season 3, Episode 8. The Christmas episode was a heartfelt and cool way to see how the brothers grew up. John would again leave them alone, fend for themselves, and sleep in bad hotels. At least the boys had each other. Dean buys Sam like a Barbie doll, I think, and it's not genuine. All Sam cares about is that he's got Dean. In the present, this would be Dean's last Christmas because he's only got a year left to live. And who else to spend it with? Sam. So after being tortured by an old couple that are gods and killing them, the boys enjoy the night by hanging out together on Christmas Day just like they have been doing since they were little. Number 63, Road Trip from Season 9, Episode 10. Letting an angel possess Sam was a bad idea from the start. Now Dean is paying the price for it, blames himself for Kevin's death. Gadriel is now following orders from Metatron, killing off other angels to see if he's loyal or not, I think? I forgot. Cass got some of his mojo back with the little Crowley thrown in there as well. They plan on putting needles in Sam's head to get Gadriel out. I love the whole possessing Sam while he's already possessed. Crowley goes inside Sam to see a fake world. It keeps the human host in check so that they don't realize that they're possessed. Once Gadriel gets out, he goes back to Metatron. Crowley stands up to Abaddon and gets out alive because there are still other demons loyal to him. Both of the boys split for about an episode. Number 62, Taxi Driver from Season 8, Episode 19. After Bobby died in Season 7, the show would find ways to bring him back. Not to bring him back alive, but through heaven, hell, or a flashback. Bobby is in hell because of Crowley and he's the key to completing second trial. Naomi tries to befriend Dean but doesn't want any of her crap. Even at the end when she helps, she wants Crowley out of the picture so that she can take over. And this is Benny's last appearance in Season 8. Wish she would have done more, but he buys Sam some time to get out of purgatory. Number 61, Monster Movie from Season 4, Episode 5. A really good homage to Black and White and Universal Monster Movies. A shapeshifter takes a liking to the Universal Monster characters. We get to see Dracula or a version of Dracula and he's great. Got the fangs and drives on a motorbike and everything. Dracula wants to find his bride and force her to marry him. Dean is one that gets in the way of Dracula's love. And Sam is just along for the ride. I don't remember him doing a lot aside from researching and then our bodies in the morgue. And it's got his own special title card. 
Number 60, it's the Great Pumpkin, Sam Winchester from Season 4, Episode 7. Sam finally meets Castiel and Uriel, and turns out they're just dicks. Very righteous soldiers on a mission. Dean is the one to tell Sam to keep on believing, despite knowing how angels are. Maybe don't believe in them, believe in someone higher than they are, just don't give up hope. That candy scene in the cold opening makes me want to check every single piece of candy that I eat now. There could be a razor blade just all of a sudden. Sam Hain is one of these 66 seals, and forces Sam to use his powers, despite Dean's wishes. It's a struggle to cast him out. Sam starts bleeding from his nose and Cass has doubts. He's the angel to voice his doubts on his orders from heaven. Who is he really coming from? Doesn't know what's right and wrong anymore. Number 59, Bloodlust from Season 2, Episode 3. Gordon is a hunter that the boys finally meet. His black and white outlook on hunting makes him dangerous, and since Dean just lost John, he wants to replace him with Gordon. Sam sees through all of this, and Gordon's lie to hunt down bad vampires. Tara from Buffy tells Sam they're just trying to survive by feeding on animal meat and blood. Introduces that there's no easy answer to hunting. There's always a gray area, but Gordon doesn't think so. If he knows you're a monster in any way, he's gonna hunt you. Sam and he let Tara go and just tie up Gordon until he comes back. Back. Number 58, No Rest for the Wicked from Season 3, Episode 16. The entire third season was Dean's time ticking and running out, so when the finale came around, it didn't come as a shock. This season was telling us the whole time how it was gonna end. Dean gets killed by hellhounds and then goes to hell yelling for help, and Sam just has to sit back and watch. There's nothing he can do. Probably shouldn't have trapped Ruby because Lilith got inside of her, tricking the boys. Number 57, Pac-Man Fever from Season 8, Episode 20. This is the episode where I loved Charlie's character. I already liked her before, but she was just a person at the wrong time, but also at the right place because she met the boys. The only things we knew about her was she was into Harry Potter books. This episode dives into why she wants to run away when the djinn is slowly draining her life. She blames herself for putting her own mother in the hospital and doesn't want to lose her. She's not running from monsters or video games. She wants her mom to stay, and it's something that she's going to have to face because she can't keep on running. She did look cool when Dean and her were stuck in that zombie or I think it's zombies like place and area. Meanwhile you have Sam though getting worse from the trials and deals with the Jin's son. Number 56, Dog Dean Afternoon from Season 9, Episode 5. This is a ridiculous concept that works. Dean takes his potion in order to hear not only dog, but all other animals speak. Because this one dog was at every single kill of this case, a snake man or viper or something likes eating animals and testing out new recipes. This guy sees Sam or Gadriel heal himself and uses Sam as his main course. Talking to other animals was pretty funny. Dean was about to shoot a bird for talking crap. Dean puts his head out the window when driving and barking at the mailman because dogs apparently love doing that and Dean gets a pack of dogs to kill this man as well. Number 55 Apartment in Samara from season 6 episode 11. Def wants Dean to be him for 24 hours in exchange for getting Sam's soul back in the cage. Dean realizes how hard it is to kill every day from kids to elderly people it doesn't matter some people just die because they do and Dean doesn't really get this until especially when it comes to a little girl it doesn't seem fair but she just has to die according to Def. He doesn't want his soul back because it would make him less effective as a hunter so he calls for Balthazar who was created just to know everything and so Sam needs to kill a father figure and do some spell. Bobby is the closest to a father. Both play some hide and seek until Sam wins. Dean fails and goes to save Bobby and realizes Death knew he would fail but despite that the Winchesters according to Death are important to the universe so he brings back Sam so to end Sola Sam. Also Robert England aka Freddy Krueger himself was in a supernatural episode. Number 54, Firstborn from Season 9, Episode 11. I would consider this the first time Dean and Crowley hanging out. Crowley needs him to find the first blade. This leads to Kane, who's just chilling. He's a beekeeper, retired, but a Winchester has to bring him back to his old ways. And Crowley knew everything about Kane. He knew about Abaddon getting involved with his wife. He knew he wanted to give him the mark. So why not a Winchester who's well known? They also meet Tara, who looks like Sarah Connor. She knew John, but going there gets her killed. Sam and Cass are doing something that's not interesting. Thing. They had to get some angel grace out from Sam, and in the end, it was all for nothing. Because of the reminder, King gives Dean the mark and starts killing again while Crowley look for the blade. Number 53, The Devil's in the Details from Season 11, Episode 10. Cool of Lucifer to show Sam his past and the Season 5 finale, but it's all for Sam to just say yes and let him in. There was never a moment where I thought he would say yes. 11 seasons in, Sam has been through a lot to know what to do. Rorina has been in cahoots with Lucifer and plans on dethroning Crowley, but it leads to death and the start of her coming back from the dead. And we also get Misha act like Lucifer, which gives us his goofy ass evil face. I just can't take him seriously as a bad guy. So now they have both Lucifer and Amara as threats to worry about. Yes, again.
Number 52, Just My Imagination from Season 11, Episode 8. Having an imaginary friend always by your side, I always thought would be cool, but then realized, you know what, kind of creepy? Kids are lonely and they need them. But I don't know, if I ever saw an imaginary friend pop up out of nowhere, I would freak out. So Sam's imaginary friend pops up years later and needs his help because of his life and job. There are a handful of imaginary people that are getting killed violently and the kids only see it, which will pretty much scar them for life. The killer was a former friend of Sully. They left on bad terms as Sam also left on bad terms with Sully. Both would make up and move past that. Number 51, Home from Season 1, Episode 9. The boys are back at their childhood home to see if this fire spirit was related to their mom's death. It turns out to be something else. A bunch of spirits are within this house and needs to be cleansed. They ask Missouri, who is fantastic in this episode, and giving Dean crap for putting his foot on the table and using pools to hunt. The boys stick around because Sam saw in his vision of a lady banging on the window for help. They meet their mom, who gives a very mysterious apology and then protects our boys and then Missouri had John meet her at her place saying he can't meet them just yet because Jeffrey D. Morgan is probably busy with other projects Number 50, Night Shifter from Season 2, Episode 12. Ronald is the reason why Night Shifter is so memorable. His laser eye conspiracy theories, he kind of deserved it because he held hostage an entire bank just to find a shapeshifter. No one would believe him. And then the mystery of who's shifter, it always seems to switch skin really quickly. Henriksen's on the outside looking for their boys and knows about them and their dad. So the boys are dealing with a lot. They're able to get the job done, but Dean's face is on the news and now the FBI are after them as a future threat in Roadblock. Number 49, Born Under a Bad Sign from Season 2, Episode 14. John's secret to Dean seems to have come true as Sam killed another hunter and claims not to remember killing them or the blood on his shirt. It turns out to be Meg coming back from hell and being the new Sam. Uses Sam to assault Joe, go to Bobby's place but can't con a con. Even the exorcism doesn't work. Meg plans on staying inside of Sam. Bobby always comes in clutch and saves the day. But while it wasn't the Sam that John warned Dean about, it was still cool seeing a version of Sam that hurts Number 48, Bad Day at Black Rock from Season 3, Episode 3. The rabbit's foot would create one of the funniest episodes. Sam loses his shoe because once you lose the foot, you get bad luck and it eventually turns to death. Bella gets introduced as a thief, there for her own needs and gets the last laugh. Sam's bad luck makes Gordon's friends find him at his hotel and Dean becomes Batman. So yeah, this episode has everything that you would want in it. Number 47, Malleus Malaficarium? Hold on. From season 3, episode 9. This has best code opening, where this lady's teeth starts falling off and coughing blood, and it's also the very first episode that I saw. My sister was watching it, and I was either bored or didn't want to do my homework, maybe both, but I saw the opening and was like, I want to watch more. There's these witches, or witches, in training that are killing for a ritual, but there's one demon pulling the strings. Ruby has to get involved, and this is Dean's first time meeting her, so immediately points the gun at her. The demon mentions Lilith for the first time. Right now, demons are created. Demons are humans that have been tortured in hell and eventually their humanity is ripped. Ruby seems to be the only one that remembers what it's like and she confirms there's no way out for Dean's deal. Number 46, Justin Bellow from Season 3, Episode 12. The police station is surrounded by demons. Erickson was possessed by a demon. Don't know how long. I'm assuming since we met him because he was so insistent on catching the boys. Physical proof, the boys and the rest of the station set up a plan to use the chant trap and burn all the demons in a fire explosion. Except there's one survivor, which leads to Lilith showing up and killing everyone. The boys weren't able to go through Ruby's plan, killing the virgin, and because of that, there were consequences. Number 45, are you there God? It's me. Dean Winchester from season 4 episode 2. There are spirits that are killing off hunters that couldn't save them or didn't deserve to be killed so we got to see the original vessel of Meg, Henriksen's, Ronald, and I guess the twin girls from The Shining for Bobby's mistake. So the sign of the apocalypse which would be the setup for the fifth season and Cass comes down to warn Dean about the seals and mentions Lucifer once again building up to the fifth season. Number 44, in the beginning, from season 4, episode 3. We get to see Mary's past and how she was a part of a hunter family. She came from knowing how to shoot a gun and demons and monsters. Cass has Dean go through essentially back to the future to meet John and sell the Apollo to him. Dean needs to stop Mary from making the deal with Azazel, but can't because Sam and Dean would probably not be hunters and save people. And the most heartbreaking thing about it is that Mary wanted out and the fact that her sons became she hated is tragic. Number 43, 
My Bloody Valentine from Season 5, Episode 14. This title is probably a nod to Jensen's role in the remake. Famine has affected a town of hunger. That hunger could be money, sex, food, pills, drugs, or demon blood. Sam gets the urge to drink some demon blood again, which would be important to killing Famine. Castiel's vessel Jimmy Novak loves burgers, so Cass ate like a bunch of burgers and red meat. Dean seems to have no hunger, and it's because he has no soul. Now, I don't think Dean's soul is gone. I think Famine met metaphorically. We see what Solus looks like with Sam. Dean feels dead inside that he might as well have no soul or hunger to fight which is why he asks for help in the end because he's given up Number 42, Dead Men Don't Wear Played from Season 5, Episode 15. Now Bobby's turn to suffer. Death has brought the dead in Bobby's town, which includes his wife. While it's nice, you know it's gonna end badly. Jody's son is brought back and has to see him eat her husband. Others in a town that have been brought back turn into zombies, but not full-on zombies, but it's zombies. After Bobby kills his wife, he and Dean fight off a lot of them until the others show up for help. And again, this happens so that Bobby can suffer even more because he's one of the reasons why the boys aren't saying yes. Number 41, Weekend at Bobby's from Season 6, Episode 4. This is the best episode that Jensen directed. It's nice every once in a while to take the focus off from the boys and focus on another character. Getting to see Bobby's day-to-day -day life, how many calls he has to get to, his car's not starting, he has a nice neighbor who has a crush on him. After doing research for the boys, there's no thank you, and he still made the deal with Crowley, so still trying to find a way out by torturing a demon and decides to burn the bones of the vessel, and it works. With the help of Rufus, he got the ring to contact Crowley's son and got the boys in Scotland I think to burn his bones. Bobby's freed from his deal and can still keep his legs but he still got work to do. Even if he was about to eat the pirate cake from his neighbor, the phone starts ringing again. Number 40, Scooby Natural from Season 13, Episode 16. This was a cool crossover episode. This show was able to blend the music and comedy of Supernatural and Scooby-Doo and make it work from Dean's crush on Daphne, Velma's crush on Sam, Cats hanging out with Shaggy and Scooby, having actual death occur on Scooby-Doo and the whole gang just moving on like it was normal, but then finding out it's real, breaking their entire world. But Dean doesn't want that, so they have to solve it like they would on Supernatural and are able to fix Scooby-Doo. The animation is good for a show with the limited budget. Number 39, Goodbye Stranger from Season 8, Episode 17. Cass seems powerful and scary in this episode. He's controlled by Naomi to get the Angel Tablet. He has orders to kill Dean and seeing him beat on Dean was a reminder that he can mess anyone up if he wanted to. Last season, he had a god complex, came back crazy, so it was good to see how powerful Cass can be. Cass breaks free from Naomi and decides to protect the Angel Tablet instead of going to Kevin so that he can read it. Always thought that was weird. And this is Meg's last episode for a while. Rachel Minor was my favorite version of Meg, so to see her go out was a bit sad. Number 38, Stuck in the Middle with You from Season 12, Episode 12. Gabriel himself directed this episode and it's clear that he loves Quentin Tarantino. The way their story is told with the different perspectives and the editing is someone who's a big fan of Tarantino's work. Sam and Dean were brought in by Mary to join this hunt. It goes wrong because they meet a prince of hell and uses Michael's spear to stab Cass. We finally get to see how Crowley becomes the king of hell. After the apocalypse was prevented, Crowley offered Ramiel the throne of hell and he doesn't care about that. He wants to be left alone and Crowley just took Opportunity. He was promised to be left alone, so Crowley wants to negotiate again, but it doesn't pan out. Castillo dying doesn't work because it goes for way too long, and it's Cass. He's a series regular. But the last scene has Lucifer in a cage, which implies that Crowley kept him as his lapdog, which makes no sense. Wouldn't it be better if you just had him back in the cage? I guess not. Number 37, Dream a Little Dream of Me from Season 3, Episode 10. This is essentially a Nightmare on Elm Street. Bobby's stuck in a dreamlike state and can't wake up. I have to drink a spell with his hair in it. Bobby's nightmare is reliving his wife's death and having to face her. Dean gets caught in one because he decided to drink from a bottle of a beer. We get to see Lisa as his ideal safe and normal life if he had one. And he's his own worst enemy. Dean finally vents out his true feelings on going to hell. Blames Jean for how he raised him and Sam. Couldn't protect his own family who was always there for Sam and feels he doesn't deserve to go to hell because he sacrificed so much for his family. And then he finally asks for Sam's help. This is also the only time where they bring up Sam's psychic powers. Season 3 was mainly about preventing Dean from going to hell. So I get why they didn't really touch on it. And then Sam has a wet dream about Bella just all of a sudden.
Number 36, Faith from Season 1, Episode 12. Jolie Benz is great in this episode. She probably deserves to live more than Dean, and she wasn't chosen to be saved by this guy that can heal people and their illness. But despite this, she still seems happy and at peace with the limited time. It makes her memorable and stands out because she's so at peace with dying and accepts death. This guy's wife is using a reaper to take a life from a former healer and heal a new person. And we get a clear stance on what the boys are willing to do. Dean is willing to kill a human being while Sam is the voice of reason. Number 35, Shadow from Season 1, Episode 16. This episode always felt like the proper mid-season finale. Meg comes back and meets Sam once again. It's obviously weird. Meg and the Shadows are connected and maybe to Azazel. Meg just killed some of those people specifically to use the boys for bait and get John in. They think she's done for her after falling out of a tall ass building. But she comes back to ruin the reunion between the boys and John. And getting to see them, reunite was good. Sam seems excited and shocked to see John. Dean earlier in the episode said that he wanted them to be back. He hates fighting and splitting apart. He wants all of them to be together again. But Meg has ruined that fun and they have to split again. Number 34, Something Wicked from Season 1, Episode 18. The way that Sam and Dean grew up was not the best. John was so fixated on finding yellow eyes that he would leave the boys alone in hotels. He put a lot of pressure on Dean to watch Sam, but how do you expect a kid to use a shotgun and protect his brother from a soul-sucking monster? That would carry on into adult life where he still feels he needs to protect his brother because dad said so. Still blames himself for letting the monster go. So it explains why Dean is so set on following John's orders and Sam is more rebellious because he doesn't mind getting into an argument with John if he feels something isn't right. The boys get rid of the monster going after kids but the main thing is how the boys were raised. Number 33, Houses of the Holy from Season 2, Episode 13. By this point in the show, there hasn't been any angels yet. So when the boys come across a case where people are killing because of an angel, we find out that Dean isn't really a believer because he needs to see an angel to believe it. While Sam is and has been praying since, there's no way that there can be this much evil and for there not to be another side that's good would make the world feel hopeless and bleak. Dean remembers Mary saying that angels were watching over him but evil got to her. So Dean just sees the world as a very dark place. By the end, both of their perspectives change just a little bit. Sam starts having doubts on whether there's any good out there because the angel was the vengeful spirit. Dean starts to believe there may be some good out there because the guy that he was chasing got killed like it was from the final destination, a pull right through the mouth. And this episode is totally inspired by frailty. Number 32, Wishful Thinking from Season 4, Episode 8. When I watched this episode for the first time, I thought it was the trickster messing with the boys again because you have a big talking teddy bear who is suicidal, there's a kid with super strength, and a man with a very lovely wife that loves him way too much. He's the reason why there's this coin, and if you make a wish, then it will come true. Oh yeah, I almost forgot, there's the invisible guy that's in the showers and checking out ladies, and then it backfires because Sam runs over him, I think, because he was invisible. The bear shot itself and can die and continues to have a hole at the end. End, but the fun has to come to an end and the coin is taken out to prevent Sam and Dean from dying. Number 31, Heaven and Hell from Season 4, Episode 10. The angel and demon face off finally happen. Both sides hate each other and want the same thing. Anna, she turns out to be an angel that rebelled and has the same doubts on Heaven's orders and their mission. She doesn't have her grace, but Yurio does. The angels want her dead so that she doesn't give out any information while the demons want her for information. Also, knowing what happens at the end of Season 4, both sides want Lucifer out and so it really could have been like a, hey, we want Lucifer out, but then when he's out, we want different things and he humanity gets the short end of the stick and it gets her grace back and goes away until she's needed but the reason anyone remembers this episode it's for the end scene where dean talks about his experience in hell talks about the torture he had to endure and then he himself tortured a bunch of souls as well to him it felt like years and jensen kills it in the scene just breaks down to end the episode Number 30, After School Special from Season 4, Episode 13. We get to see more of the boys pass, this time at school. Dean is the cool and good looking dude, while Sam's more quiet and gets picked on. Both of the roles switch at the end where Sam is popular because he stood up to a bully and kicked his ass. Dean was dumped and got told what he needed to hear from his girlfriend. He was scared to admit and just let things be when he mentioned about her meeting her parents. Years later, Dean becomes a hard ass coach and Sam's a janitor. There's a killer out of school and it leads back to the bully. It's stuck on to a bus and would ride a student to the school. The kid became a bully because he was going through something which doesn't excuse him for being a bully but it's also not as simple as it looked and Sam had a good teacher. So Sam goes back to him to thank him, ask if he's happy which at this point is a maybe. He has Dean but still lost his normal life with Jess and is doing some demon blood stuff so maybe. 
Number 29, on the head of a pin from season 4 episode 16. A lot of things get revealed here. Turns out Dean started the entire thing. He was a righteous man that shed blood in hell which makes him feel even more guilty for causing many people to die. Alistair is great. He's just mouthing off about everything and the actor has a great and evil smile. Sam has grown more attached to Ruby's blood and is able to kill Alistair. And then you got Yurio who's already an asshole but the fact that he's been killing angels who opposes his attachment to Lucifer. He's with Lucifer on humanity. He hates them it leads to a fight and anna kills him with his wings out in the room number 28 the song remains the same from season 5 episode 13 this is their version of the terminator to go back in time with the help of castiel's powers and try to prevent anna from killing their parents anna's been reformed and follows the orders of heaven which is kind of disappointing she was like Cass, and to have her go back to any other angel felt like a step down this is after dean goes missing and when mary makes her deal her and john look so happy but trouble comes knocking mary doesn't believe that there's angels out there and then john finds out about hunting he starts asking questions when he gets to sam this is Sam's chance to say sorry to John. He gets it now. Both the boys tell Mary the truth, but it seems to be too late as she's pregnant and Michael comes by to visit and talks with Dean. Tells him how this is all laid out. There's no escaping destiny. There's no choice or free will. They also set up the loophole here for Dean. He's not the only vessel for Michael and Dean of Angels watching over Mary was both scary and sad because angels aren't what they seem to be. Number 27, Fresh Blood from Season 3, Episode 7. Gordon is the best human villain. He's so good that they have to turn him into a vampire so that Sam can kill him off permanently. Gordon's past hunts get him in trouble with a vampire that decides to turn him into a monster that he hates. There's a great scene of Sam wanting Dean to let his guard down and be his brother. Dean is still trying to put up this facade. And Gordon's death is one of the best deaths on the show. Sam uses a blade or a razor, circle blade thing or something and takes off his head. Number 26, Into the Mystic from Season 11, Episode 11. The Banshee in this episode looks good, especially for it being 100% CGI. Eileen is connected to it. She became deaf because of it and wants to exact revenge. This comes back in the finale where I think Sam talks to Eileen on revenge and how dangerous it can be. Amar also wants revenge and then comes to her own conclusion. The boys get rid of the Banshee and Eileen will become an important person to Sam. And Lucifer learns of Dean's love connection with Amar and is planning things out in his head. Number 25, Clip Show from Season 8, Episode 22. Crawling using the Supernatural books against the boys was a great move. He even recites the line from Episode 2. Saving people, hunting things, the family business. See the guy from the Wendigo episode get killed, then the bigging girl from season 7, and then Sarah who's had a rocky life, been married, maybe a divorce, but she sadly goes away as well. The flashbacks to a priest carrying a demon were great scenes. They could have just shown it in pictures or a line, but they filmed scenes. Abaddon also escapes in the Nephilim stuff. Metatron feels out of place in the fact that I took an angel blade just to kill her when they didn't kill Jack in season 13. There's a continuity issue here. Number 24, Fan Fiction from Season 10, Episode 5. To celebrate their 200th episode, they had a musical episode and it was great. They have idiots cast with white wings. They talk about the Destiel stuff. They make fun of Season 6 through 10's stories. And the songs are good that relate back to the show. It's not a well-known or random song. They're singing about the Winchesters and their whole story. And Chuck shows up at the end to create theories on where he's been. Number 23, Yellow Fever from Season 4, Episode 6. Famous scream and meme from Dean comes from this episode. Dean's been caught with a ghost sickness. His heart will give out. This gives Dean some memories from hell. Sam and Bobby have to scare a ghost to death and have to recreate the death of the ghost, which sounds ridiculous. They eventually scare the ghost away and then any little thing that can cause harm, Dean's scared of. Heights, dogs, a big ass snake, driving, and anything else that can fit in to scare him. And we get Eye the Tiger with Jensen at the end, which is great. Number 22, regarding Dean from season 12, episode 11. This is the the best episode from season 12. You have an amnesia concept that works mainly because of Jensen. The mirror scene of Dean trying to remember his name was great and to see him lose who he is and slowly lose grasp on everything was sad. Because there's witches that are involved, you have to include Rowena. She helps out the boys but also wants the book full of spells. And Dean's memory also serves for some funny bits like the witch killing bullets and the no for the grenade launcher and then he messes with Sam at the end when he's back. 
Number 21, The Vessel from Season 11, Episode 14. They had a full-on submarine episode. Dean is sent back by Lucifer to get the Hand of God. I'm not sure if they built a set so that the rooms can look like a submarine, but it sure feels that way. Sam is with Lucifer, who is still using Cass as a vessel and just can't take it anymore. He's tired of trying to care about the boys. Cass jumps in to prevent Sam's death because they need him to get back to Dean. The way Misha switches between characters is good. Once Dean's back, the Hand of God is a one-time use. The lady used it to destroy the submarine and the boys are truly on their own the one friend and angel that they can rely on is no longer reliable number 20 oh brother where art thou from season 11 episode 9 we actually get to see and go into the cage the visions that sam is having seems to indicate to go get lucifer's help seeing the spell work and the dark area is busy with talking to amara and their human and monster love thing again i don't think the show ever explains why they have this if it's just she saw him and freed her then sure i guess the angel said with a full-on angel beam to hopefully get rid of her which doesn't work and the visions weren't coming from god it was from lucifer himself because of the darkness arriving it created a way for him to contact sam and give lies number 19 hell's angel from season 11 episode 18 all the characters seems to want different things carly wants to use the horn of joshua to get rid of lucifer lucifer just wants to be free rowena who's back from the dead is sucking up to amara now Cass doesn't want to fight anymore and the boys just want anything evil to go away all of these things come to a head they trap lucifer doesn't work carly goes inside him and tries to convince Cass to wake up but no result. Amara comes in, survives a blast from Lucifer and wants to use him as bait for God. So all of the plans pretty much didn't work which is normal by season 11. Number 18, Lucifer Rising from Season 4, Episode 22. By the end, the angels and demons are not on the boys' side. You would think that the angels would be on their side because most of them hate demons, but nope. The only side they care about is theirs. They're willing to sacrifice humanity in order to complete Michael versus Lucifer. And Ruben this whole time was playing them, which is good on her. There are only suspicions around the last couple of episodes because she was gone for long periods of time. So you have the boys, Bobby and Castiel that are truly on their own number 17 sacrifice from season 8 episode 23 while the angels falling from heaven comes out of nowhere it's still a great finale all the scenes in the church were great mark shepherd slowly shows his human side as sam gets closer to completing the third trial mentioning hbo deserving to be loved there's a certain point where he willingly allows sam to inject him with purified blood and asks for forgiveness it goes into a pretty dark place abaddon can't stand the fact that crowley has become the king of hell and sets up her being his issue in season 9 and obviously Metatron is scheming something. He kills Naomi, frees the angels, and takes Castiel's grace. And then Dean tries to stop Sam from completing the trial, which will kill him. And he already knew that. He was willing to make the ultimate sacrifice. Doesn't want to disappoint Dean anymore. He did in this season. But Dean's able to talk him out of it and see the angels fall. Number 16, Tall Tales from Season 2, Episode 15. The first trickster episode would lay the foundation on how to do a funny episode on the show. The boys bickering with each other led to different funny stories. There's aliens dancing with Lady and Red in the background. I don't know why, but why not, right? If you live with a big family or roommates, if they have bad habits, you're gonna want to say something to them. At first, you ask them nicely to clean up or whatever, but you're constantly telling them the same thing, then there's gonna be some issues. And they don't kill them right away. It was smart to keep them alive for better use later on number 15 devil's trap from season 1 episode 22 the season 1 finale has you on the edge of your seat when sam has to decide whether he wants to kill both john and yellow eye or don't kill them sam has issues with john most of the time they're arguing with each other i think he wants to kill him or anything but it could have been used as a reason they're at bobby's place and exercising meg but since she fell out from a building she's dead and it's better off keeping meg inside of her and they do mention killing a human being yes they're killing demons but they're also killing the human that's being possessed so it brings up a good question how do you kill a demon and also save the human at the same time number 14 all hope breaks loose part 2 from season 2 episode 22 dean decides to use the crossroads to bring them back which was set up earlier sam comes back just a little bit different he enjoyed killing jake which is revenge but he has a look of evil to him the cult is also key to unlocking the gates of hell so there's a cool shot of demons flying at your tv and the devil's trap symbol going around and they finally kill azazel john is able to help out and buy time for dean to shoot the last bullet into him i just love that there was one bullet the entire season and for it to pay off at the end with a really cool slow-mo to it was awesome. John is able to move on now. Got to see yellow eyes die. But now, there's still work to do.
Number 13, The End from Season 5 Episode. This is a really cool what if scenario. Dean is a cold hearted leader that's willing to sacrifice his own comrades. Sam said yes and explained his reasons as to why he loves God so much. All of this tactic to get Dean to say yes by Zachariah, but he also learns he should stick around with Sam. Cass is into orgies now, he lost his powers and doesn't seem to care much about the world ending. And that set in the beginning where Dean wakes up, there must have been a lot of hours or days of work to make it look abandoned and torn. Number 12, Crossroad Blues from Season 2, Episode 8. This is the most important episode to the show. Demons and deals what make up most of the issues. Whether it's the crossroads, saving people, or selfish needs, it always goes back to demons and deals. They use history on Robert Johnson, and apparently there were rumors that he made a deal with his soul to be a great musician. They use that as a way to set up Dean's deal later on, and John's deal he made with Azazel in the beginning. Dean still carries the secret John told him, and lashes out at a man who saved his wife by making a crossroads demon. Boy save him. And at the end, Dean is still thinking about making that deal. Number 11, Crow Toman from Season 2, Episode 9. The show again uses history to have their own twist. All I know about Crow Toman is that people just disappeared on an island and the last message that was left was Crow and Toman. On the show, it's used as a test for Sam. A virus breaks out and Sam isn't affected by it. The boy who Dean was about to kill was a demon and contacted Azazel for an update on Sam. There was a Mr. Rogers joke thrown in there which I thought was pretty funny. And then the town was scary especially when it came to the boys visiting that family. The clear lies and they're just a little odd. I would be too scared to go check and see the father and son tie up the mom. And the cliffhanger is Dean finally telling Sam the secret which I think was the mid-season finale. So they have people wait until like late January, early February to see what happens. Number 10, We Happy Few from Season 11, Episode 22. The best penultimate episode was this episode because everyone got together and put their differences aside to fight Amara, the setup of getting the witches together, Chuck and Lucifer having their long-awaited talk on who was right and wrong, Dean gets Crowley, and then they all meet, it's awkward, but Chuck's here so we gotta listen. I will say Chuck could have just created other archangels. I know he said that he couldn't, but he's God and probably budget and availability, but I think after what we got. And Amara kills Chuck, not completely because the sun still needs to go out and then there will only be darkness. Number 9, In My Time of Dying from Season 2, Episode 1. Killing off John in the opening was a bold move. The first half of the first season was looking for him, and once we have him, he's killed off. Dean has a out-of-body experience. He meets Tessa and explains he needs to move on because he's going to become what he hunts, a angry spirit that can't move on. It's a great way to war build even more. John makes a deal with Azazel in exchange for bringing Dean back. John, for most of the time, wasn't really there for his boys, but he was always there when it mattered, and giving up himself is a way to pay back to the brothers but more specifically Dean because so much onto him as a kid. Number 8, Lazarus Rising from Season 4, Episode 1. Season 4 has the best opener, mainly because of angels. They finally introduced angels and Castiel's introduction was great. The entire episode you're thinking, who has his power to bring back Dean from hell or did Sam make a deal to get Dean out? Even demons are baffled as to why or how Dean got out. Sam's been busy with Ruby and using his powers. He'll keep it a secret until Dean finds out for himself. Blown out Pamela's eyes and the demons as well. Added to the mystery of who's doing all of this. And then Cass shows up, showing his wings which are awesome and tells Dean God has a plan for him. A great way to open season 4 and keep people coming back for more. Number 7, Dark Side of the Moon from Season 5, Episode 16. This episode is a bit of a downer. The boys get killed by two other hunters because they started the apocalypse. Once they're dead, both are in heaven and I love the way that they portray heaven. You're reliving your best memories and you have to find the road in order to go to other memory or meet Ash. Sam's memories are being happy while Dean's memories are making people happy. Zachary plans on chasing them and putting them in the rightful vessels. But Joshua stops by. Apparently he talks to God, but mainly he listens to them. Turns out God doesn't really care. He thinks this isn't his problem. He's hands off. So the one thing and sign of hope turns out to be a huge disappointment. Cass gives back the amulet and Dean throws it out. Both giving up. I've got genital herpes. <laughs>
Number 6, Changing Channels from Season 5, Episode 8. Everyone knows Changing Channels is great, making fun of cop shows, the genital herpes, the boys are in a sitcom, a Japanese game show, Dean drives the Impala with the Knight Rider lights and theme. Most of this episode is filler until it turns into a story episode where the trickster turns out to be an archangel who left and wanted to be alone, be away from his family, but now he's gotta watch them fight again and he's not going to do anything about it. Totally isn't gonna confront them and die while doing it, you know? He's not gonna do that. Number 5, Mystery Spot from Season 3, Episode 11, The Time Loop Episode. Because of this episode, I've gone out of my way to find and watch any time loop movies because it's so much fun. The trickster once again traps the boys, but the difference is that the joke is on Sam. Having to relive Dean dying, knowing that there's nothing he could do about it. On rewatch, I did notice why would the trickster care about this? Aside from messing with Sam, we don't know that he's an archangel yet, but even without that, he seems real fixated on telling Sam to let go of Dean and move on. If he is a trickster, all he should care about is killing and messing with humans. Either way, seeing Dean die a bunch of times was a lot of fun. Number 4, The French Mistake from Season 6, Episode 15. Jared and Jensen are playing Sam and Dean, playing Jared and Jensen, playing Sam and Dean. It's a really fun breaking the fourth wall episode. They make fun of the fact that they're still on the sixth season when they really shouldn't be. Misha is always tweeting out pranks or stories on Twitter. Jared and Jensen don't like each other or talk to each other, but we all know that they're best buddies in real life. They kill off Eric Kripke, which to me indicates that he no longer has any involvement past Season 6. All of this was part of Castiel's plan to get Raphael back out or something like that. The actual story doesn't matter, but everything else, Robert Sanger, Sarah Gamble, the meeting calls about the boys aren't talented enough, all that stuff was great. Number three, what is and what should never be from season two, episode 20. Eric Kripke directed this episode. This is one of two that he's directed, the other being the season four finale. Dean gets trapped by a djinn and gets to live the normal life that he wanted. Sam is still with Jess, Dean himself is married, mom's alive, but John's dead and they're not hunters. There's only one issue. All the people that they've saved, they all die. There's a great scene where Dean talks to John's grave about always having to sacrifice everything. How come they can't be happy like everyone else? Life just doesn't seem fair sometimes. You can't always get what you want. So while Dean loves his world, he's also slowly dying in the real world and has to sacrifice his happiness to keep on saving the world. Also, Eric Kripke should direct more. He's good at it. Number 2, Baby from Season 11, Episode 4. This is a perfect episode. Having an entire episode take place in the Impala is an amazing idea. They're able to have different shots from the Impala, whether it's on top, in the car itself, near the wheel, or in the front. It's all great. The Impala itself has become part of the family, so it just made sense for it to get its own episode. Even when Cass calls them, you hear him on the phone. While in the background, you see Dean fight the hybrid monster. They have to defeat it by putting a penny in the leader's mouth in order to free everyone. And it builds on the story of the season this guy wants an army because of the darkness her presence has now spread into the monsters and number one the best supernatural episode is swan song this was meant to be the end until it got renewed for a sixth season everything from the history of the impala how it got made and who drove it and eventually got it sam having to say yes and saying his goodbyes to everyone chuck is writing the ending of swan song lucifer shows sam that his life was all planned i love the michael and lucifer were about to fight but then dean comes in with the rock of ages once it starts there this whole sequence is perfect He's still trying to fight to get Sam back, Castiel's ass butt, Lucifer kills Bobby and Cass, beating Dean and Dean not going anywhere. When Sam takes over, there's a montage of the past five seasons, Sam gets the rings and opens the portal, Michael comes back and Sam makes the sacrifice to throw Michael and himself in the cage, preventing the apocalypse. Both the boys were able to do the unthinkable, prevent the apocalypse because this was all supposedly all planned out and you know, destiny right? But somehow, both were able to get through all of this and prevent everything and Dean is left alone and no longer has Sam by his side, having to move on, Cass is back, brings Bobby back, Sam's sacrifice was a way to pay back Dean for always running away from his family, Dean was always there for his, and wanted a normal safe life, and he has one to go to, Lisa and Ben, that's his way to have the happy and safe life that he's always wanted, the last like 10 seconds and shot kind of ruins the entire point of the finale, but I like to pretend that's a season 6 thing, this was the perfect way to end the series, not to say that season 6 through 15 are bad, I enjoyed most of it, it's just that Swang Song made the perfect sense to end off this entire show.
And once again, as a bonus, I'll be ranking the seasons at the end. I already have a video about this. I don't think it changed. Maybe it did. But either way, number 15, season 12, it's the worst because coming after the darkness, the show had a very hard task of like doing something good or better. And so going back to British Men of Letters just sucked. Mary, she was useless throughout this season, season 13, and then even season 14. Lucifer, while there were some cool ideas with the president and everything, him sticking around because Crowley for some reason, which doesn't make any sense. The Nephilim storyline was obviously way more interesting than British Men of Letters and even Lucifer. And then it's got one of the worst finales because Cass and Crowley, Rowena dying were all kind of for shock value and then the way that Crowley went out was disappointing. Number 14, season 13. While this season had a promising start, the last chunk of episodes just kind of ruined it. Big as retcon of Gabriel. This entire season is essentially a retread of season 5 and 11. Just kind of done horribly with fan fiction. There's different worlds which are cool but in the end were just i don't know there and then the fight that would cause the apocalypse was a bad wire work that was disappointing it was a really fun season up until gabriel shows up and then all the retcons happen and then the fight number 13 season 14 this is just a really boring okay season michael's completely wasted why even have him around when you have him for the first two episodes 9 and 10 and then 14 the so five episodes and yeah just kind of boring jack was useless up until he swallowed the grace of michael lost his soul and everything mary actually gets it's development. Very late Cass is doing something. I don't know. Talking to other people. And then the biggest retcon ever. God, Chuck. He's gonna be the final villain. While it's cool, it was not set up. And to expect people just to accept that, which I think a lot of people did, just ridiculous. Number 12, season 7. Again, another really boring season. It's not a bad season because the Leviathans were interesting at first, you know, like they were hard to kill and everything, but then like soap or whatever affects them, chop off their heads. There's a lot more filler episodes in the story. I don't know if that was just availability because both Meg and Cass aren't really there and Dick doesn't get introduced until like the mid-season finale so and then Dick Perlman you can't take him seriously because he's a dick he acts like a dick he does have a dick and his name's Dick Bobby dying was I guess bold move they lost their only father figure and while the boys will be fine losing Bobby is kind of a big deal for the boys and then Sam has more mind tricks you know just more loose for messing with them which is the best part especially after coming back from the winter break 11 through like 16 pretty much like little bits of like Leviathan then set up number 11 season 15 i like this season because i'm not really 100 percent on board with chuck as the villain like it's a cool idea but get no build up and they do build him up with becky who is a lot better there is this sense of like hopelessness especially in the episode where lilith comes back kevin comes back but it doesn't make any sense and then garth gets his send off the only side character because i really wish they would have had more side characters come in like jody claire kaya garth others that i'm forgetting about is not there for the first half and then he's just a ticket time bomb in the second half and it has a very predictable taking over as god and then plot armor i do like how they use plot armor in this final season with the garf episode and then when jack takes over it's like once you guys are dead you guys are dead no more coming back and then the final episode i like 10 season 6 not a bad season i think most people don't like it because it came after 5 the best season and so it had to do a lot of like things to make it work solo sam was great loved him eve set up and just kill her off why even set her up you got three villains eve Raphael, and crowley Crowley was the only really good one because Mark Shepard, Raphael is an archangel but feels like a pushover and the cast is the reason why everything happened with Sam coming back without a soul, team with Crowley, civil war. So it is a bit messy in terms of narrative but there's a great friendship mistake, Titanic episode, Rufus dying episode, Dragon episode, The X-Files, number 9, season 9, Gadriel coming in and possessing Sam, a bad idea from the start but it did have some cool like angel moments with him and Sam and Metatron as a villain. While I get what they're trying to do, it is a bit too much for me you're meta but god damn it's almost too meta Cass is a hobo gets grace back becomes a leader interesting way to have Cass in the season the mark of Cain gets introduced which is awesome dean turns into a killing machine kevin also dies because there's no way that he was gonna have a happy life with the way that he lived and he was a prophet so he was an issue to metatron and demon dean great way to end off the season number eight season 10 really like the way that season 10 structured the whole season doesn't have one entire arc it's a bunch of small stories spread throughout a 23 episode season but that also means that we only get three episodes of demon dean which sucks but if you could get past that dean's whole arc is dealing with the mark afterwards sam also with it but then also getting people like charlie killed getting rowena involved carly has his own arc with rowena Cass does the whole claire stuff characters get small stories throughout and the indian coming back to the mark on dean number seven season eight while the first half is the whole brother versus brother never let me down past that the trials are great carly as a villain is fantastic kevin is just trying to 
push through everything because he's tired of it. Castillo is a killing machine once again. And then it's got the best season finale since 5. The scenes with Crowley and Sam were great. Angels falling down. Metatron, obviously. Betrays cast. I don't know why. I guess we need a villain, so make him bad. Number 6, Season 3. Season's all about getting Dean out of hell. But the season slowly throughout is trying to tell us Dean's time left is gonna run out. And there's just no saving him. Ruby tries telling the boys, but that doesn't work out. Mystery spot was awesome. Last Christmas, last everything. And then Dean finally going to hell asking for help was a great way to end off the season. Bella was cool. Gordon was amazing in this season. Number 5, Season 11. The best season since Season 5. Because it is kind of like Season 5. Jeremy Carver was able to set up its own apocalypse 2.0 kind of with the darkness Amara, God sister. She's interesting mainly because she's God sister. So that's why they go, you know, get Lucifer, Rowena, Crowley, Cass even. Like everyone that's there kind of hate each other. But because Chuck is now involved and tells everyone to listen to everything, they all kind of work together. That fight was amazing. It does have a very underwhelming end because British Men of Letters and it got renewed. So quickly change Amara's reasons and her change of heart real quickly. But this season had stakes. Number four, season one. A lot of it is war building, setting up what type of demons and monsters and ghouls they're going to fight, vampires and everything. Finding that is like the first half and then seeing him throughout the second half. Aside from that, there's no real big narrative. You get to meet Meg, the cult, the vision, setting things up for the next season perfectly. And then the finale where the family just can't catch a break after dealing with yellow eyes. They just get crashed by another big ass truck. Number three, season two. Season two is like season one, but with more story and more characters like hunters, like Ash, Ellen, Joe, Gordon, the FBI are now on their asses, dive into more yellow eyes plans of what he has plans for Sammy and the psychics, more psychics like Ava, Andy, Jake, and the other girl. Crossroads will become very important to the show because that's kind of the main stable of the show of making demon deals and whatnot. And then starting from Night Shifter, I think all the way until the Hollywood Babylon episode, all those episodes are like really good. Number two, season four, you got angels involved now and you know, you think they'd be on your side because angels are angelic, white light, hopeful, right? Nope, they're dicks. They're assholes, just as bad as the demons. They only care about their sides. Ruby tricks all of us or Sam, really. Freeing Lucifer out has been set up since like, I guess season three, but this season's like the seals, free Lucifer, the devil himself. Uriel's an amazing dick. Zachariah's also a complete dick as well. Chuck, he is so different from the final season. Just laying the groundwork for what was supposed to be the final season, which is season five, number one, the best season because it was meant to be the end. It was, you know, the devil, the big bad, killing the other gods, the whole destiny stuff, saying yes or no. Crowley even gets involved, playing both sides. Bobby's there, trying to, you know, keep them from saying no. Free will and everything. In the end, it's all about family, sacrificing for each other, when to move on, and it's an amazing season. And that was it for ranking every single episode of Supernatural. Despite the mediocre and bad moments from some of the seasons, I grew up with the show. I was only five when the show first aired. I didn't watch it until season three, caught up on the first two seasons on DVD, and then just kept watching it until it ended. The show has been with me throughout my elementary, middle, and high school years, and for the most part, was always on time for it to air on the CW. And because of that, Supernatural will always be special to me. So that is it for me. This has been The Road So Far, and thank you for watching.